Get ready to enjoy some Golden Sun The Lost Age. Oh, hey guys. Uh, I am Flexa, and I'm here running Golden Sun The Lost Age for the GBA, one of the critically acclaimed the GBA games, one of the best on the console. Um, a huge part of so many people's childhoods. Well, it's an incredible honor and privilege to be here. But alongside me, I've got two fantastic people. I've got Bowie. Say hi, Bowie. Hello. Hello, Flexa. Hello, everyone. Hey, you may remember him. He is the littlest deed guy I know. And uh, we also have uh, Critical Third. Hello. That's, that's me. Hi. <laughs> hey, hey. Both highly acclaimed Golden Sun Runners themselves. Um, both have got fantastic times in this category. Um, but now I need to do some counting, because if I don't count correctly, the run dies. So let's count correctly. Yeah. Whilst Plex is doing this, I guess we can kind of explain. Um, this works a little bit differently to the original uh, game, but basically because we can uh, transfer the two teams meet up, Isaac's party and Felix's party meet up later on in the game, and what gin uh, come with them and also the stats that our characters can kind of have at the beginning of the game is based on what's happening here. So we're doing a particular amount of uh, clears for Felix's name and then a particular amount of clears for Isaac's name. And what this does is it reshuffles all of the starting stats and reshuffles um, the gin that are coming from Isaac, Isaac's party um, to be favorable for us. Now, the category is any percent no S&Q, which is no save and quit, which which does essentially mean that we're, we're making sure to not get any um, like RNG manip, but that's a thing that happens in the run. But before the run, we want to make it so sure that it's set up, that everything is working in our favor. And one final thing is I think we're going to have a great name for uh, Felix. Are you going to go yes. for...? I, 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 so basically, the reason Felix's name isn't an incentive is because Felix's name is actually used to determine a bunch of puzzles in the run. Uh, so this is usually the name we use because it's the fastest name for any percent. Um, but I figured the 100% name would be more fun. So we're going to use that one. Uh, where's my line? VWOW. I love VWOW. VWOW. V -wow. <laughs> yes, this is optimal. Uh, this is not a meme. This is very serious. This is extremely serious. Another name All that's right. possible is a constipated face emoji. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. All right, we need some, some names for people. What have we got for Jenna? For Jenna, super serious names. Here we go. Uh, looking at it, Jenna's nickname is going to be Germa, with a capital G. Germa, I believe this is it. G-E-R-M-A. Yup. Wonderful. For Sheba, we have Blue. Oh, yeah. Hey. I, was hoping, I was hoping Blue was going to win. Blue gets to Shout be the best character. Yeah. That's true. Why? <laughs> of for I have a feeling this one. Oh, do you want to guess it? Go for it. I, I don't remember the name, but it's from the French community, because they're great. It is Fallen. Uh, F-O-L-I-N, right? Yep. Love it. Thank you, French Restream. You guys are great. Uh, so what are we for Isaac? For Isaac, we have ORB. Three O's, R-B, and all capitals. Love it. Very on brand. All right, what do we have for Garrett? Uh, Garrett is Fieri. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guy Fieri, yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, F-I-E, right? F-I-E-R-I. Oh, introducing the, the new Synergy Flavor Town. Let's go. <laughs> Ivan is... What do you got for Ivan? Uh, Ivan is best flavor here. It's Bob. Bob, yes. Let's go, Bob. <laughs> and for Mia? And for Mia, we have got Kitty. Kitty. Nice. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Love it. Thank you, everybody, for everybody donated for those names. Uh, we're going to have a good time. All right, so the timing starts as soon as I hit confirm here. So in three, two, one, let's go. Right then, I'm going to... <laughs> I have to this cutscene. Great. Yeah, I have to start off by saying that Plexa, um, Plexa is something special when it comes to Golden Sun speedrunning. Um, while whilst there are many, many talented runners, it has to be said that Plexa stands head and shoulders above the majority of us and has been a leader and been an, in an inspiration for many, many of us. Hence um, the title that we have given him as part of the community. Oh, he no. is Team Team Liquid's <laughs> very own Sir Doctor Mister Jesse Plexa Hart, first speed lord and the Grand Master of Going Faster. Bridgemaster and the purveyor of magical rivers. Make sure to give it up for this, for this fan, fantastic run. <laughs> give it up for this fantastic run. It's going to be a, be a great time. Um, 
beginning of the story. Is it? Thank you, boy. <laughs> no worries, have to. Um, the beginning of the game kind of like overlaps with the ending of, of Golden Sun 1. So Felix is going out off to the top of, of Venus Lighthouse. And if you remember the ending of Golden Sun 1, um, Felix is up there with Satoris, Minardi and Sheba as Isaac comes face, face, face to face with Satoris and Minardi. And this is what's happening with uh, Craden, Jenna and, and, and Alex and whilst that's happening. So it's kind of like a nice crossover moving into the game. It's pretty neat because we start the, the game off with a banger in Venus Lighthouse soundtrack. Like, okay, I like this game for a lot of reasons. Probably the biggest reason I like this game is the soundtrack. Uh, Motoi Sakuraba is an absolute genius. He knocked it out of the park with these two games. Uh, he also did the compositions for Dark Souls and a bunch of other games, right, Bowie? You, you know the lore on this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dark Souls, Star Ocean, um, oh God, Valve, T Hills Hills Profile, the Tales games, like Hills yeah. yeah. Uh, Eternal Sonata. Yeah. Oh, it's a good game. Yeah. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of cat jamming in this run. There's a lot of yeah, let's go. <laughs> Just wall to wall bangers. There's there's not a bad song in the game except yeah. for the Telvos one. But, but we don't we go there. Go there yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're good. <laughs> The only place is, I mean, it's not relevant in a speed run, but it's barely, re barely relevant in casual as well. So it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an awful dungeon. Uh, anyway, and, and yet we invented this category to go to specifically Talpo Schwab. Oh yeah, don't remind me. Why did we do that? I. Why did you do that? No, look, um, <laughs> we, we've had a really good year as a Golden Sun community, like beyond all expectations. Then, like, for us, we were like, okay. Golden Sun got into AGDQ earlier this year and be like, all right, we've peaked. It's all downhill from here, folks. <laughs> and it wasn't. Um, yeah. About a month later, um, FX, one of the great runners in our community, was uh, messing around in treachery. Um, following the guidance of T-Water, one of the great members of the Golden Sun hacking community, he was like, you can get Ace and Tret, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so FX was screwing around in treachery and uh, he started doing funky things. And before you know it, um, Dairadi got very interested in this, and her work, um, looking at some of the nonsense that's happening in the other bounce landscape, actually uh, led to arbitrary code execution. So we, we got arbitrary code execution in Golden Sun 1 about a month after GDQ ended, uh, which is insane, and a whole bunch of other really cool things that happened in the first game as well. We got like, uh, we could get Jenna back into our party, all kinds of nonsense. Um, so, all right, yes, starts off pretty well. We, we GDQ, Ace, fantastic, pretty neat. Now, we got some pretty solid times in the no seven quit category for the first game as well, which was really nice. Um, and then we had this great thing called the... Uh, we, 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 had, we had a race on GDQ Hotfix, which is a fantastic show. I don't You should all be watching that when it comes up. It's, it's really, really good content. Um, and we had an amazing four-way race of the first game, and it was... I, I, I commentated it. It was just an absolute blast to watch. And our very own Felissa won that. Uh, she did an incredible run there, uh, just... Spoilers, whoops, no, I've ruined it for everybody. Uh, but it was a great run, you should watch it anyway. Um, <laughs> just really typifies the, the, the Golden Sun spirit right there. It was incredibly bad. And well, it was such a good watch. Yeah. I got and after hosed. that, we like 20 new... <laughs> he, he got destroyed, Bowie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, and then after that, we got like 10, 15 new runners in the community, just overnight. It was insane. Like, where did these people come from? Um, so thank you, all the new people who have joined our community. We love you, and thank you for running these games. And we're like, well, and then TLA got into this this marathon, and hi, we're here. This is great. Um, can't believe TLA made it into this marathon, and we're very, very happy to be here. Um, and then Duck Dawn got broken. Um, the game that hasn't <laughs> been broken in ten years got broken. I walked off of a bridge after after Velissa, same Velissa, walked through a seam, and. Uh, now we can go anywhere we like on the world map. So that's it's just un uncontrolled chaos at the moment. The record's already dropped over an hour and a half, and we're expecting it to go even lower. So that, that's fun. So it's been a pretty good year for us here at Golden Sun, and it all started with, with this marathon, or AGDQ, and hopefully continues on after this one. So there you go. That's, that's what we've been up to. How's everyone else's day been? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh. I've been grinding Palace of the Dead in FF14. Um, yeah, it's been it's been one hell of a year, and um, everyone's been working really, really hard. And we've again seen loads and loads of new names, some brilliant times coming out out of the woodwork from new runners as well. And um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like it's been a, a, quite a banner year. Like last year, we had our like first big push, and it's only been getting more and more steam. Um, and, it, and it's great because this year is the twentieth the twentieth anniversary of the original game. Um, so it's kind of like you know, it's nice that it's like. 
a big oh, anniversary. I about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big anniversary, and also we get that. But um, we should know. We should. We should get into this game. This this game starts with um, four mandatory fights. Uh, the first two are individual uh, ruffians. We're just going to fume them. They're like, we can beat this little girl, and she's like, boom, fume, bye bye. Um, because she's amazing. <laughs> uh, Jenna is the best character in the uh, well, one, one of the best characters in the original two, and that's not me in terms of like you know my, my bias. Like statistically, she's one of the best characters. Incredibly fast. She's a martyr adept. Uh, she's powerful with magic. Incredibly and powerful on her on her physical attack. Um, uh, and she has an AOE heal in her base class. So, uh, oh, she's she's nuts. Um, well, not she, base. She basically puts kind of broken shit. stuff we can stop in this character. Yeah. <laughs> They were like, we, we took her away from the players in Golden Sun 1, so let, let's just make her nuts in this one. So we are going to get the same things here. There's going to be a regular attack, then there's, there's going to be a crit. And that, uh, yeah, 55 HP, and then we're going to do uh, two more fumes to finish it off. We should get two herb drops as well. Um, it's all going to work the same way. Now, again, we aren't going to do much RNG manipulation. However, because these first four fights are mandatory, we are going to play them in a way that's going to be the most optimal for us. So this next encounter is not going to be a one-shot with Fume. It's going to be an attack into synergy usage to kill this final punch ant. Um, what this does is it forces the battle RNG. Uh, so the, ba the battle RNG advances when any action is taken in battle. So by doing a, a physical attack, the punch ant will then attack and then do a synergy cast. That pushes the RNG in such a way that now the next two encounters that we're going to, to get are gu guaranteed to be attacks first. And attacks first are essentially preemptive attacks. And we can get a guaranteed flee from that to, to basically mean that the first two fights are null and void, which is very, very lovely. Um, it's nice. It's, yeah. it's theoretically slower, but uh, practically it's faster, so we just take it. This is a long game. So if, if, if you miss the first battle, you just feel sad about your life and you're like, why didn't I just do the minute? So everyone just does the minute. Mm. Also, Jenna's... I, I, I take the chance and just <laughs> cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why, do you, why do you hate yourself, dude? Yeah. I, I ask myself that every day. Je Jenna's theme, by the way, is one of the best themes in the game. Um, we hear it very, very briefly here. There was a... I'm going to bring this up right now. There was a, re a reroute that happened a few months back which brought Jenna's theme back into the game. Because what's really cool in this game is there are three battle themes that you can actively choose between. And it has a priority. It will go Felix's theme, Isaac's theme, and then Jenna's. So if Felix is in the party, it, 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 that overrides everything and you get Felix's theme in battle. But if Isaac's in the party and no Felix, Isaac's theme's in, in, in party. Um, yeah, is in is in battle. But if neither um, Felix or Isaac are in the party and Jenna is, bosh, you get Jenna's thing. That was brought back into the game, and for a week there was bliss. <laughs> and then a week later we realised <laughs> that it was better to do something else, so <laughs> we took it out. And oh. thank you, Stella Newt. Um, your contribution to this community is immeasurable. <laughs> 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 we love Stella Newt. He is amazing. He's also a member of the Golden Sun Hacking community. He's told us more about these games than I've forgotten. Um, so, mm. I don't know, he's a good dude. Yeah. But he just uh, had we... to point out, is, isn't Jenna lower level there? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, oh well. God. So, uh, we should mention as well that if you watched the Golden Sun uh, 1 speedrun that um, Plexa did back at AGDQ, you might remember the 42 minute intro. Well, you might be surprised to know that this is actually the end of, well, roughly the end of the intro. It's like seven minutes now. We've got a few more cutscenes, but it's only, there's only an, an 11 minute intro in this game, or 12, I should think. I'm not quite sure on the exact number now off the top of my head. But it's a really, really short intro, so actually, despite the fact that this is a much longer game, you don't have to spend as long on, in the intro when you reset. So it is kind of easier to get into. It's just this game is really, really tricky. Um, another one of those things where if you saw um, the first run, it is a very fascinating run. There's loads of great strats. It's super fast-paced. But it's not quite as te technically demanding as TLA because TLA has a lot more going under the hood. And pretty much from the word go, we are like cracking this game open. There's out of bounds, there's retreat glitches from like the first dungeon we go into. So the first like hour of this is going to be really hectic. Um, so uh, keep, yeah. keep, keep your eyes peeled because it's very technical. This is a very, very, very different run to the first game. The first game is all about speed and then blowing things up with summons. Uh, kinda, we do that at some points, but the, every strategy that you can think of is used at some point. Uh, we really make full and total usage of the class system, which I'm sure we'll talk about at great length throughout this run. Mm, sure, um, we will. But 
Okay, let's get a donation or two out really quickly while we still can, because we're going to be non-stop for a while after this. Oh, of course, I have to get this one in here. We have a massive $1,000 donation Ooh. from Etriel that says, I cannot understate the great work that GDQ has done over the years, and I can't resist donating every time. I really want to see Plexa destroy Dullahan. Let's go. And then we also have a $44.70 donation from Stalray the Alpaca that says, two Golden Sun games in one year? How can I not get excited? Lost Age was a great addition to an already amazing game that ate up probably way too much of my childhood. So here is $44 for the additional 44 gin and 72 cents for the total 72 gin between the two games. The Plexer will surely get all off. Good luck on the run and beat that Dillahan. And again, as we said, it's going to be really thick and fast here with technical stuff. So please do keep your donations coming in for Dillahan. We want to see that fight happen. You guys and, well, you folks, everybody at home can make it happen. So do please, please let's see that Dillahan fight happen. Yeah, there will be plenty of time for donation reading. It's just not the first hour of this game. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. flipping it on our head. Like, that's what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The It's kind of weird because like the cutscenes in this game aren't as kind of like long. There's And I feel like it's just generally less cutscene heavy as then the first one, which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, so if you're wondering what happened here, after Venus Lighthouse was lit, it caused an earthquake and that kind of like sh um, pushed the Iwo coast off the edge and kind of it floated away. And then it got caught by um, a tidal wave and floated here. Um, to re realign with the, the continent. Now, if you've played the original game, you will know um, that when you leave Vale, you have to have a very long conversation with Flint, who loves to talk a lot. This is a much better Venus, Ginny. This is Echo, and you can say no to his tutorial. Uh, we love you, Echo. Thank you very much. Well, I, I love Echo. <laughs> Um, it is a great tu tutorial about the, uh, the the class system. Again, we'll, we'll talk about it when it's more relevant when we are actively changing classes, but just know that Jin are, the, uh, are these magical creatures that when you equip them to your characters, you can gain powers and you can change your classes by having different elements equipped. Um, and then when you, then you can also use their abilities. You'll lose the bonuses they give you, but then you can also ready up to summon to deal big damage. That's essentially how it is. And there, there, there's like a list of like, like set, so they're, they're equipped to you. You use them so they stand by. Then you summon so they recover. A nice like one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's the first attack first. As we walk around to Kandorian Temple, our first dungeon. And we're already underway with, with cool things when, when we hit Kandorian. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, these gin are going to... that retreat glitch. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. These gin, by the way, are going to be uh, the main purpose of... Uh, the main thing we're going for for the first section of the game. We're going to just be going specifically back into dungeons or into dungeons to get those gin. They are a very, very important resource. So, expect to see a lot of... Uh, a lot of those. Oh well, yeah, as we're going into Kandorian Temple, uh, we have uh, something really cool to explain. It is the retreat glitch. It is by far the biggest glitch in, th in this game in terms of just how many applications it has. It has even more applications in this game than it does in the first one. Mm. And essentially, you have the ability to retreat, which uh, kind of functions, uh, if you're familiar with Pokemon, with the escape rope, like that. You, you use it, you go back to the start of the dungeon so that you can very easily get out. It costs six synergy points on Felix to use, and uh, you can use it from mostly anywhere in the dungeon. There's a couple of rooms where they specifically disable it. Um, the other thing that this game has is that you can uh, hotkey to your L and R button specific synergies. In this case, uh, you can also do that with retreat. Whenever you do that, on retreat, you get a, uh, get a yes no prompt, like, are you sure you want to go back to the dungeon? And um, if you do not actually have enough synergy points to cast that, so your synergy points are below six, then uh, retreat will fail. However, since you cast this from a hotkey, it is also like in a state where it like partially succeeded. So even though you will be still in the same room, the game will think that you are in the first room, which means that if you interact with a door, the door essentially has a number, let's say the number is five, you interact with door 5 in the room that you are in, but the game thinks you're in the first room, so you will interact with door 5 in the first room instead. So, despite the fact that Flexa just came down these stairs, he is now draining his PP to get uh, below 6 on Felix, through which he will cast retreat from the hotkey, walk through that same door, and end up in a completely different place in the dungeon. Skipping yeah. several rooms. 
and this is going to be really fascinating because um, it has a bit of a different play here. We're going to do it. We're going to do it on this screen as well. And most importantly, is we're actually not going to do a screen transition that's a staircase or a door. We're actually going to um, fall off uh, a, a, a rope just above us here, and these falling coordinates will play a, a bit of a different role when it comes to the, 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 the retreat glitch by skipping the entire dungeon. <laughs> so, just go to the end of it there. There's normally a boss fight against three chest beaters, or like two, like three big apes, um, which is, you know, not, not that tricky, but there's a whole puzzle you have to, have to fix and then, you know, fight that boss, but they aren't there, which is kind of nice. But we do have to go back in. We have, you may have seen that we ran past a, um, a Mercury Jenny. We're going to go back for that, but we just need to get this synergy here, which is Lash. Um, not only do we have, obviously, um, more and more abilities we can do and more ways we can break the game. This game has a whole host of like brand new synergy, things like Lash and and uh, well, I was gonna say Grip, but that's um, that's Dark Dawn, uh, Sand, yeah, and, and you know Dow. Uh, all, I mean not uh, Dow's Drench and all that kind of stuff. Not Drench. What's it called? Um, I can't uh, remember the name Parch. of it. Parch. Thank you. Uh, I knew there was a CH in there somewhere. But there's like a whole host and, of and, brand and new particular, like, Burst. <laughs> and Burst, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, burst is very cool. <laughs> But yeah, there's like so many more um, explorative synergy in this game, which kind of creates a whole new way to interact with puzzles and interact with screens and interact with maps. So um, yeah, it's really, really cool and you'll see a lot more going on. But, uh, we haven't, haven't actually seen yeah. any battle yet from Plexa, because there's a, there's a lot of running around and Plex is going to show off his uh, sweet menu skills when we go and fight our first Mercury Jenny. Yeah, we could just climb back down there, but um, the boss that Bowie was referencing, the three chest beaters, they're just waiting there for us. So if we climb down the ladder, we would have to fight them, and fighting them is slow, so we don't do that. We just go back around the dungeon, do it all over again. Mm -hmm. I remember this wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember this wall too. <laughs> oh, that stone, that stone's awfully familiar. No, we're good. All right. So, yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah, nine, seven, and five. There we go. Um, so yeah, quickly we're going to uh, make sure that Jenna has Lash equipped and we're also going to um, hotkey Lash to, uh, to R and put it over, over move just because so, we, we're going to be using it in multiple succession. Like if you need, need to use it like twice or more, it's pretty worth it just, just a hotkey so you don't have to go back into the menu again. Um, but this is going to be a pretty simple fight here. It's going to be, um, I think it's a Fume Defend Defend um, and then uh, Fume Venus Defend. Or, or did she get run away? <laughs> <laughs> or, sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, this is the thing we, can, we should talk about. Ginny run, and you have to reset the screen if they do. And some of them, like this one, fine. Not not at all an issue, but some. <laughs> plus yeah. one minute. Plus fine minute. is a word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll no doubt uh, mention whenever we're at a gym where we really, really, really <laughs> don't want them to run away. Get it out of your system now, I, game. I, it's fine. Just do, do it on fog. It's fine. I feel compelled to point out that this is not the first time this has happened. So this is not a that's never happened before moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to gin run all the time. Multiple times. Fume defend defend. <laughs> we can do the strat. <laughs> Yay! Let's hey, go! There we go. Big fan. And then yeah. Fume Venus defend. So the, 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 there's, there's an in interesting thing with summoning, I'll bring it up now because it, we're actually making sure that it's second cast there. Um, when you summon, um, there will, there'll be different tiers of summon between one, two, three, and you know, however many Ginny go into the pool to make the summon, right? Um, whenever you summon the first time, the character who summons will get an elemental boost to that element summoned, um, or the elements that are involved in hybrid. Um, summons in this game, because they, they um, added in hybrid summons too. Um, so let's say, you know, for, so Venus would have given uh, given Felix plus 10 elemental power to Venus, so he does stronger Venus damage. But if that's the last thing that happens in a battle, you don't get that upgrade. So it kind of skips that. So where, where possible, we'll try and get kills with summons to avoid that upgrade. But there will be times where you need Felix the did, Felix did just walk out of a person. That is yeah. canon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about that. That's just a strange... Sometimes when the retreat glitch is kind of playing around in certain ways, you just kind of, like, enter the screen in the manner of, the, of which you left the last one. So he was going upstairs, so it kind of just, you know, entered that way. So... I prefer he walked out of a person, but... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it also works. You are, you are correct. So we're going to be going into uh, the Shrine of the Sea God. Now, there are two objectives here. First off, it's very important that you actually cast Lash on this. We're not going to cross here, but casting Lash on this 
um, pushes the story or like the, the, the cutscenes in this dungeon to um, progress the, the we went through a village called Dyla to the west of us right now it will push that to kind of be in its next state when we come back to Dyla if you don't do this cutscene here you have to come back and do this and then go back to Dyla so doing it now because we're in here already make sure that we don't have to kind of do it later um, but the other reason we're here is we're going to be grabbing our first Jupiter Ginny. Um, but we need to get to the heart or like to the depth of the dungeon um, to do that. So we're going to do that legitimately, right, Plexa? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, Good. totally. I yeah. Mean, we, we really love le legitimate, you know. This, this saves one second. This saves 11. We're doing it very much the hard way. <laughs> so he's aligning with the door below. He's now running straight north until he gets a flash and then hold left and he'll find the door. There we go. Down to the bottom. And this is where the uh, Ginny is. So these and outer you bounds... Be yeah, you might be wondering what he was doing out of bounds to begin with. But uh, yeah, the door in the first room that you interact with doesn't necessarily have to actually be a door. It can also be data out of bounds. So, <laughs> and you can be sent to that data to get out of bounds. And uh, once you are out of bounds, you can actually keep interacting with all of the data that is stored there. This game kind of stores all of the, it's, it's RAM data out of bounds. So, um, stuff like uh, monster sprites, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, can all, it can all be stored out there and you can interact with it. And based on what kind of data it is, it, it will interact with you in different ways. Sometimes it spikes, sometimes it's stored. So this is Breath. Breath is a fantastic Ginny, a priority healing Ginny. So we'll use a, you know, if we need to, to kind of like go first and also heal. So uh, Fume, Echo, Ray. Uh, so Fume, Echo, Attack, and then Fume, Venus, Ray is enough to make sure and confirm this kill on Breath. Also, make it, also maintaining the fact that we need to have at least six PP so we can actually um, aggress back to the start or retreat back to the start. Sure, sorry, Shining Force is getting in my head. Um, Camelot also made Shining Force, if I ever say a Shining Force um, name instead of uh, Golden Camelot, I'm sorry. Um, so this is what hey, it is. Where... well, Luigi. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! I'm trying to forget that, alright? I'm trying to forget that monstrosity. Oh, yeah. You brought it up, and I'm very glad that you did bring it up in the way you did. Um, so this is a really important time to actually talk about the fact that um, if you've played Golden Sun 1, you'll know that PP regen is very fast. You'll hear those ticks all the time, when you, when, you know, or you'll get it back really, really quickly. It is not fast in this game. It's much, 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 much slower. So um, the management of PP, making sure that you're above and below 6 whenever you want, is incredibly critical to making these, these dungeons nice and fast. Um, so, you know, there will be times when you want to try and take damage so you can heal to force your PP to get a little bit lower. Um, and there's times you have to really hold back on that and stretch as much HP as you can to maintain enough PP to cast Retreat where possible. Um, and we're going to get our first um, instance as well of Retreat um, um, acting in yet another way. Um, and that's actually um, going to be remote um, interaction with chests. So um, I'll, let, I'll let Plexer explain this one because I'm not quite sure how this one works as in depth. Oh, um... So there's too many treasure items in this game. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's Ooh. really not good. It's okay, we're fine. Ooh. Okay. Jeremy's <laughs> fine. Now, basically, um, in the first game, all of the treasures are, like, kind of hard-coded into the global memory. Whereas in this game, there's too many of them, so they're all coded in relatively, as in, it's like, chest 3, area 1, or something like that. So, that means Retreat Glitch works on them, so we can get this full metal vest. Um, from the first room of this dungeon instead of, uh, well, picking up nothing. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you go back to the first screen, um, you'll actually see the chest is opened because you've done it um, remotely, so it's kind of, kind, kind of cool. But we are going to do another retreat because this is actually a very fascinating door and a very fascinating thing about this game. This is what we call the Madra Safe Door. Um, <laughs> so there's a, this is like a coordinate almost like bang in the center of, of the map where if you're in the retreat mode in certain cases, the game just kind of sends you to this particular spot. And it's really good. We've just skipped the entirety of um, Deck and Plateau and gone to the other side. God damn it, Iron, please. Um, Iron sucks. He did a, he did a pair. Me, me, and Iron, me and Iron don't get along very well. He has <laughs> trolled me in every run for like the last month. <sighs> yeah, he, he, he does suck. He's powerful, he's fast. You know, no one outspeeds him. So, but I mean, the thing is, we did, we did just skip like an entire dungeon. So we are, our levels are a lot lower than they probably could be. Um, but yeah, he is powerful. Ginny tend to have like an increased strength for every mob around them. They usually have like the skills plus one kind of thing. So um, 
they're usually quite quite tough but um yeah that madra safe door is is a huge thing and we're going to use it multiple times to kind of like um, expedite movement around but even though we skipped all the way through deck and plateau we are going to go back there to go and um grab another Ginny and also we need an item called the Pound Cube which is going to be uh, again an, an explorative synergy that helps us get around and solve puzzles. Um, but yeah what we're going to try and do hopefully is get this um, encounter skip by jumping in here because entering into caves and things like that perfect uh, that resets the encounter rate and you know resets your steps to zero to, to the next encounter. Um, but what's really great about this is if you come into Deccan Plateau in one direction, or like the main the main direction, like the normal way you go through it, you'll you'll come across Cannon, who's a, a Mars Jenny. But if you, he'll he'll like run away from you, and he'll jump over these pillars. That, uh, if if you jump on them once, they crack, and jump on them the second time, they break. But because we come in through the back of Deccan Plateau, we don't chase Cannon to this screen, so he doesn't jump on this pillar right here. However, when we actually fall down a hole that we're going to create to where Cannon will be, he's already there because the game doesn't need him to reach this point to be there. So there he is. It's basically a huge sequence break. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, you, you'll already notice if you're familiar with the first game how different this is. Like, we spend all of the first hour basically powering up and then we go and do things. So we're basically going around collecting all these genies so we can get big and strong. Oh, I'm going to get that Nope. Pound that pillar in order to cut off Cannon's escape, and uh, one more encounter, and then we're gonna deal with Cannon. And uh, Cannon should only have one chance to run. Uh, if he does run, we do have to pound that pillar again, which I always forget. It's always annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so Fog, Echo, and Ray just to kind of put um, Jenna into base class, so she can use Fume as, as, as a follow-up. Fog is, um, is Mercury element, so it does deal good damage to him. And also, we're using Echo because when you gain a Ginny from when a Ginny joins you, they are already in standby. So we put Echo into standby so that we have Ramses ready to summon and uh, finish the fight. Nice and fast. It's a cool fight. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I do enjoy actually the uh, the use of Fog to put her into base uh, and then uh, deal the extra damage as well. So this few like costs a lot. No worries, yeah, the, the other strategy, which is... Oh, yeah, don't worry about this, this is normal. Um, <laughs> the other strategy, which uh, another rather by the name of Rigo Trace uses, uh, involves using Fume. It's slightly faster, but I wouldn't have been able to do it in that situation because I had too little PP on Jenna. It's that kind of thing where if things go wrong, uh, you, just, you never get your PP back. It's basically gone for good once you use it, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Rigo Trace. We're going to mention him a ton. He has done so much work with this game. Oh, yeah. Um, absolute legend. Kind of weird how like um, the, you know, the the routes that we uh, we have kind of go through particular phases and changes based on on very specific input. Um, you know, I remember when I think a big thing is the whole like we'll talk about it later. But um, ma um, en enemy data clearing is a thing that we learned, and it's like oh wow, this makes so many things so easy. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of you know, stuff we can really really talk about. Um, but we got a few cutscenes here, so um... yeah, we ha actually have a breather in the run. Wow, um, Argic, you're up, buddy. Oh, here we go. All right, we got a $25 donation from Dark Mathis that says, "Here's to a run of one of my boyfriend's favorite games." There's some amazing prizes available during this run, but the real prize would be to see a great runner crush an insanely hard boss fight. We've also got a $250 donation from Anonymous that says, Dullahan Incentive? That sounds amazing! I just lost my head over the idea of it! And then we've got a $50 <laughs> donation from Cabbage that just says, Dullahan, Dullahan, Dullahan. Yeah, please, folks, do keep these coming in. We are getting there towards the Dullahan Incentive, and we definitely want to see it. Oh, yeah. You want to see it. <laughs> That second donation is funny because Dillahan doesn't have a head. Yeah. Well, very astute observation, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Doctor Mr. Plexer. Thank you, thank you. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh dear. Um, this is Piers, by the way. Piers is awesome. Um, he is a Mercury Adept and absolutely will not be joining the party. Do not worry about that. He's, there's no way in hell that a Water Adept will, will be joining a party that is missing a Water Adept. Um, he he has a, a lot of there's a lot of lore we'll go through that a bit later but um yeah he's a very cool character he's um, a, sh- um, a, a a captain a sailor um and he is a very fascinating kind of um because like, the, the mercury class is a really really weird line so it, he's like the secondary tank right so in the first game you got isaac the big damage you got felix there's the uh, the 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 reflection there and you got like um Sheba and Ivan are kind of the same. Then you've got like Mia and Jenna who are kind of like these weird opposites of each other. And then you've got Garrett and Piers. Garrett is rubbish and Piers is like really cool, but there's this kind of weird like interplay between his archetype of stats than his class type. And it's so strange. But um, he's really fun. And his... What you're trying to say is that Piers is also rubbish? Is that no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> we would not be able to survive Poseidon without Pierce, so therefore we cannot call him rubbish. Yeah, and his and his great sword's got a red line down the center, so he's cool. Which is actually is a Shining Force 3 reference. Ha <laughs> ha! You thought I wouldn't do any? Well, it's true. The, the bastard sword in Shining Force 3 has a red line down the center. Ha <laughs> ha! And, it, and it's, like, it, it, it's literally the same model. <laughs> it's, it's Thank the same you, model. Dr. Mr. Camelot. Uh, no worries. So hold on then. We, we, would you say uh, he just appears? Nope, the science means so, that's fine. So, the lash is being used, and... We're gonna... We're gonna grab the pirate sword here and retreat back. The pirate sword is for selling. We have a little bit of a, of a money route kind of in, injected into the beginning part of the run, because we are going to do... We're, we're crossing over from, um, you know, one continent to another, and this is the, the this ne- next continent of Ocenia. We actually do in reverse, which means that we're going to do all the harder stuff first, all the easy, <laughs> quote-unquote easier stuff <laughs> second. Yeah. Um, but we are going to run around um, and do um, Air's Rock first. So the way you would kind of approach this is that, you know, you, you go to Madra, you find out that the Madran um, mayor has gone over to Al Hafra to kind of speak to the mayor of Al Hafra. So we want to go and find them and talk to them and ask them about, you know, the boat nearby, about piers, all that kind of stuff. Um, so they went, they're going through um, Yampi Desert, which is just at the east here, over east to Al Hafra, which is what you're meant to kind of like, you're, the game's pushing you towards going and doing that. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go around this way, round to Mikasala, do a big shop, and then prepare to take on Ayers Rock nice and early. And there's a big reason for that. A big shop consists of two items that gives you a little bit of context for this game. We've <laughs> <laughs> got a huge shop at the end. Oh, it's <laughs> <big>. <laughs> yeah. Three items. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I went in a fourth actually, it's quite large. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How, wow. how large? Getting getting fancy here. Yeah, thanks, so. so these fights are very important um, and specific to deal with because like these kobolds can dodge because they suck. Um, but an interesting thing to note is that though there, there are the Momongas, they're very, very fast enemies, but um, Sheba or Blue can one-shot them with Ray if she has uh, Breath Equipped. She can do it without, but there's, it's a harder damage roll. They have like 54 HP, um, I think it is, and she can hit for like 53 to 57 or something, something around that. That's with right. Breath, yeah. She That's absolutely needs Breath, you can't do it without. But we're going to stop doing that no. from now on because um, it costs too much PP and we need to conserve it as much as possible. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we expended a lot to get to Mikasala, so we'll take it in, we're going to grab a luck... Uh, do you grab the luck feather? I'm going to, because I bought her okay. at the start of the game. Cool, yeah. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a broad axe for Felix, and then an armlet for Shiva, so she doesn't get melted by everything. Because the full metal vest that we got earlier in Deck and Plateau, we get to Jenna, so that she's tanky, um, and so is Shiva after this. So, yeah, here's the... Uh, the broad axe being picked up there, and then the heavy... Is it the heavy armlet? Just, just the, the armlet. Regular armlet. Just armlet. Um, yeah. And this is kind of like nice, and a, a couple of elixirs, they're very, actually really handy. Um, and then as many herbs as we, we can get, I think. Um, yeah. It's just, just quick at a press lift. Just quick at a press yeah. lift, that's all it is. Don't need 30, this... I probably need 2 maximum, but... Yeah. Why take well 2 when you can take 30? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the broad axe is a good piece of equipment, and I should note as well that we are putting, or we would, we we're going to soon put uh, Felix into his um, like level two Earth class knife. So it's going to be a big like stat 
boost in just a second. We'll talk about classes again in, in a bit. But the Broad Axe is a nice chunk of e extra damage. The damage formula in this game is attack minus defense divided by two. So every two attack power is one, one extra, extra damage. Uh, this is Sour. Sour is very painful. So there are two setups here based on what happens to Jenna. Is that low enough? I think that is. That is low enough. Okay, cool. So we're going to do, the, do the, the backup here. I think this actually allows for the rainbow. Because, yeah. They um, both allow for the rainbow. But, yeah. The, uh, this, the, oh, oh, oh yeah. Because... We, <laughs> we have backup strikes here, basically, to guarantee that we can always get the rainbow kill. Rainbow kills just give you more experience, more money. is just kind of helpful. Uh, but if Jenna gets too low, we have to do the slightly slower summoning strat there. Um, and it still works. And it just means that uh, Jenna is not in risk of dying, which would be a bad thing. Death is pretty mm. permanent in this game. We don't have access to revives very easily until much later in the game. No freely available Phoenix Bells and Downs in this game, unfortunately. So, death is bad. So now that we have uh, VWOW in, in Knight, uh, he's going to deal 45 rather than 41 damage. That's a nice little upgrade. Uh, um, Mamongas don't have much HP, as we say, but yeah, it does sometimes um, not get the kill. Yeah, but, the damage um, roll. <laughs> So, I won't mess with it anymore, but yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Even then, even then, if <laughs> even if you do it, like if you don't have an encounter encounter that you can clear in one go anyway, uh, we often choose just use two attacks with Felix instead, just to save synergy points on Shiba, because Shiba is going to be needing a lot of it. And this next uh, dungeon, Aerosbrock, as it turns out, is going to make great use of her ability rolling, which costs five, and we're going to have to use it a ton, so we cannot use her as so much. In battle, unfortunately. should mention as well that now we've got um, Felix into Knight, this is a good time to chat, chat just about, about classes. So classes inherently have like a, um, a percentage, so every character has like their base stats, and then classes kind of add on top of that a percentage bonus. So if you're looking at something like Squire, which is the Venus line for the main characters, Squire, Knight, Gallant, Lord, Slayer. They kind of, I think it's like 110% to start, and then it's 130%, 150, 170, 190, roughly, I think. Uh, although you might know the exact numbers there, Plexa. Um, but essentially, it's like a percentage <laughs> boost to all of your stats. Um, and each class has like different ones. Like, they're not all just like flat across the board, but there'll be like, you know, a bonus to MP and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, Welcome to Ears Rock, aka your nightmare. No, um, lots of people really hated this dungeon when they were a kid, and fair call, this dungeon is exceptionally long. It's longer than anything in the first game by some margin, and there's two bits to it as well, so it's just... Yeah, and a lot of people just grinded their way through here, got lost, and just generally hated it. Um, fair, uh, but we love this dungeon, and you'll see why in a moment. This is genuinely one of the best dungeons in the world. Yeah. Also, before um, they entered, or oh, so they entered Plexa, before, before you entered Plexa, um, you also opened the map and scrolled the cursor to the top. I was curious, sir. Yeah, I didn't need to do it, actually. Mm, that was, no. uh... No, that was just me being safe. Basically, it clears things from the memory, as Bowie was saying earlier, and I'm getting terrible encounters. That's fine. These, 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 yeah, these, these are hideous. <laughs> um, so, yeah. When, if you look at the enemies on screen, um, there, there you've got like left, middle, and right, right? There are actually slots, there are like enemy slots that kind of like fit into different places. Um, and there are small enemies and there are big enemies, um, or like different sized enemies, essentially. And particular enemies being in slot two, or just being in the game's memory as, as a whole, can sometimes create difficulties and intricacies when dealing with out of bounds. Because what happens is when you're out of bounds, um, as Sid was saying earlier, there's, it's, the game essentially say, uh, stores its data in the Outer Bounds area. So things like enemies that you've encountered and stuff like that is there. So um, by being able to clear particular enemy data, it creates easier methods of running past that data to get to the place we need to get to out of bounds. And that will take place later on in Air's Rock. So going into Air's Rock for the first time, clearing that, that data if you need to, is really important for making it easy to get through the dungeon. Yeah, this is a fun thing they added in TLA. Like, there's so much content in this game. For, like, a very early GBA game, it's unreal how much content there actually is. Um, but that squishing of content onto a cartridge leads to compromises, and that leads to a lot of areas of reused memory. And um, part of that is this thing where enemies in slot 2, for some reason, contribute to the junk in the outer bounds. So, in particular, the height map. It, it, dictates what level the terrain is out of bounds. It's really annoying. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. 
but it's fine, we just need to keep track of which enemy we get in the second slot throughout the dungeon. And then the last one counts. Before we get to the other exactly. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Earth Rock is, uh, pre there's pretty tough enemies here again. Like, this is one of the last things you do on Ocenia usually, so coming through here a bit later. And, th and this is why picking up Broad Axe is really helpful, because sometimes there'll be like one enemy, and rather than casting with the girls, you want to just have Felix attack twice, because you're going to be using a lot of PP, and you need to have, you need, you need to reserve some for puzzles, as well as being able to get through the fight. So this is wonderful kind of like, balancing act of you know using it for combat or using it for ex ex exploration and yeah. this is it's unironically the most technical part of the run um pp management here is deceptively hard um it's so easy just to overuse on ray because you don't have a choice and then you have problems uh, so getting this right is like very difficult even though it looks very very easy oh yeah and if, if, if you mismanage and have to take like extra attacks and someone dies in this section of the game, you are very far from up. You are going best off taking a wipe, going back to Mikasala, spending a bunch of money reviving your people, and then walking all the way back to Aeris Rock and through it. Yeah, the inability to revive right now is makes me just like this is one of the points in my mind. Legitimately scared something terrible is gonna happen because they can. And it has. Um, and there's really nothing we can do about it except stuff it up. Um, but so far, so good. Um, we are getting levels, we're getting stronger, and nothing her particularly horrific has happened just yet. Just bad RNG on the encounters, but that's okay. We deal with that. Exactly. The, the, the nice thing about even if you do get like really big encounters, they do also give more experience. And the experience level does uh, matter. That is, <laughs> that is a disgusting. <laughs> For that encounter. Sorry, oh. I shouldn't laugh. Oh. I've never seen that before. I'm sorry. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna plus one that count. If I had not had my last attempt in this game, then I would have said I've never seen that before. But this happened <laughs> in my exact last run. <laughs> yeah, it happens from time to time. Yeah, it's super frustrating. But yeah. now, when you get an encounter, all of these things just get reset, and you can miss cycles and all kinds of nonsense. But you can get this cycle by doing this trick rather than pushing the pillar. You move. And uh, you can catch the cycle. Yeah, look, oh, we're a platformer now. We have cycles and stuff. Oh, yeah. Your eyes widening just cracked me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> so you just go, oh, <laughs> well done. <dang. laughs> <Yes. laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's going to be one of those runs. That's okay. It happens. Yeah. The thing about this is such a long run that like the bad stuff now is just going to be paid off later on in the run. I'm going to get like good RNG somewhere. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Or well, mud won't run away or you know, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> We're also like gearing up now or building up to kind of the more fa one of the more I think fascinating elements to the retreat glitch um, and that when it, and that's when, and that's when it comes to climbable surfaces. This next screen you're not gonna see. Um, so we're going to go into retreat mode. We're going to um, just hotkey and move. Now we're going to jump up onto the on the thing. I'm going to let Plex focus on this one, but essentially with the next screen he's doing blind. So he's going to press the A button to make sure he's off a ladder. Um, and then, oh, okay, he needs he needs to redo retreat because that was an early fight. Yeah, um, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So essentially the next screen he's doing blind, and it's one of those things where you get used to the way it feels. So he's going to move to the left um, to quickly jump onto the next ladder. He's going to move up and then wiggle left a little bit to get him jump onto the next one. Move up for a bit, hold right, and then be going to press up. And then, don't, so it doesn't really have to press A, but you know we'll press A to make sure he's off the ladder and then run right to the next one and come down. So the reason this is really cool and the reason this is working is because the next screen has a gimmick where there's wind and there's kind of like this weird mist. And if you don't um, cast Whirlwind on a central stone, when you get to the top of it, it'll bring you back down to the bottom of the screen. But because we removed the loading zones by um, uh, using the retreat mode, we don't get that. So we can climb to the very, very top, come down the right-hand side, and then pull the uh, move pillar to then give us access to the, yeah, I, will, I, the Whirlwind statue in the center without doing the whole right side puzzle. Yeah, if I was feeling particularly swaggy, I'd do the entire room blind, because I can and have done that in the past. Uh, it is slower, but I figure a lot of people haven't even seen this room, so I should ought to show off what I just did blind. So here we go. This is what Bowie's talking about, moving this pillar out of the way. That one right there. So we climbed up the left side, we came down the right side, we moved the pillar out of the way, then we back up to the top, got the encounter, climbed down the left side, that sent us to the bottom for some reason, and then we could just 
the other stream. It saves a pretty horrific puzzle. Um, it's pretty nice. And it, it saves a lot kind of, of mind. Kind of impressive, a little bit. It's and more impressive encounter... once we know this room. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that encounter is crucial to the, the steps, by the way, because an encounter clears retreat mode. So with a, like, we had to get the loading zones back in order to get the warps to activate again and send us to the bottom. Uh, without an encounter, that would not be possible. So we're happy that we can still get encounters there. And that's the entire outside of Aeros Rock. It's, it's already... Mm, my beeping is going to be really good. I can actually skip this the next time, but I'm not going to. Yeah, it's always safer just, 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 just to grab it. Yeah. Um, so Sid said that's the end of the outside of Aeros Rock. So th this is the interior to Aeros Rock. A very, yeah. very, very important thing to note about the rocks is that the exterior and the interior are considered two separate dungeons. And yeah. that will be important and, and, and for a reason. It was about this point in your casual play that you're like, oh god, there's more? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and this kept going and going and going. There's like a left side, a right side, and people were like, no, this dungeon is too long. Camelot, what have you done? There uh, are three colors this. with doors that go up to six. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to shorten this dungeon quite considerably, so strap in. Okay. Oh, move clips. Yes. Oh, yeah. Take those. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's let's go ahead. So uh, retreat glitch is not the only glitch we have access to, fortunately. Uh, we also have this. We have we have pillars that you can move, and uh, at the top they have a little they, they have a hitbox to stand on. So uh, if you position yourself just right, you can just kind of clip on top of them. You saw how Plexa, how fast Plexa did that. Uh, that is not pixel perfect. That is sub pixel perfect. It's, it's, it's a sub pixel <laughs> trick. It's super annoying. You can have the right visual cue and everything, and it will just fail. So yeah, we're, exactly. we're basically Sonic now because we've got some pixels to worry about. This is this we is why I run this game. Three and knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normally a Sonic runner, so I, I kind of did. I kind of now finally understand why I was drawn to this game. <laughs> it's the sub pixels, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got cycles, we've got sub pixels. I mean, basically a platformer at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically. Actually, so the interesting is... category does play out like a platformer because it's entirely scripted and it's purely execution. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a different category, and I, it's about 300 times harder than this one, so... Yeah. This particular move tip is harder, because this one can't, you can't, you only get one shot at it, so that, that piece, you're going to do a save just in case, yeah. I, 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 um, I want to get this just to show it off, because it's so cool. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the sub-pixel, you'll know that if you're on it, if you, essentially what you can do is that you'll know, if you kind of tap right, and then you see Felix move, but he doesn't actually move anywhere, you're on the right sub-pixel. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where um, there was like a light, there was like, there was like a, a lighter line on the left, and Plex aligned the dark line on um, Felix, on Felix's trousers um, to that, then pressed right to kind of overlap his shadow with two particular darker spots, and gets it first time. Lovely. Fair. I have missed. I missed that. In moment. I've done that every single run of my life, by the way. Use move on instead of retreat there. <laughs> um, I've failed that trick every run I've done the past week, so I saved that proportion. Also, uh, that steam vent in the top right was on, but retreat turns it off for some reason. <sighs> it's just... A lot of aspects to retreat glitch. Yeah, wow. retreat yeah. glitch just does things to this game. Bless it. it Try so hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the vent like, no. is back on. The vent is back on. No. And yeah, so that entire screen has just been completely removed. And that, that's quite a long screen having to go around the back and like push the stone to clear the vent and then come around the other way again. It's like a whole thing. Um, so the retreat glitch there makes us fall <laughs> down onto the bottom of this screen. Um, and, and that's here's skips, what, 50% of the dungeon? <laughs> uh, a lot. Yeah. That's, that skips a lot. Give or take, give or take. Yeah. I'm also going to do this in a really swaggy way, so I hope you know how it works. <laughs> I don't think I know this particular swag way, but um, uh -oh. you should know, right? Okay. But I did, I did mention that Plexa went uh, in and out of the dungeon on a shortcut door. Now, I don't mean to kind of like to to my own, own horn, but that's called the Bowie door, purely because I was playing a casual playthrough and used the door. And Plexa went, wait a second. Um, that's the door? Yeah, that's going to be really important in a moment. Yeah. I actually need, there we go. Sid and Bowie are like, what on earth is he doing? Well, uh, uh, in yep. retreat mode, this, this pillar uh, isn't actually moved. Um, I've moved the object, but not its collision, so I can just walk back through it. So I'm going to get there an encounter now to re reset retreat mode eventually. Hello, thank you. I've and then once before. this loads, then the game is going to update the collision of the pillar back to where it should be. 
and then I can just conveniently move it out of the way. That's it. <laughs> Um, that's it, right? There. That's really cool. Never seen, never seen that oh before. But I, 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 that's fast. You don't have to watch the whole like float up, don't you? It's not yeah. faster. It, it's, it's not faster, faster but it's, it's, it's um, yeah, test faster, but not in, in practice. It's not faster. But it's swag, and swag is yeah. time neutral, so it's fine. Of course. Exactly. Um, so yeah, exactly. that that door, by the way, is super important because we mentioned yeah, that the our, interior our and the... is completely drained. So we got to go get the stackers for. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, we do need um, Phoenix to be uh, casting. But um, yeah, so um, that door now creates the entrance to the interior being that large room in the middle, not this room here when we, when we came through the stairs up top. So yeah, it, we, we changed the, in, the, the, uh, the entry point to the dungeon, which is very, very important because, you know, we need to grab this, this side crystal. It's very important to get RPP, but you know, one of those things. Very important. Oh no, I went to retreat mode. Oh, well, I hope this still works. Oh, wait, that's a soul blade? That's, that's the best it. weapon in the game, isn't it? That's the One best of weapon in the game. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's one of the best, right? It's, <laughs> it's no Excalibur. That, that is a real and legitimate soul blade, by the way. Um, so we now have the... Do we have someone who's ready on the old McGee don't counter? Uh, <laughs> I think so. Someone please uh, count them. Yeah. Count the McGee don'ts. McGee don'ts. Watch this prop first try. Oh, what? Oh, I what? need this to my chin. Oh, there it is. Oh, there, there it is. Megiddo. <laughs> Megiddo. <laughs> I always want to see a... some Megiddo in the chat, by the way. Yeah, yeah. we want to see. We, it, you need to make sure you spell it. All capital letters M space, E space, G space, I space, D space, D space, O. Um, so this is a very particular setup. Based on the fact that he had a mummy, he's going to walk a very certain way to get the, okay, uh, the door. You, yeah. Oh, I had, I had okay. Emu, sorry. I, I thought I had Ghoul. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, we fixed the first setup. So yeah, that, that was the, the, the out of bounds that we were talking about earlier, and we need to keep track on which uh, which enemy data we had out of bounds in order to do that. Uh, the, the way he got out of bounds is by once again abusing the, the pillar collision uh, in combination with the retreat glitch, so he pushed the pillar and uh, Felix just kind of moved there, but the actual collision stayed in the same place. So maybe that's why we were able to pop onto there and just kind of move after we were about bounce after the game gave him control back. And yeah, and now the soul blade <laughs> is gonna do soul blade things. So we're just gonna whack yep. everything with our big stick, um, <laughs> and it's gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, it's a very so, very, very very powerful weapon. <laughs> Yeah, it's really strong. I think it's like an, an extra 180 attack at this point, which is an, an, an extra 90 damage. So at this point, everything getting hit by that is dying. Um, and also remember, the Megiddo itself is a triple damage. It, it, it's like a crit proc, basically, but it's triple damage, and it's also Venus aligned. So, Megiddo! Megiddo! Uh, <laughs> it's generally faster when you have, like, two enemies or whatever, or maybe, maybe three as well, just to have Felix just slap him back, rather than, like, spend all, all this time casting. Generally, two is like the best one, but you know. Megiddo! We, we, we just want to see Megiddo at this point. We actually Pretty really much, don't. Yeah. We, we really don't. The, the animation is, well, slow and they die in one hit anyway, but it's really epic, so we love to see yeah. it. The thing and is, you'll get. That happens, each time that happens, we lose three seconds. Um, it's still worth it overall, but we. Yeah, it's three seconds. Hmm. The thing with Megiddo as well is that it will proc a million times in every single encounter until you get to a point when you need it. Um, <laughs> and then you just, you're just swing it away. Exactly. We should probably actually acknowledge how we got that. Yes, maybe. Plexa, yeah? please okay. describe that because I have no clue. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> okay, memory. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. so basically, we have the retreat item split. Um, so. You may recall at some point I did a retreat warp and I ended up on the world map. What happens at that point is that the game is trying to find a door that doesn't exist and the, the game goes ah, ah, and then freaks out and then um, tries to interpret something as a door. If it can't, it just sends us to a failsafe door. There's no failsafe item. So what it does in that case is just keeps reading memory until it interprets something that looks like give Felix or give the, the player an item. Now, almost every instance of this is junk. Uh, mostly long swords. Uh, there's some interesting stuff that happens at Treasure Isle. You can actually talk to the Nereba fortune teller through a chest at Treasure Isle. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but it just so happens that that particular synergy stone has the correct piece of memory after it that says, give Felix the soul blade. Nowhere else in the game does it really work like that. Um, it's really quite a miracle, and that's why the Bowie door was such a thing, because we just overlooked it for like three years or something by that point. 
and it actually ended up being useful. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, that door in, in particular just makes it, it happen. If your entry point is that door, that's next to the to the, the synergy stone that we kind of grabbed, then it won't work. So that's why it's really weird, but, um, yeah. So yeah, that's the end of Earth Rock, and we now have the Soul Blade. So we don't really need any more weaponry for Felix, at least. We might grab it. I think we're going to grab a weapon for Jenna because it covers some damage rolls. Um, but yeah, for now, we're going to be all good. Um, at this point, we're looking for a certain level because, we, again, we're going to do a reverse. We're going to go through Yampi Desert. Now, if you've played this game before, you'll know that when you go after Al Hafri, you'll go to the southeast of Yampi Desert and you'll jump into a, into a hole that you can't get out of. So this is essentially a blocked location. However, Plexa is a speedrunner, so that doesn't matter. It's completely fine. It's going to be okay. Megiddo. Megiddo. <laughs> All right, Rip three seconds. Let's do a deal. If you're going to do this with these encounters, give it to me on Briggs, please. Please. <laughs> okay, so it's retreat glitch. Happen. Retreat glitch here from this position. Put us out of bounds. We're going to run to the top left to grab. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to grab this lucky medal and then we're going to go and uh, pick up a safety item by running up left for like five seconds or six seconds and then up right. And uh, yeah, it yeah, does a cave where we get so a this is a light. This is a super dungeon, as in one of the post game dungeons. It's the closest water of life which revives us in the game. So, um, yeah, they really didn't want to give us revives in this game. We, we literally have to glitch into a super dungeon to get a revive. It's insane. Um, but we've got a cutscene coming up, so I'll get to take it away and then we'll get to the Briggs boss fight. Ah, very much. We've got plenty coming in here, plenty of golden sun love. We have a $25 donation from Silent Persona, who says, I've been hyped for this golden sun run all week. I know you're gonna crush it, Plexa. Let's get that Dullahan boss incentive met. You got a $25 donation from a Jew Potter that says, glad to see golden sun at GDQ. Let's see that Dullahan fight. We've also got a $10 donation from Meglo that says we'd love to see some Dullahan. Good luck with the run. Uh, also got a $25 donation from Kate Karma saying Golden Sun, the Lost Age, brings back so many good memories. Definitely a long time favorite of mine. Great game for a great cause and good luck with the run. And then one that I definitely have to read here, $25 donation from Anonymous that says, I have to say, I feel excited to see Plexa running Golden Sun at SGDQ. I think anyone would agree it's Jenna Rally, an amazing game, but I also have a personal love for a series that introduced me to RPGs. Let's get these incentives met. I'm creating an exciting Dillahan fight today. Good luck, Plexa. Top effort, top effort. Well done, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Well done. <laughs> that was that was a well-deserved sigh, person. <laughs> uh, actually, thank you for that. Question. Oh, uh, I never used this. That would have been okay. That's sixty. Oh yeah, we'll just get. Right. All right, so six sixty should be fine. We would generally want to be at sixty-one here. And uh, earlier I was mentioning experience level, and uh, that's you know having extra encounters would at least get us to the right experience point. We want to be level nine here, and then. Uh, we want 10 levels worth of agility. Uh, the 10th one comes from that mint, which is a one-use item on which you can just raise a person's agi agility by one level. Um, with that level of agility, um, Felix should be able to consistently outspeed uh, the sea fighters, which uh, are Briggs' little helpers. There's going to be four total of them, and well, getting rid of those is a safer, and b gets us a bunch of experience. To hopefully, uh, put us in a good experience point afterwards. Um, Believe it or not, yes. we have the Soul Blade, um, but he's still a run killer. So <laughs> We have the Soul Blade, yet Brix is still a run killer. We even did Airstruck earlier to get a whole bunch of experience, yet he's still a run killer. But fortunately, yeah. hopefully we should be fine here. Uh, 60 should still be enough there. If he gets really bad rolls on the speed and turns, he might get one yeah. fighter out turning, but it, it's a risk worth it. If the Soul Blade cooperates, this fight is absolutely free, as you can imagine. By Soul Blade cooperating, I mean we get Megiddo every time we need to get Megiddo. Uh, however, the Soul Blade has this really nasty habit of never procking in any of the boss fights. And if it doesn't proc, then we can get ourselves into some dicey situations. So, let's see how we go. Yeah. 
So, um, he also specifically puts Shiba in a class that has impact, so that he can boost Felix's attack power. Uh, gonna do that twice. The first turn, he's uh, only gonna have one for his attack, which means he can't one-shot the Sea Fighters. So, we're just gonna have Jenna do a Volcano in order to finish the Sea Fighter off. And on the second turn, uh, Felix will be uh, double impacted, and uh, he will be able to one-shot all of the Sea Fighters. That. We don't want to see, but th this one's arguable, it just it cuts out the volcano, I guess. And th from this point on, we don't want to see Megiddo on Sea Fighters, and we do want to see Megiddo on the Dark Brick. So, uh, we're, we're, we're good so far. Nice out turn there, nice out turn again, very lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yep. good. We want Briggs to use his, uh, his, his signal whistles as fast as possible to get all of the Sea Fighters out, so we can get rid of all of them. And uh, the Briggs does generally use items before he does anything else. The oil drop is pretty scary because uh, after that, uh, he, he can also. I need Megiddo, please. Yep, Megiddo's oh, please. If Briggs uses too many items, he starts getting access to Echo Cut and he can uh, do very bad things because Echo Cut is very strong. All the Sea Fighters also yeah. have Echo Cut, which is why we got rid of them. Please give us Megiddo. Come on. <laughs> Good God! Yeah, there we okay, go. There impact. My impact just dropped, so hopefully he dies. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, damage. Damage. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Oh, goodness, yeah. But that's why that fight says it, it, you can just die there. It's yep. just not not it, fun. Um, but yep. we didn't, so yay. First run, kill it down. Exactly. This is also the fight <laughs> that we got elixirs for because they can use smoke bombs, and if they use them on Felix, he will not hit the thing. So. We have we have a lot of setup just for this particular fight. This is the first. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's truly horrific. Um, I can feel but... I can feel the years being added to your life every single time you get past a run killer. It's like oh <laughs> Christ, thank God. <laughs> yeah, we got some terrible ones coming up, but we also have a really obnoxiously long cutscene. So Argek, please relieve me yeah, from Argek. my boredom. Take it away. Uh I can relieve you. We have a $20 donation from the Booker saying, Seeing Plexus run of the first Golden Sun during last GDQ was a blast. So I'm excited to see the Lost Age this time around. And maybe Dark Dawn in the next GDQ? Anyways, good luck to you, Plexa. We've also got a $100 donation from White Wilfos that says, Golden Sun was one of my favorite series growing up. Please beat Dullahan to avenge all of those like me who were never able to defeat him. And we've also got a $250 donation from Samuel Lusick, who says, Golden Sun is a fantastic game. I love the run at AGDQ and the race at Hotfix. I've replayed all three games after that, and they are still fantastic. Good luck to Plexa, and let's get Dullahan met. Yes, please do, folks. Please keep your donations coming in. They're coming in strong. A quick update for you on that right now. We have hit $20,006 right now out of the 50000 needed for that. It is coming up around the middle of the run. I believe we can hit it. Do please keep those donations coming in. Solid effort so far, team. Let's keep it up. Yeah. Just, just, I want to reiterate that the, the dollar hand fight is absolutely absurd. And the fact that Plexa does it as well as he does is even more absurd. You do, I, 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 I know, I know please, I speak, I know I speak. Please Hunter. tell me, why is this so absurd? Why is it so absurd? Because, uh, I mean, the fact that the, the thing is, is like, it's one of those really, like, those fights is incredibly tricky, even if you're able to manipulate it. So the fact that we, he's so hard to kind of like corral into a particular way that we can actually get past him without being absolutely murdered or completely like neutered in all of our ability to actually deal any kind of damage as, as a whole. He's, I, I'm pretty sure that you don't even know how to control him really, like fully. You just kind of have like a plan, to my knowledge. Uh, uh, there is a plan, yeah, there is a plan. Yeah. And like, the, we're not, we're there not, is, like, there we're is... not choosing Dullahan. Like, no, we're, we're doing the fight at level 28. We're doing it with 39 out of 72 available gin. There's no cheese, it's just we grind him down into oblivion. Uh, and then and Dullahan complains that the game isn't fair. And yeah. to which we laugh and say, well, suck it. <laughs> yeah, and the big, the big thing as well, like, I mean, there's a skill that, you know, we, everyone is aware of that he has and another enemy in this game has, and it's, which is called Gin Storm, which completely removes every single one of your gin. And you don't want to see that. That's not nice if that happens. So we're going to try our best to avoid that. 
because it's very it's easy for him just to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get hit by that. Yeah. It's very easy for him just to say no. So it is just nuts. It is just nuts. And the thing is, it's, it's the the routing and the, the work that gets put in to make it possible. It's just on a level that you're probably like not always aware of. So much goes into like tinkering this and like, you know, chipping away at different corners to make it work. Or it doesn't quite work here, so pull this back, but that's going to be an issue. So you have to do this instead. Routing this game is nuts, and that's why Plexer is on a, just an unreal speedrunner. I should have said I Trace because he did a ton of the routing on this route as well. Um, mm. like, oh, yeah. he, really, he really has pushed me and the category to do things faster and better, and it's it's made the route come along a really long way. So, again, cannot give enough praise to him. He's done amazing. Oh, yeah, work. all of, all of this work has pushed this category faster than my any percent PP. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to recall that, like, back in the day, the record was sub-6, but it was, like, a, a high 5-4, or was it a low 5-5? Five, five? And then and then Greg's just like, hey, have this 5-3. <laughs> and we're like, ooh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, like, as in 5 hours and 30-odd minutes kind of thing. So it's like, we kind of saw suddenly that there was this thing available, and then just Greg's just like, this is what I've done, make of it what you will kind of thing. It was a very, very um, impressive bit of work, and it's just been pushed so far, so... Yeah, um, just just meet the incentive. You won't regret it. Oh, whoops. In the meantime, we're going to go get an item that we will not use until the final boss of the game. <laughs> this is the trainer's whip, and we'll eventually explain what it is. <laughs> emphasis on eventually, so I tune back in in like four hours or so. Yeah, if you if you if you. Maybe she's not. But yeah, if you just want to see the trainers with, come back in four hours. If you want to see the rest. Um, yeah, Avoid, we should talk about that. Uh, Avoid is a spell that we use very sparingly uh, in both Golden Sun 1 and 2. Essentially, if your party's average level is higher than the dungeon um, enemy's like, average level, um, then Avoid will prevent steps accruing towards the next encounter. The next encounter. But if you're not, it doesn't work. So you, yeah, every basically, basically we, yeah, we need to be level 10 across the board, an average 10, because I think, yeah, Yampi Desert's a level 9 area. So if we're level 10, then we avoid all the, all the encounters. This is also one of the reasons that, that we actually, yeah, that we actually yeah, need the sea fighters. Yes, the sea fighters have a bunch of experience, which help us get to level 10 faster. Um, but we're going to exit out the left side here. That's uh, important that there's this our retreat pointer to that door rather than the one near Al Hafra. Uh, which is uh, pretty important for something that we're about to do. It's not the soul blade, we already got one of those. Sure. Even if we got a second one, what would we use it for? Only for this game. Exactly. <laughs> and you can actually do that trick in Ezrock repeatedly and get as many soul blades as you like, uh, but they're just not useful because you can't equip them to anybody except Felix and Isaac. So, I mean, you could just put them on your wall or something, or sell yeah. them. Mm. You can sell them for money, but you've seen the size of our shopping menu, so that's not really needed. Mm. What are you talking about? It's so yeah. expensive. <laughs> this, is, this is a legitimate problem in the new Dark Dawn route, by the way. We cannot afford to buy anything. Uh, well, yeah, it, you in Dark... skip the entire game. <laughs> in, it, in Dark Dawn, um, they change things. When you die, you um, lose half your money, <laughs> which is really strange. Felix is just mad at the world, don't mind them. Um, and so the Dark Dawn's now got all these death warps in them, so we end up at the end of the game with like 200 coins because we just have died like five times in a row. It's pretty funny. It's quite, I, thought, I find it always fascinating that they didn't have that in uh, the first two Golden Suns because it's a, a, it is a Camelot staple, the half, half gold. Um, so Echo, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, that's Blitz. <laughs> we blitz yeah, down, thanks for... Yeah, this guy is a, was a real run killer in the old classic any percent before RNG ended up destroyed that category because he'd just run away. You'd have to reset this room, which means you have to do all of that movement all over again. And uh, in this category, it's fine. We outspeed him, we just donk him on the head with, e with Echo, and it's all over. Yeah, the only, the only way he can still, you know, ruin your day is if you get caught by surprise so that he gets an action first and he uses that action to run. It is possible. I've never seen that. I know it's well, theoretically possible, but I haven't personally seen that. <laughs> Me neither. Knock on wood. Uh, we, mm -hmm. We're past them now, so it's fine. But you know, my next run, it will happen for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
So this is a cool little, like, a tiny puzzle to kind of corral the King Scorpion into a position that we can kill him. We're going to cast a Void here because it just works out that if you cast a Void then run straight to the pillar, you get the best timing to, uh, to finish off this, this particular screen. One more, and then we're going to get to fight the King Scorpion, which, despite having the Soul Blade, is an incredibly tricky fight. So, um, you know, I will have to... I think we should kind of, like, just chill on the comms and let Plexa focus for this next fight, yeah, because, yeah, 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 we do need it. Tools, yeah, like, the Soul Blade doesn't trivialise the game as much as you think. Um, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, really, it's kind of annoying, but it's just one of those fights where, despite your power, you do have to be very, very precise with, it, with this encounter, so. Best of luck, mate. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Banging theme, by the way. Oh, yeah. For, okay, cool. Impact, yeah, nice, nice approach. Yeah, good start. Going for the attack. Okay, nice. Okay, impact again. Smart follow up into the attack. Okay. Crit, okay, crit, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice damage, nice. Right, okay, going for the, okay. going for the attack again. Wonderful, okay. Oh, we did I it. I see. Yeah. GG. <laughs> GG, GG. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hard fight. Yeah, yeah, no worries, yeah. Um, you're feeling alright, you know. Just a bit, a bit of water after that, just in case. Look, the blade did its thing, so we, we call that a win. Uh, that fight can go kind of square or sideways, I guess, uh, if um, Felix gets stunned. So we've got the, these elixirs in our inventory. Um, we have them for two reasons. One, if he gets smoke bombed in the Briggs fight, then he has a 60% chance to miss, and because we're relying so heavily on Megiddo and attacking, um, we got to get rid of that, and Alexis will get rid of that. The other reason is in that fight, if Felix gets stunned, we're in a bit of trouble, so we've got to, again, use the Alexis to get through that. Uh, and, uh, again, safe door, because that's apparently what that door sends you if you earn retreat mode with a retreat point into the first room of the dungeon. Yeah, so, um, we, we, yeah, which is why we ran to the east, to the west side to reset. Um, Precisely. You may have noticed this. Yeah, sorry. Um, you may have noticed as well that Plexa popped Felix into a different class. So he's got Iron, which is a Ginny that gives inherently a little bit extra speed, but gave Felix two Jupiter Ginny, putting him into um, the Illusionist class line, which is a very, very fast class, because uh, it's Jupiter, and Jupiter's the fastest um, M element in general. This means that Felix will generally outspeed pretty much everything. There's a couple of enemies that, you know, it's not going to happen for. Um, but this is a really, really important thing where we're going to be changing up the class um, alignment and setup just for this specific area so that we can do things like this. Um, like lose three seconds to a prop. Yeah, but we got the alt turn, so that's a win in my book. Yeah. I think, I think the wyvern chick is, and the wolfkin cub, I think, are the two that you don't out turn. Everything we else. don't out speed. It depends on your own, your agility stat rolls throughout the dungeon, uh, throughout the yeah. game to this point, basically. And we've got pretty good rolls. We ended up with 60 on bricks, which is a good place to be. Uh, so we should mostly out speed things, or at least being contention to outspeed things. And once we get to level 11, um, we should outspeed everything for sure, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Very little nice if you outspeed gorillas, because they're actually very slow moves. Yeah, see, this time we lost the agility ties, so that's fine. We'll still donk it on the head with our big stat stick, and everything will be fine. Whenever you use a Megiddo on like such a small, not powerful monster, it's just like, let's ruin this monster's day in particular. So oh, over. Oh. But sometimes so sad. Alright. Alright, just really oh. tell, tell our lovely audience about the wonderful enemy known as the Pixie. I've been <laughs> trying to avoid the topic because yeah, yeah. ruined my day. Oh, please bring it up. Please bring it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Can we just bring up the Thorn Crown first? We're getting that yeah. here, and it gives you extra attacks, so it makes Felix even more powerful, even though he doesn't generally need it yet. But yeah, attack is nice. This is nice. This, this is a good part of the run. A little bit of extra attack is always lovely. But yeah, um, we're going to be crossing, uh, because we went, you know, left through Gondoan Cliffs over to Gondoan, we're going to be crossing what's called the Kabombo Mountains, because we're going to uh, the Gabomba statue. Um, or, to, well, to Kabombo itself, and then the Gabomba statue. Um, the next dungeon, the Kabombo Mountains, is a bit of a tricky walk. Um, there are some nasty enemies that can do some annoying things, assassins and stuff like that, but there is one enemy we do not want to see. 
These are the pixies. Um, one is maybe manageable, but like two or three, and we are crying. They are incredibly fast. We cannot outturn them with anyone in the party. They also have the ability to cast the spell Sleep, which can put three of our characters to sleep um, if they, they so choose, which just adds loads and loads of time and could, could, could potentially even kill us. Further to this, they also have pretty powerful spells as well. So, and like, and as in like how hard they hit you. They're very, very weak. They have like 80 HP or something. They get melted if you like do hit them. But the challenge is doing it <laughs> because they are just so fast. They are guaranteed to get their turns. So yeah, they're looking the, for another. They're the one thing I'm really scared of. Um, dang. If, if, if the Lord of Sun Runners uh, ever like have a Halloween party, every single one of us is going to show up as Pixie just because it's the scariest thing in the world. Pixies or Kraden? No, 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 no. <laughs> there is a, there is a direct correlation between character age and lines spoken in Golden Sun series. Oh, Kraden's about four hundred and fifty, so um, you know. there it is. There it is. Okay, yeah. nothing happened. Okay. <laughs> That's a spoiler of things to come. But yeah, that that clip I did onto that thing. Um, it really doesn't save time, but it's swag, so it's time neutral, so I go for it. I don't even think I included that one in the guide. So. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I, I also it. never go for it. Cause, uh... <laughs> no. I, ha I have an incredibly, like, I have an incredibly irrelevant question, but I'm just wondering. Is, is today special at all, outside of the fact that you're running Golden Sun? To you, I like, uh, so? don't think so. You don't think so? No, like, occasion or anything? Nothing comes to mind. Oh, no. What, what happened? Okay, n never mind. Just, just, no, nah, don't worry. Keep going, as you were. Um... Oh, oh no. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I mean, uh, gen genuinely, genuinely, it just, just feels ir irrelevant. But, you know, if it's not, then it's all good. Ooh. Uh, this uh, is monkeys are fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Because uh, uh, we can kill one of them, it's always going to be fine. The, the monkeys are pretty powerful. They, they didn't use like um, he didn't do, do like like chest beat or like beat dance, which kind of increases his his, his, his attack power somewhat. Um, but um, yeah. yeah. After a bit of the gold ransack, and if they they both do that, to target up on one of the weaker ones, then we might be in trouble. But generally, it's fine. Uh, now we need to drop this pillar on the dog's head, and let me see if I can do it. Uh... Yes, you you you, the dog. you you can pet the dog with a giant stone pillar. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it! Can you pet the dog, Twitter? <laughs> I'd love to see that. Um, what, what you can do is you can get the ability trimmer and you can cast trimmer on that crate in the bottom left of the screen and then the bone falls down and you can feed the dog and the dog can be happy eating the bone. Um, but we don't get trimmer because it's slow, so instead we crush the skull. So fair trade, I think. Oh, this is a fun encounter. The price for speed. Yeah, is this is a this yeah, double assassins. They will go first, and they also have the ability to poison, which is just an extra menu that you have to deal with because poison chips are annoying. We want to get rid of them of the uh, of the gorilla because he used beat dance. That attack is a lot of, uh, of an increase, so the girls are a little, maybe in danger if they get crit or something. Um, this is why we keep everyone in, like, with all the gyms set, to give them as many stats as possible, so they're as tanky as, as they can be. Yeah, and believe it or not, that, that encounter is not even that scary. It's, I'm worried about the three pixies showing up and casting sleep forever. That's just why oh, that's so. Mm -hmm. I, that's gonna happen. I'm sure it will. It'll, it'll, be, um, it'll be on the last step before you leave this place, so the three pixies waiting for you. I legitimately had that this weekend. I was on, um, this split pace. Then I got three pixies and they cast loop on everybody, and I was a very, very sad person. I mean, you're getting away with it here. I shouldn't have said that. Um, touch wood. Um, oh god, I said something. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Why, so yeah, the, the idea is. Oh no, here we go. Ooh, and a bind! They have bind too, by the way, so it's just as bad as sleep. But we've got one more turn to deal with now, and we're going to cast on the other side, because you may have noticed that spells have, like, splash damage. That was fine. Okay, they weren't too nice. Okay. But you can see that they're, they're, like, terrifying red eyes as they, like, look down, like, the, the barrel of their of their sleep gun being, like... They are like, actually demon spawn. Yeah. Actually sent from the devil. Like, oh, we got... That was that. Oh, my gosh, that's so good. Whew. Sweet. Uh, Sweet. If, we just, if we talk about it a lot, it won't happen. That's canon. Mm -hmm. 
excited. You know, we're home free. As soon as it starts turning like night there, then uh, there's no more encounters. We're good. We just run through the forest. Everything's fine. We've made it to Kabombo w w without falling asleep too bad. Yeah, we're actually okay now, which is fantastic. Well, yeah, we're going to have a bit of a change up now. So at this point, we've been ma mainly focusing on Felix just uh, pressing the A button and winning. Uh, however, we are going to have a little bit of a change as we are going to get our fourth character in the game. And it, even though you may have, you know, you know, thought it was quite unlikely that Piers was going to join the party, you know, because obviously, why would a, a Mercury Adept join a team missing a Mercury Adept? But of course, uh, he is going to join our party. And they're going to have a big shift in how we're going to be dealing with a lot of encounters as we now have access to four Mercury Jin. Before that... Yeah. Yeah, we got a ton of cutscenes because it wouldn't be Golden Sun without cutscenes. So, Argic, okay, what do you got? We have a $50 donation from Megiddo who just says, <laughs> Megiddo! 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 And we got a $25 donation from Shifter who says, That gin art prize is so amazing, I need it. Shout out to the marble with the screaming man inside. <laughs> <laughs> if you oh, didn't see good. that run earlier today, the marble's run was nuts. Like, like how, how it was so good. Please watch it. Yeah, I yeah. Put but it on the list. Some some people are saying that uh, Dillahan's head is a marble with a screaming man inside. But we'll have to wait and see. If you meet that donation, we'll find out. And speaking of that, we have a massive $260 donation from Sycaria, who says we had Golden Sun for AGDQ, and now we have Golden Sun: The Lost Age on SGDQ. So much yes. Those two are my favorite GBA games and the first games I ever completed 100%. I have so many fond memories of these games and I think I might dig up my GBA again just to complete them for the eighth time, if I remember correctly. I don't think I could ever be bored of those, except for one thing. Here's one dollar for every character of the gold transfer code I had to type so many times, <laughs> and every time was worth doing it. Donation goes to Fighting Dillahan so we can have more Golden Sun today. Shout out to all the troopers out there who actually put yeah. in a gold passwords. I know your pain. Plex and I still have, have, have to have that race. <laughs> we do, but I'm sorry it wasn't worth it, friends. Um, you can do everything in the game with a bronze password, and all of your gear that you can transfer is immediately outclassed anyway, so... Um, I too was sad when I learned of this fact, uh, so... Yeah, apologies. Um, if you do, however, want to use a gold password, there's a really cool category called uh, True Any Percent, which uses a gold password. This is a passwordless file if we you missed the beginning of this run. Um, and True Any Percent uses a gold password to give us anything we want in the game, because it turns out the gold password isn't actually checking for items from Golden Sun 1, it's checking for items in any Golden Sun game. So we give ourselves like three Excaliburs and tons of busted equipment and stuff like that. It's pretty stupid. Um, cool, cool category though. Okay, so yeah, now we now we have uh, peers in the party. We're going to be um, shifting around our um, our jobbies so that everyone has a Mercury jobby. There we go. Um, we, and we're going to have them all on standby, which means that they're all ready to summon. So uh, again, if you're not quite sure how the, the summoning system works, every time you have a Jin on standby or use it, its ability in battle to make it standby, it's ready to summon. If you pull that together, you'll then be able to uh, summon big monsters that deal massive damage. So we have four Mercury Jinny, which means that we have access to... Um, Blah, 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 blah. Why can't I remember the name? Boreas. Um, Boreas. 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 God, yeah. Giant um, snow Boreas. Punch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, hits really, really hard with Mercury. So if there's a, a situation which you know there's like multiple enemies that we just we just Boreas, or if there's big enemies that we can't one shot in, in other ways, we just Boreas, and it just creates. Um, a bit of a kind of like, it, it plays a lot more like, you know, Golden Sun 1 for a little bit, where we have mostly a, a summon focus. So, you know, we've been having, you know, mostly a combination of magic and attack up until this point, and now it's just, well, here we go. Let's crack out the, uh, the summon. Yeah, except the game is, is giving me single enemies, which is great, because it's faster, but um, I don't get to show off the smoke burn machine. <laughs> Are you going to show it off once? This rope changes length depending on when you get an encounter and the position of the the, the little noodle thing at the top. Um, for some reason, the game calculates the length of the rope for some reason. Rather than it being a fixed length, it's silly. Here's the smoke yeah. machine. Yeah. It should be noted as well that we do have a one Jutaginny on 
Piers as well. Pier Piers comes at a much higher level. Everyone else is like level 12, 13. Piers is like level, what, level, I want to say 18, 17? 17. 17. Um, so he's a lot higher. Uh, well, he's what, what level we should be. Um, but by giving him a Jude Jupiter Ginny, he actually has obviously increased speed, so he outspeeds everything, so he can just open the fight and bosh the yeah. Boris. And it's actually more than that. Um, it was specifically breath on Piers that makes this work. Breath mm. is one of those Ginny that comes with innate plus agility on them, like it's like plus three extra agility or something. Um, it's basically a full level of agility. Uh, so you stick that on Piers, so you get the, the class, which is a lot faster and has a much better agility multiplier. Oh, this is awful. Um, I'm going to say that a lot, <laughs> by the way. Um, you still get the class bonus of like extra multipliers on agility, and you get the, the boost from Breath itself, and then Piers just gets over the agility threshold to outspeed everything. So very, very, very helpful little Ginny, that Breath. Very much worth getting very early on, just to go to try and see got for it. That puts in a lot of work. So if you, if you missed the interview I did uh, a, little bit of while, a little while ago, um, I'm going to complain about the gin menu quite frequently because for some reason it's like three, three times laggier than the first game and it gets laggier the more gin you collect. Uh, if you have every gin in the game, I believe the input lag is roughly half a second per input, which is just absolutely horrific. Um, but it's, it's going to get worse, um, but we have some menuing techniques to try and speed it up, but yeah, it's, it's a struggle and I'm going to complain, so apologies in advance. Yeah, the gin setup right now it is also Ooh. just a major benefit, also the order in which he puts the characters to make the menu as easy as possible. You just have uh, Felix with, the, um, with three gin, so that when he goes to the right in the menu, it automatically jumps to the first gin on the next one, which is the Mercury gin. So all he has to do is just go to the first Mercury gin as Felix, then mash the standby button and go to the right, and then try to get them all as fast as possible. And that is so, something that we'll, we'll be doing quite a bit, just trying to optimize those uh, standby menus as much as possible, because yeah, otherwise you can't. You just quite a lot of time for that. Yeah. Time to the menu. Also, Plex has been holding on to this damage for a reason. He, he, he wants to heal as late as possible, so he's now going to go into standby and use uh, a couple of, of spells here just to get his PP as low as possible, because we are going to do another retreat glitch. Um, again, remember, you might remember I mentioned that uh, when you are on a climbable surface, there's no loading zone. So when you try to sort of climb up that ladder, you don't go up to the next screen, but you actually just go to the wall. And we can run around the edge of the wall to the east side, of um, Kibom, of the uh, Goku Bomber statue, and then do the second um, pound on the right side to reverse the gears, and that's what you need to do to get to the end of this dungeon. Yes, it's and it does speed time. Up. It's, it's yeah. way more impressive than the time save it affords you, so. It looks really cool. cool. That's yeah. really cool. It also made me cry in all any percent because now we have to. Back, basically, in all any percent, we uh, sequence broke to this part of the game and had to deal with very, very strong monsters with instant death effects and put you at one HP effects uh, with very unlimited uh, <laughs> resources and now Felix at very low PP. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Go check that so, out if you're curious. It's, it's about 30 minutes faster than this category, um, but it does fully make use of RNG manipulation to go fast which is very, 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 very difficult. It's basically a frame perfect trick every time you want to do manipulation, which is unpleasant. Here we have the one encounter that we can not fully clear the Korea, so we just do a little bit of match that donk, hopefully. Donk. Damn, I'm secretly hoping I get a staff of Anubis drop here, but it's whatever. It would be nice though, it's swaggy. Exactly. It'd be a nice stat stick for uh, Jenna, and otherwise we'll just have to uh, get the Angelica. I should probably equip that at some point as well. Ah, oh, Doomsayers. We, we, we haven't really talked about, about, about Doomsayers too much, because they've been kind of nice. They have a move called Condemn. It's a one-shot. That's why we grabbed the Water of Life. <laughs> Um, yeah, we don't really want to talk about it too much because it's going to happen now, but um, we were talking earlier about how the fact that uh, Ginny can flee as well. Um, this is Steel, and if he flees, it's about plus two minutes, I think. <laughs> it's a long it's, time. It's not, not great. Yeah. yeah I, I'm not going to say because I, I'm going to try and stay pure for the category, but... Yeah. You will, you will, you'll just right. show how bad. 
But yeah, we sh yeah, because Flexa did say that he has been doing some saving. So this is no save and quit. And obviously no save and quit. The, the spirit of this category is to not manipulate the RNG. Um, when you reset the game, there are two ways of resetting. Hard resetting by just turning the console on, on and off, or soft resetting by doing like um, AB start select and just, you know, doing a soft reset. Soft resetting resets, because there are two types of RNG in this game, general and battle. General just advances in its own way with their things moving on screen, or in, just in general, it just moves. Battle RNG um, only advances when actions are taken in battle. I mentioned this at the beginning of, of the run, but I'll go into a bit more detail now. When you do a soft reset, it only resets um, general RNG, but hard resets reset both. So the main thing that we can really attack first, very nice. The main thing that we can manipulate is battles by doing a hard reset, resetting the battle RNG to zero, and then working from there. So in a marathon setting, we do allow ourselves particular saves just in case really, really bad things happen, but only a soft reset will be used because it's much harder to, you know, utilize the general RNG from zero in, you know, a run yeah. like this. We'll bring that up once we get some of the more tricky boss fights, but um, I was not memeing when I said that Felix's name does determine puzzles in the game and that this name is in fact optimal. Um, I'm going to have a, a puzzle here in Kabomba and the puzzle is actually determined by Felix's name. And the optimal solves of this puzzle require exactly four uses of pound. Uh, well, yeah, four uses of pound. Uh, unless you're bad, in which case it's terrible. Basically, this room works on a timer. When the timer reaches zero, it will do the thing, and if the puzzle's been solved, you'll progress. Um, the only way the, 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 the puzzle or the timer gets a pause is if you use a synergy. So you want to use as few pounds as possible to solve the puzzle. So this is one of the names that gives you uh, exactly four pounds, uh, so it's the fastest way to do the puzzle. And then we get a break, and then Arga can read off donations, because we've got like two minutes or something to kill, if not more. I think more. <laughs> Yeah, you want me to speedrun right. donations? Oh, oh. Yes, yeah, speedrun yeah. donations. Yes. Okay. All okay. right, here we go. Sweet, we got to speedrun some donations then. Righty, we have got a $50 donation from Zalim Neogus, who says, my first donation here, this is for all the doctors out there. Let's show them diseases that people will never give up. Never. Thank you very much for your donation there. We got a $50 donation from Big Ozla that says, here's $50 to make an old man angry. And uh, I can oh, I can uh, confirm that we are going to make an old man angry later on in the run here. Yay, the creative yay, being angry incentive has been met, so look forward to seeing that. We've also got a $25 donation here from Gerd Gamer Forever that says, I've been watching GDQs for a few years now. My finances haven't allowed me to donate much though, so this year I am finally able to do so a little bit more. I appreciate that GDQ does help organizations for people in need, along with supporting the gamer community at large. Keep up the awesome work, everyone, and thank you for your donation there as well, Gerd Gamer. We got a $25 donation from Cormac that says, Stoked to see Golden Sun 2! The GBA Golden Sun games are some of my favorites of all time. We got a $10 donation from Carl that says, Golden Sun The Lost Age was one of my wife and I's favorite RPGs growing up, and I consider it a classic. Of course, I can join in on a $5 hype train. Consider this a donation for me and my wife. Take down Dullahan. And speaking of the $5 donation train, we've got Aether Fang with $5 saying, $5 train for one of the best battles? Count me in. So let's get a $5 donation train going to get that Dullahan boss fight. We are getting closer and closer all the way through it here. We do want to see that. We want that fight. Going to sneak in another one here quickly. We got a $25 donation from Gull that says, when I was a kid, I started this Golden Sun game not knowing it was a sequel. I was very, very confused by most of the story. I just enjoyed the cool pseudo 3D battle scene graphics and the creative uses Psy Energy had out of combat. I've since played and loved the first one and got some much needed context. Donating to make my preteen self proud. Let's keep the hype going. Let's keep it going, folks. Yeah, that, that was me too, actually. Um, when I got through to the secret final dungeon and I could not enter the final secret dungeon where Dolahan resides, um, that's the moment I decided I wanted to play Golden Sun 1. I, I played this game first, and um, yeah, I pretty much played the first game so I could finish the second game properly. <laughs> so I relate to that. 
And you thought you had done our gig, but no, we got more cutscenes. More cutscenes means more donations. We got a twenty-five dollar donation from King of Mischief that says, "What Golden Sun is up? Oh yeah, let's go!" And we got a twenty-five dollar donation from Knox saying, "Donating towards unlocking more content in one of my favorite games from my childhood." And then we got one here that I'm going to love, but I imagine the three of you are not going to like. So. We got a $50 donation from Flint. Flint says, oh, a traveling warrior. And I see you're an adept too. You are just the kind of fighter I've been looking for. Wouldn't you please take me along with you? I am a Venus Ginny. My name is Flint. I must find my comrades. We were separated from each other when the volcano erupted. Maybe you can help gather my friends together as you travel. If you let me join you, I'll prove to be very bishop beneficial to you, adepts. Your psi energy will grow stronger, and your adept skills will also improve. You can call on us in battle, or just use our power to boost your own. If you call on many of us at once, our powers will work together. What do you think? Will you take me with you? Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> I have to say, I love the, the, last I love the so dedication. <laughs> I do love that you did the dedication to getting the entire script out there. That was... <laughs> I, look, I, I just want to point out that as, as much crap we give Flint for the tutorial in the first game, he ups his game pretty significantly for Dark Dawn to appreciate that he continues to self-improve. And Professor Flint in Dark Dawn is quite a sight to behold. So thank you, Flint, for improving yourself, but we just wish you were skippable. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, as someone no, who I, only runs TLA and not the first game, I, I got to that donation perfectly fine. But sorry to you. Am I, am I alone on this one? No, nobody. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's alright. He does his best. He's no echo, but he tries. That's what we can ask him. It's like Garrett, he tries sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have a bit of an interesting thing going on here. When we hit, I think it's level 13 for uh, Rewow, Gemma and Blue, we're going to um, actually change up our strategy. We're going to stop fighting after a bit and uh, actually just start running because there's a thing which Plexa um, introduced me to, which I am always upset about, about which is uh, the expected value of certain scenarios um, about sometimes when you actually, you know, you could fight this, but on average, it's actually faster to flee. Even if you do, you know, have those odd runs where, you know, you fail flee 19 times, uh, on average, it's a better idea. Um, so, yeah, another kind of like mini moment where we're going to just swap to a, a fleeing approach. Yeah, this game's a lot about finding what's the, on average, what is going to be the fastest way to clear or get through an encounter. Not necessarily defeat it, but get through it. And it turns out that at this point, at level 13 specifically, um, it works out that fleeing is, on average, slightly faster, although in that battle, it very clearly was wrong. Um, but you don't know before you do the battle, and most of the time, uh, you just flee immediately. So I'm going to try and be greedy here and get the rainbow kill. Please don't run, by the way. Okay, defend, defend. Boris. And there we go. Block that. Not the Thank longest you know. reset, but it's still, it's still a reset. Oh, it's pretty, so pretty bad. Considering the amount of encounters you can get in this particular uh, section of land, it's gonna be uh, pretty bad. But they used to be used to values in action, actually. Um, you see I got the first try flee on that assassin, so like overall, it's, I'm going to have more of those than pixies, and it's all gonna work out. But probability, it's a good thing, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, that's better. Thank and then eventually, uh, eventually you come into a point of routing where Plexa just turns around and says, Oh, sorry guys, my calculations are wrong. Actually, we're running here, 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 and here as well. Oh. <laughs> and we just trust him on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, when we talk about rainbow kills, we've only done them on Ginny. Uh, Ginny don't actually <laughs> flash the rainbow colors. But yeah, uh, when you h h kill an enemy using the element they're weak to as a genie attack, so if someone's weak to Venus and you use Echo, like um, like Waft is there, um, that genie will, well, the enemy will f usually like flash rainbow colors and then die, but the genie don't. So <laughs> even though we've been talking about it, it has been happening. That was a lot of experience there. Yeah, we might be able to, like, we're gonna go for a bunch of them. If we get them, it's nice. If we don't, it's not a big deal. Um, on Aqua Hydro, um, it's probably the one that's easiest to fit up, so we'll give that a run. If it works, great. If not, 
so be it. Why is it's not with me today? It's fine. Yeah, and uh, in Aqua Rock, we're going to have another moment where it's like, as soon as we hit this level, we start fleeing, so those little bits of extra experience from Rainbow Kings can definitely help getting that moment earlier. The more you can flee there, the better. Shoutouts to the good cause who just wants to run away from everything. Um, the dude will, will just flee at nothing. Um, he has really pushed our boundaries of when we are comfortable to flee or not in the first game specifically. Um, thank you, but I also hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your honesty, Yeah. Oh, it's just like, ah, introducing so much random nonsense. You don't have any agency over it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Old man here, don't grumble, worry. Grumble. <laughs> I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the old man grumble. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a skill. It's a skill that you have over many years. <laughs> Back okay. in my day, we actually fought encounters. Yeah, that's <sighs> Yep. That's actually not true, because we ran away from things with manipulation, but whatever. <laughs> I do remember the dark days of early any percent no S&Q for Golden Sun 1, which was just flee from everything and hope you don't die. Um, oh, yeah. That was, a, that, was a fun, that was a fun time. Um, okay, so we're going to be running back to Madra, because now that we have the Black Orb, we can get onto um, Piers' ship, because that's what Piers, you know, uh, the tidal wave that happened earlier, by the way, that was kind of like, that was Poseidon being a bit angry. Um, and Piers' ship ran aground, and then kind of, uh, the people of Madra were like, who are you? And they kind of like imprisoned him and took away his, his, his black orb. The black orb was then stolen from the Madrans by the Kabombans because they, they were searching for items that they could use as, as part of their, um, you know, rituals to help, um, what's his face? <laughs> I can't remember his name. I his name. I can prove it. Thank you, yes. Yeah, um, to help him become, you know, the, uh, you know, the, um, blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh. oh. uh, shaman! Is it, is it a shaman? Yeah. The witch doctor. Thank you so much. My words are leaving me today. Gotcha. English, please. Um, yeah. So he could ascend to the the village um, witch doctor and take over from his his uh, his um, father. Mother? I think father. Um, and okay. yeah, so that's actually so disclosed. Yeah, it's actually no. It's just yeah. one of his mysteries. Um, yeah. So now that we have the black crystal back, we can now um, grab Piers' ship and use that to kind of head off into the Eastern Sea. Um, we do need to go back to the Madrons though and kind of pop in and say hi. Um, you know, kind of like, you know, visiting a relative when you're kind of like in the area, you know, one of those things. Um, we are going to get an item called the Cyclone Ship, which is going to come in handy, you know, in later on in the game and also kind of uh, will be used a bit immediately afterwards um, but we're also going to grab another Ginny so we, we have had a very low count of Mars Ginny and fire element in general if we grab that second one I think that was I want to say it's, it's not Scorch Kindle um, Kindle. Kindle. Kindle Kindle yeah um, and then we're going to go and grab one more um, in Madra as well so we're going to like build up a big chunk of uh, fire Ginny as well because we, we, we want to have you know as many of all of them as possible yeah, and um, I just want to shout out everybody who meant to be created incentive. I know we're pushing Dilla Hunt pretty hard because it's a pretty lofty goal and a really cool fight. Um, but uh, it would have been really awkward if you didn't meet the created incentive because I've had to be saying no to particular text boxes throughout the run to this point. Um, I'm coming up on the last possible instance of implementing what's called the crate encounter. If the crate encounter is above four, if you say no on four of the correct text boxes, uh, the angry crate cutscene can activate. Um, so I've had to activate all of them and hope that you, you will make, make the incentive and you'll have done, so thank you very much for that. Um, it's a funny cutscene, so look forward to that in like two hours. <laughs> anyway, that was the last text box by the way, that one there, um, increments the counter by one and yeah, it's all good. Just gradually ticking him off. <laughs> yep. Which is nice because we also leave him behind right, at the very start. We do, and it's optimal. <laughs> it's optimal. Uh, we do not treat Graydon very well, but he talks too much. We just want to go fast. Anyway, this is a fantastic time for some more donations, Agik. Um, we got a bit to Of course, we got a five, $25 donation here from Tricoron that says, five tickets to the Dullahan show, please. Golden Sun is my favorite game series ever. So happy to see them at GDQ. We've also got a $50 donation from Boots42 that just says, Dullahan, hope! Love Golden Sun and The Lost Age. Super excited 
for this run. We have a hundred dollar donation from Duck Valentine that says, it is a delight to see Golden Sun, the Lost Age at a GDQ at last. Plexa, thank you so much for bringing us both this and the first game across two GDQs. Golden Sun and the Lost Age have meant a lot to me and many of my friends over the years. And I'm so glad we get to relive that nostalgia very fast for a great cause. Now let's see Dullahan, the boss I could never be as a kid, get crushed. Go Plexa. And we have $50 from Hoagie in disguise that says, I didn't know there was a cutscene to make Craydon angry. I always figured he was just angry because of how poorly I played the game, not because of my dialogue choices. And we've got oh eight. <laughs> oh, we still got, we still got, we got more. We got a $25 donation from Anonymous saying that the AGDQ 2021 Golden Sun run was amazing by Plexa. I'm so happy the second game in the series is being run again by Plexa today, and I can't wait to see how he breaks the game. Good luck, and let's reach that incentive for the Dullahan fight. Also, much love to my wife for introducing me to GDQ many years ago. We look forward to both GDQ events every year. And we got a few more here as well. We got a $50 donation from Pure Spirit saying, let's go Plexa, an absolute beast in the Golden Sun community and an epic game. One day I'll join you on the leaderboard. And a $25 donation from Bensonism saying, let's go Plexa. Hey, what's up guys? Pure Spirit is, uh, he, he's learning the first game and he's doing a pretty good job actually. He's, he's almost sub four. He'll get there very shortly. And yeah, hey, Vince Muslim, how you doing? Hope work is treating you well. <laughs> All right. Um, there was a quick cut scene there that uh, basically revealed that Jenna has a huge crush on Isaac and it turns her into a tomato for some reason. Um, but, but Sheba gives her a ton of crap about it. Uh, Sheba is very sassy. She's a great character. She, like, Jenna and Sheba are just incredibly well written as characters. They're so well done. Um, but yeah, Sheba kind of taunts Jenna for a while and just like, uh, yeah, we want to save Isaac, right? Right? No, uh, Garrett. No, Isaac, right? Right? No, she, great moment. Yeah, nice little girl bot moments, but don't you mean Isaac? Stupid Sheba. <laughs> Shut up, Sheba. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're good. They're good friends. It's always fun to see. There's a lot of attention to D detail in a bunch of cutscenes between them as well, which uh, Camelot are known, at least, at least I feel they're known for that. That's maybe just me being a massive fanboy, but. Um, there's, yeah, there's always like loads of details like hidden in cutscenes that just kind of give away elements of their character, like, you know, Shiva's sassiness. And, oh, yeah, there's um, very good other personalities. Even, even in these fight based games, it just puts so much personality. Okay, so we're going to be popping Felix into a heavy Mars class, as well as this will put him into the brute line, and he'll have access to a big old move called Planet Diver! which essentially makes him uh, jump into the sky and slam down even stronger, which will one-shot the, these lads. And um, we're going to be trying to get our um, PP as low as possible. I think we don't want to go below, like, 15 kind of, like, level. Um, so we'll get two casts off before we have to resort to, like, other strategies to get through these. Um, but we've got a few more clips that are kind of cool. We've got a move clip and a, and a frost clip coming up. So, again, this is going to be one of those things where Plex is going to be setting up into a very specific position before engaging in the fight. I've done that the other way around before, and that was wrong. <laughs> so, like, step, stepping down here, so he's two across, he'll move up so he's aligned, um, like, one pixel in a certain way. And he'll, like, tap down left to get, like, a little series of two pixels between the bottom of the shadow. Ugh. That's the shame. Just, just like we'll Realign. do it again. There's up three up to the top, tricky. and then so there's the one down left tap into two. Tapping and tapping. Tapping. There we go. There it is. There's there the two. Is. Um, so there's like what I mean. There's two pixels between the shadow of Felix and the shadow of the Aqua Jelly. Um, and now we'll cast uh, Frost. Hold left, I believe, and gosh, nice. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's really hard. You only get one one shot of it. Um, the, the visual getting into that alignment, you're basically cheating a pixel into the Aqua Jelly's collision, uh, which makes it really annoying to get into. I was tapping down right the entire time, and it did absolutely nothing. So, <laughs> what can you do? Yeah, that, that is the smaller of the two skips in the uh, in the Lemurian ship. 
It only skips like one encounter and a bit of movement, but we're gonna have one that skips, uh, I think, like two encounters next. So first off, we're gonna body this fool. There's a rainbow, there you go, see a little flash. Yes, yeah, so it's going to skip those. So the, the, the two aqua jellies that are currently on screen at the bottom, we're going to skip those two. So that's a lot of fights and that's a lot a lot of time. So Good. Yeah, it's, it's actually surprising that we can't do the frost clip anywhere else, but it's specifically that aqua jelly that has the wonky collision that allows us to do it, whereas all these ones have a proper collision, so we can't do the trick, unfortunately. It'd be really nice if we could, though. Frost Clip is one of those things that's really specific. In Gordon's, it's also in Gordon's on one, but even there, it only has like the one in the run at least. Uh, the, this one is really specific use where you talk to a lady and she drops her water. Because only then can you really get it flips slightly into the pool of water that's dropped and stuff. Move clipping in that regard has a lot more. Well, leniency just by being suffixed with projects. <laughs> you, can, you can try it again, basically. That's exactly. <laughs> but we got that one first try, so that was really nice. That was nice, yeah. I recently learned that you can actually engage in an extra encounter by accident, which is really annoying. By accident? Yeah, so this yeah. one on that, so not the one that you're fighting here, that one that's on the top right of like this the bottom guy, section. Right here, this guy yeah. right there. You can talk you can him you, this little thing. You can engage him diagonally. I didn't realise this until I was like, trying to open the menu and got an extra fight. Yeah. Always use select to open your menu as well. Yeah. Right, okay, so we're going to use Frost to hold this platform up. If you try and run it on, on it normally, it will fall down. Um, so we're going to do a quick bit of setup. We're probably going to grab the oil drop here, which is going to be used uh, by peers when we're um, on the ship, because there are some fights on the water a little bit hard. Just going to move Breath over and kind of give all of the, the, the Mercury Ginny over to Shiba so she has Wish, which is an AoE heal. Quick safety save just in case. This is a very very specific fight. We're going to be fighting against the Aqua Hydra here. Um, we're looking for seven turns of damage, quote unquote. Imagine Felix's attack, one attack, is going to be one hit. We're looking for seven. So because um, uh, blah, 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 Megiddo is times three damage, that's three turns. So that's one. Um, and we're going to basically be trying to keep ourselves alive as much as possible with Wish. Hopefully we're not going to see um, his, his, his AoE water attack. It's very, very scary. That's four in total now. Um, so one more Megiddo and we're set up to win. Rising Venom, that's not bad. But, yeah. That can poison and that's a bit worse. But... Nice other so small far. thing is uh, that we keep uh, Waft set on Pierce so that he also has access to impacts and we can double impact to him before he ever does an attack. And, yeah. Uh, after that's just the case of getting him standby. Eight. Eight. So, ooh, nice Megiddo. And that's eight, so it's almost guaranteed next. We're gonna have, I think, uh, Jenna's gonna cast Ramsey, we're gonna have Procne coming out from Shiva, and then an attack, and that should be everything done. Oh, hello, a, a different a different, a different setup. Yeah. I told you, I'm going to the Ravenclaw. Oh, of course, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's me being silly. There we go, cool. that's nice. Let's go, Hydra, let's go. Shout out to the That was a good one. That was a really good one. Okay, good fight, really good fight. Mm -hmm. You love to see those, because you also get the variants where he just spams Raging Flood over and over and you don't get Megiddo's. <laughs> that and Trick Jump. <laughs> no, we are again. Alright, we finally have the boat. The boat is a new mechanic in this game. In the first game, you had to run around um, on foot like a dingus. In this game, you get a boat, so you can travel in style. Um, you can sail like a dingus. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you can fly like a dingus, because, you know, why not? RPG logic. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. This is a really epic moment, casually, you're like, it's like freedom, you're like, wow, the whole world has just opened up to me. Um, yeah. And it, it kind of annoys me a little bit, but because on Twitch, if you select your game as Golden Sun, The Lost Age, it auto tags it as open world. I don't know if that's necessarily appropriate, it's certainly not open world in the sense that I understand it, but this is the part of the game that makes people go, oh, it's an open world game, because quite literally the world has just opened up to you. So. Don't know if I agree with that, but it's certainly a precursor to some of the, the open world stuff that we see today. Yeah, th this is a big shift in how this game operates, and, and, and this is where this game can be a little bit contentious for some. Some people find that this is maybe a little bit too open or a little bit too difficult to kind of like make their way around, and um, it's very easy to 
um, get lost or just to kind of like lose your direction because it's just meant to be at this point you're looking and you're trying to find information because we know that we, what we want to try and do right now is make our way back to Lemuria. Um, however, we can't get to Lemuria, so there's a big, massive question being asked, how do we get there? And then from here, it's just picking up pieces and like finding threads, you know, to find that answer. Thankfully, we know what we're looking for and how to do it, so we can go and do it in a speed run. But if you haven't played this game before, and you're trying to figure this out, it can take a while because, you know, lots of encounters, relatively yeah, slow The whole movement. area has opened up to you, basically, and some to the south, but I don't want to put my cursor there because I actually did to open that to clear the junk out of my memory. <laughs> That was, that was very subtle how you did that together, that was nice, I like it. So you know, he wasn't just showing off the runners. map. Yeah. We're speedrunners, we, we optimised our menus, guys. Come on. That, that map wasn't just to kind of like show you what he means, but also raising the, um, the curse to the top again to, to clear. Do you have yeah, a value cool. stone? What are you going to no, do with you? I can get one. But I don't want to use it. Where are we using it? No, uh, okay. You're, you're gonna have to use it and just take an extra in somewhere. Um, yep. Uh, you were not yep. wrong, Sid. You were not wrong. Mm -hmm. That is unfortunate, but... Yeah, I was, a little, I was a little bit worried about that going into the boat, but then I was like, oh, we actually have enough uh, PP for all the frost in the boat, that's nice. What was I worried about? And then I realized that actually, there's two more. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Well, so yeah, we're gonna get the Sea God Steer here, and this will get us even further into the Shrine of the Sea Goddess. And, uh, this is what Bowie was talking about earlier. Um, we have to drain all of the water out of uh, Dyla first before we can even get this, and that was what that cutscene with the little kids was for in the Shrine of the Sea Goddess. So, got it out of the way early, so that we don't have to like walk back and forth now. And uh, then we're going to be doing the, basically the same retreat glitches to get out of bounds again, because why would we want to do the dungeon normally when we can just get out to the end? <laughs> There's a very precise bit of movement as well that needs to be done, and it's, uh, it's kind of handled by um, preparing... Hi, uh, yeah, so if you make sure you have no enemy data in the game, uh, um, in, in memory, by doing the, um, the map movement, immediately hold up when you're moving when we, we were going to basically see the camera shift to the right and then it's going to shift to the right again slightly and then hold down left and then we'll make it through and, uh, and then we're basically at the end this is where we need to see see god's tear and the reason we are here is to get one of the pieces of the trident uh, the aforementioned way to get into the maria that i uh, believe was talking about uh, we will need to get a trident and forge it back into a hole, uh, otherwise we will not be able to defeat the guardian standing in the way of the Maria, Poseidon. The infamous Poseidon, yeah, he's straight up invulnerable to everything unless you use the trident first. So literally all of the mid-game is spent getting the trident. Um, so if it was a dream skip, it would be somehow being able to throw in triple kits of the same piece to forge the trident or something, it would save quite a lot of time. They're also impossible to pick up, so the menu is also impossible, but yeah, they're also impossible to pick up, particularly the one in Ankle Ruins, but I'll complain about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason we need the trident specifically, because uh, Sid was saying that, you know, we have to use it to de defeat Poseidon. Poseidon's got this weird, like, barrier over him, and we can't hit him unless we dispel the barrier by using the power of the ancient trident, so... Um, just to kind of specify that, it's not really mandatory to know, but, <laughs> but you know just for those who are kind of interested in it. Um, yeah, the trident's pretty cool. It also deals damage based on, on the user, so we're gonna give it to ear, give it, it to Felix, so he essentially gets, you know, a hit off as well, so um, it's not completely, you know, pointless. It does actually do something. You, you can use it oh, in it a, does a bunch a of fights, I think. It does a lot of things. If you equip it, uh, Felix gets extra 20 mercury resist as well, it, 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 for some reason. Hmm, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, power, uh, power to see. Yeah. So, why are we going back to Kabomba, you're probably asking. Well, as you may have mentioned, as we, you may remember from the beginning, we like powering up. We're going to go and grab another Ginny. This is uh, Mud. He is a, a Venus Ginny, so they're going to give us access to Judgment, the Tier 4 Venus Summon. A further thing about Mud is... Wow, you can go up left there. Yes, you can. I was going to point it out to you, but you're in the middle of a monologue. 
<laughs> you also, yeah, brought it up in front of just like sixty thousand people. Thanks, no. man. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend uh, I knew that. Uh, <laughs> you, you brought that up yourself, Chloe. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. That's all good. Um, yeah, Mud also operates as a, is a really, really good Ginny. There's a powerful one in Golden Sun 1 as well called Vine. Uh, it halves the speed of the enemies you use it on, which will be very integral. Yeah. If you're pro probably wondering why Plexa was uh, pumping his fist to the fact that Mud didn't run, would you like to expound upon that, Plexa? <laughs> if Mud runs, you have to retreat back to the beginning of the dungeon and do all of that again. And it's really slow, and it gets worse because then you can't do a second retreat after Mud. And then you have to walk out of the dungeon afterwards. It's quite literally a two minute time loss if it runs away. Um, so and what, it was what, foolhardy and didn't save. So what, 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 is your, what is your record on how many times Mud has run away in a row? Three times. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11 it's really hard. Way. 11 uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good mechanic. Uh, Camelot removed that in Dark Dawn, thankfully. Um, one of the few good decisions that were made in that game. Um, That's a bit cruel. There's some really weird decisions in that game, Bowie. You have no idea, man. Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know the way that code works, so sure. But uh, oh, right. I, will always, I will always, stand, I will always stand by Dark Dawn. I love Dark Dawn, it's a fantastic video game, but he has a really bad decision, and you'll get grumpy when I tell you this. Um, oh no, here we go. In this, in, in this game, uh, you reset an encounter by exiting it and entering an area. So something mm -hmm. you may have seen before, I dived into Dialer and back out of Dialer, that reset my step counter and prolonged the duration before I got my next encounter. Great. This game, and the first game, has to be a dungeon. In Dark Dawn, it's every room. Every, every room, single time, counter. you, every single screen transition resets your step counter, including saves and quits and reading the Sun Saga. Shout outs to Felissa for discovering that one. Um, so literally in Dark Dawn, what we're doing now is we're reading the book on the world map. We're literally getting reading lore to save time. It's kind of interesting. It, well, it so, makes I mean, me unreasonably drunk. Well, for speed, for speed running purposes, isn't that a good thing oh, to get less encounters? Yeah, but encounters make life interesting. Yeah, they do. They, they absolutely do. Yeah. I, I understand what you mean. Man, no wonder you have money issues in the road. Yeah. If you have that anyway. and the fact that you lose half of it, yeah. I'm, I'm not complaining about the points in the return, but I will complain about encounters being reset on doors. Uh, anyway, speaking of good NPCs, we have our favorite NPC coming up. Uh, ah, this is yes. Shop Girl. She is fantastic. Um, we, we love it a bit in the community. She is... Um, it was fantastic yeah, shop. pixel work done on her. One of my favorite moments is... was when Reddit started praising her just spontaneously. Like, wow, look at the attention to detail in this sprite. It's amazing. I'm like, yeah, we've been noticing this for years. This is Shop Girl. Everybody say hi. Hi, Shop Girl. Hi, Shop Girl. It's almost like she's, you know, she was like busy in her work, heard someone come in and looking up going, hello, sir, can I help? Very lovely. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, she's, it, it, it's, it, it's just great that like certain characters have their own unique portraits. This is cool. Thanks, Camelot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nice thing is, it is actually optimal to use this shop as well, because it's the very first one where we can get these items. The, uh, the war gloves, the another psy crystal, and uh, some platinum circlets. Um, yeah, so th this is this is a big part of, um, of Reg's um, kind of like contribution to the route as well, which is kind of doing early Gaia, where, um, you know, before we used to do a different route, where we'd go to, over to Aqua Rock first, then go down to Tundaria Town and come back and do, uh, do Gaia Rock later. However, we're now doing uh, Gaia Rock early, which means that we're going to be lower level and we have to, you know, get through Gaia. It's going to be a lot harder. Um, this, there's a lot of, like, timing and a lot of working on this to make it happen and make it viable. This is a backup Water of Life as well. That, uh, if, if, you, if anyone at home watching didn't know about that, good, because not many people did know about that. It's one of those subtle things. That's, there's a stone there you can jump on. But, that's yeah. the first Water of Life that is accessible in this game by normal gameplay. <laughs> Okay, so if you have seen, you know when we've been talking about those really cool, like um, using move to kind of get some some move clips. That's been pretty pretty cool. Um, well, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We are gonna put everyone's gonna have a one Ju uh, Venus Ginny so that we have access to Judgment. Felix is a big powerful boy, so he is going to deal a lot of damage. We have um, Piers in base class and Sheba in base class as well. Um, judgment will deal most. Will do deal a lot of damage to most people. Uh, and probably kill a bunch of, of the enemies. Um, we are 
also going to try and skip a lot of the outside of Gaia. We're going inside Gaia to, to clear outside Gaia. Now those, um, those cool like, movement shenanigans, we're going to see something pretty sweet here as well. A very precise positioning on this uh, y-axis here allows Plexa to bring this move block straight into exactly where he is, rather than having to, you know, bring it round by using the bottom... Um, oh, hello. He did that. I, need, I needed that one to connect, unfortunately. That's okay. We got this high PP region in this area, so it's totally fine. And I'll just get an extra couple back, actually, as well. Yeah. This, like, little area inside the stones is kind of, like, high PP regen, and also I think there's no encounters in there as well, because it's, yeah, it's no a puzzle screen. Well. After developing Beyond the Beyond, Camelot went, we really should make sure there's no encounters in puzzle screens. Uh, so, <laughs> they learned their lesson from Beyond the Beyond. Okay. So, by going inside, we can retreat glitch to go outside and skip the entire first screen of the outside of Gaia Rock, which is actually quite long, because you have to kind of go one way to solve a puzzle to go back the other way, to finish the puzzle and then go back the other way again. There's a lot of back and forth, so... Um, that's a really, really cool skip to skip that entire first screen, which is where I got stuck at as a kid. I didn't know you could run to the left or the right of the uh, opening doors, so I never knew. So I never got sand. Yeah, like, the only reason that that retreat glitch works is because the maze has a bunch of special coding attached to it, uh, particularly concerning the entrance and the exit. It sends you to some weird room with some modifier attached to it, and when it's applied to the first room, you get sent there, which is incredibly convenient. All the other rooms in the maze do other weird things. Uh, we will maybe be able to use one of them later on, depending on our PP, but they behave in a more conventional manner. It's just the, the entrance and the exit specifically that do really weird things. My movement here is trying to avoid things that will pop out at me and give you a jump scare. Uh, so apologies if I hit one. Um, it, it frightens me every time I do it. It also costs you a lot of time, so you fall right back down to the bottom yeah. and have to climb all the <laughs> way <does>. up again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it makes you feel like a big thumb mm. Judgment! Yeah. Oh, that's so nice to have Judgment now. Uh, the thing about summons is all summon animations, and the fact that we have Judgment is just so much nicer in terms of the time we save compared to something longer like Boreas or... Ugh, four. Yeah, so the point here is that um, during the teen levels of your party, like from like 13 through to like 20-ish, you kind of lack any useful... Um, AoE synergy. So while we have really good single target damage in Megiddo, we don't actually have any damage uh, for parties, so we can't clear them efficiently. So summons just turn out to be the best thing we can use to uh, clear a, a encounters with more than one enemy. I'm looking for 11, by the way. There we go. Um, and so that's why summons are used. And if you've seen the speedrun of the first game, this shouldn't be really surprising because that never gets past level 19, so they're kind of permanently stuck in summon mode. Hmm. Uh, but we won't be, because they gave us way more experience in this game, so we'll actually get decent levels. Yeah. These fireworms are paper, and they give you about, yeah, 158 experience per. That's really good. So, yeah, do you know why? Uh, very... Do I know why they give you that much experience? Yeah. Because, because Camelot went... No, so every <laughs> other enemy in this dungeon is from Golden Sun 1. So the oh, one yes, thing yeah. they didn't change between games, they changed their levels, but they didn't change the experience they get. In Golden Sun 1, they, the enemies give about 70% of the experience they would in Golden Sun 2. The worms, however, are a unique addition from Golden Sun 2. So they come with a ton of uh, experience attached to them for some reason. Um, and that's why they, yeah, they're just the best encounter to get. This retreat yeah. makes them sad, but it is faster. It, when you're in reveal, um, it's like there, it's laggier to do retreat because of all the all the sparks flying around, and obviously the, the reveal map is a map that's layered over the top of the regular map. So there's just so much information on screen that it lags it. But yeah, it's faster yeah, than cancelling, which it's just just cancelling also induces lag. So it's like, well, I'm gonna get lag either way. So slightly <laughs> faster. And you can see here how I'm kind of doing my menu, like all my gin are kind of across the top row. Similar to with Boreas, we had like all of the Mercury gin roughly along the top row. It just allows us to do this like convenient menuing movement. And even though it doesn't look fast, believe me, it's faster than if you track the two things normally. It's, the gin menu is an experience. It's really something. Yeah, because I, I, I learned TLA first, and I always knew that it was like that. And then I went back to TBS or Golden Sun 1, um, and I was like, oh, this is so good. It's I can so do nice. things. 
Like, yeah, it's, it, it, it is crazy, because I was so used to TLA from the um, gin menu, and, it's, and I could do it fine. But then when you experience what the original is, it's kind of, it's just a different story. It's crazy. Mm. So, so what, what you're saying is I should never walk <laughs> <laughs> Getting to the area away. is really important uh, because that second retreat wouldn't be able to go off, basically. I'd be stuck at like 5 pp, I'd have to run around and get an encounter, and it would be awful, and I'd take forever, and I'd just be a very, very sad person. So making sure I get to 11 pp before in an encounter-free zone just sets everything up so that it just works, and it's really nice. And if you forget to manage your PP properly, then you cry because that's a long walk back. Yeah, a yeah it's like it's really horrific to get to have to get the extra PP back in that room specifically because there's encounters and yeah, it's just, just low regen encounters, not a good mix basically. Also, um, you may think, why aren't you running? I've seen these enemies before on Golden Sun One. You've run at against these enemies in Golden Sun 1. Well, they added 10 levels to everything for some reason, so these levels are actually level 25. We're like level 15. Uh, the way that it calculates flea chance is basically your level minus their level um, times 5 plus 50. Um, basically, with 10 levels of difference, we have 0% chance to run on the first try, so killing things is, is much faster, unfortunately. I made the error once of thinking I could flee and failed bleed seven times in a row and done. That was a good run. That's the thing, that yeah. That was so oh, well, I won't do that again. I yep. won't do that again, yeah. Yeah, we you will not be fleeing until we have enough levels and that's when we, about when we get halfway through Akarok usually. That's, the, that's when we start fleeing again. I guess whilst we're kind of like, um, yeah. Uh, what we need to do? So I need to talk about boss fight okay. coming up. There, there is a Moai here, and I'm walking right past it. Aha! Uh -huh. Sneaky. How did I do that? Well, if you're on the lowest pixel, I'm going to do it again. There's a Moai right there. Um, if you're on the lowest pixel, the Moai don't activate. So that's just a little bit of hidden swag if you know this game. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we should probably it's talk about really the boss fun. coming up because there's like a lot of stuff we're doing to prepare for this boss fight. Um, the next boss fight is the Serpent. The Serpent is incredibly powerful um, and very, very scary. However, he can be weakened. There are four lights that you can activate to basically weaken him and every single light will do more and more. However, the difference between... We used to do three lights and fight him at a higher level of doing everything else. Um, and, you know, doing the fourth light does take an extra bit of time, but it's still just much better to do that fourth light for this because it, the, the fourth light makes a massive difference in how powerful he is. First off, it takes off an extra turn, that serpent does. It reduces his healing to like bare minimal. I think it starts at like a thousand or something, it goes down to like 300, then it goes down to like 50 or something. Um, you need, again, Plexa knows the exact numbers, so feel, feel free to correct me because I'm definitely wrong. Um, and then, yeah, so it, it removes a turn, so he goes down to like three turns rather than like four or like two or something. I think it's like, yeah, three, three it, it goes, it's, it starts with three, and then the last light takes off the third turn, which is really good. It also changes its move pool from a yeah. very aggressive move pool to a slightly more passive move pool, which again, is very, very, very helpful. Um, yeah. It's just really important, and it's just, yeah. But being able to do that means that we're going to be in a much safe, safer position. Um, this boss fight is really fascinating in terms of how it's done, basically, and um, that fourth light just had to be added in because it's just too risky without... By, re uh, by reducing the healing, reducing the amount of turns, reducing uh, the intensity of the turns, because he does have a particular move that we don't want to see. Um, we will kind of um, be aware of that called Mighty Press, which is kind of like Minardi's death right, fight. Right? Jump scare warning, because I am going to get hit by a Moai on purpose, kind of just to show it off. There you go. Ah. So those things I've been avoiding all the way through. Um, just so you know I wasn't lying. <laughs> they exist, truly. <laughs> They're not in our minds. Yeah. Also, you didn't get any encounters while you were climbing, right? So... <coughs> yeah, so sure. sure. Whether it's faster or not. But... Because running is quite fast. It's faster than climbing. So, I don't know. Mm. Oh well. Also been the whole reason we've done it is in this order. Yeah, we've done the, yeah. these altars in a very, very particular order because the retreat warp coming out of this room sends us into the maze, which is very, very helpful and saves quite a bit of time. 
Now I don't I don't know if VWoww changes the order of the maze it from y from Yatildas, so I'm not going to talk about the maze order. But the maze, let's like accept the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just do it your way. Um, we're gonna go into the maze, and then we know the order of the maze based on Felix's name, and then we'll uh, get to it. Focus them, because I'm not I'm not used to this path, but it's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. He specifically also got a uh, judgment back before he went into the maze because the recovery rate within certain parts of the maze is extremely low. So he wanted to make sure he had at least a judgment to get through one of the encounters. The other one likely will have to just do with some synergy or perhaps fleeing. <laughs> Hopefully we'll just get him text first. Nope. <laughs> Alright, Burry is, that works. Yeah, uh this is one of the puzzles that is determined by Felix's name. I'm used to why for the real fill the this would be wow, I haven't done hundred percent. Wow, that undead didn't die. That's curious. Um, that's actually okay. Um I'm just gonna get a bunch of recovery stuff all. Uh, so I'm very acutely watching my notes and making sure I'm going through the right path, which I think I am. Uh, we'll find out very shortly. Pretty sure this is up, yeah. And otherwise we'll just have to use growth. Yeah, Alright, yeah, I know where I am now. Yeah, growth, growth is the canon way to find out, um, not the Ginny. Uh, it's the canon way to find out where to go because it, the little plant in the middle points the direction you need to go. Oh, thank God. I like this room. Whenever you see the zigzag room, you feel good because you're home. You, you, you are finishing the maze. Because that's the second to last room in the maze. So that's really nice. All right, second fight. Um, yeah, yeah, you guys should yeah. talk all about this while I focus. This is, uh, yeah. this is one of those yeah, really good fights. Sure thing, it's, it's definitely a pretty tough one, and you can very much still have a character die here if you get really unlucky with, like, like Bowie said, Mighty Press and certain targeting of abilities. It can happen, hopefully, it doesn't. We have a water of life in case it does. Um, we'll see. If all goes according to plan, shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, we're basically going to be setting up all uh, Venus Jin on Pierce in order to get access to Wish so we can heal everybody, and um, other than that, it's going to be. Get, get some summons out right away, and build up again to get more summons, specifically uh, back up to um, Procne and uh, Boreas, and then uh, that should be enough to kill him. So yeah, even in his weakened state, four lights, he is still pretty tricky. I am most definitely making a safety save for this guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that can definitely help as well, like the Megiddo Fox can definitely make things a little bit easier. Um, so this is also our first op our first chance as well of showing that you can how flexible the gin system is. We don't actually have enough ready for, for Boris, but by starting with Shade as a priority, Piers can go straight in with it. Even though he didn't have enough to cast at the time, as long as when the turn comes around you have enough standing by Ginny, you can go straight in. Um, so yeah, that upgrade's really good, because um, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, 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 the wish would be easy. Megiddo Proc is very lovely, which means that if he does choose to use Cure Well, that's kind of covered here. Um, so Wish comes out, and it's going to be... Just talk about Superpower Wish. Yeah, Superpower Wish, yeah. Because of Boreas being used for the 96 extra power, it means that Wish is going to be doing, like, maximum healing. Um, so that's the reason we also are... Uh, it's, it, it's kind of like a, a big part of the strategy. Opening up with Boreas allows us to not need Wish well, but use general, like, just use the regular Wish, which gives us, us enough healing uh, just to sustain through all of this. And this, again, is why Piers is in, is in uh, Venus class, because um, Venus and Mercury are opposite, so when they go... So yeah, so when like Venus is all water, Ginny, and, and vice versa, Wish is available um, to Felix and to Piers, um, and that Wish is super nice. Um, to, so we can use um, the uh, Mercury Ginny while still having healing of that kind. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, at this point we're just building up using all of the Ginny again, going through um, the turns. You know, Fog's going to be coming out as well as uh, you know, Fog, yeah, Fog um, Blitz and all that kind of stuff. There's the Mighty Press. Germ has been downed. Um, this is recoverable, of course. We do have the Water of Life on, I believe it's on Felix. Um, Waft is a Jupiter element, so it does hit kind of hard. You can tell what they're weak to based on the punctuation in the sentence. Um, full stop means they're strong against the element. Um, three exclamation marks means that they are weak, and then a single e exclamation mark is neutral. Um, we're going to maintain that healing. Wish is going to come out once again. That buff does does get removed if the character dies, by the way. So we don't want to see a mighty press on this because um, that would be very scary. So 
Um, Breath is going to come out so we can get straight into using Atalanta just to this cover some kill. damage. Here. Oh, maybe it won't kill anymore. Ooh, I need Megiddo, yeah. I think. Another Megiddo would help for sure. Atalanta, please do something good. I normally won't proc me, but Jenna can use her turn. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Why did Glorious go off? Did I do something? No, I did a, did a silly thing. Okay, that's fine. You healed instead, I think, didn't you? Oh, did I? Okay. I, I think you did, yeah. did that. That's fine. Alright, Boreas, uh, uh, Boreas kills. It's fine. You should be safe. Should be safe. Yeah, there it is. Right, there, there it is. Nice. No drama. Yeah. That's a couple of little rounds. There we go. Um, Maybe through, just a shame that we can't save that water of life for Poseidon, because we might need it there as well. That's okay. It's, I picked but up an extra, so, so it's what fine. would happened in exactly. a normal run is if that situation had arisen, I would have used the water of life, then I might have gone to a Zumo and picked up the water of life. Um, but we already did that, so in fact this was optimal. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> nice. Um, well, so what's really cool about the rocks as well, right? I don't think you really, think you really mentioned it earlier when we, went, when we went to Air's Rock. We actually got Reveal, which is a spell that allows us to see, you know, the truth of a certain situation. Every single rock has a unique ability for the character aligned to that element. So for Felix, we learn the sand ability. If you use sand in that room, you'll kind of know about the fact that um, there is actually a weapon in there called the Cloud Brand that's left behind um, by Sousa after he kind of, like, you know, leaves everything. Um, you know, because he was fighting and he left the Cloud Brand in there. The Cloud Brand is an amazing weapon with a really, really cool unleash, and I am upset every day we don't get it. But we don't need to get it. It costs a lot, a lot, a lot of time to go and get it, and we can just get buy a weapon for Jenna to make up the damage that we're looking for, usually in that one. At this point, we're going to spread out the Ginny again, so we have one of well, you know one of our three uh, Jupiter Ginny on three different people, so we can have easy casts of Procne and one tick back to give us all of them back again. As you know, you probably have known in the, in the past, it's kind of how to optimally use your uh, Ginny to summon if you are just summon rushing every time. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just at this point, like, the Procne is a faster animation than Judgment, and Procne won't kill in Gaia. Well, it kind of did. We, we tested out Procne for a while, it just was slightly slower than Judgment. Ooh, it's nice. If use my oil drop. This is why I get that oil drop for this encounter specifically. Like anything with two men, you use the oil drop and you clear it. Um, I only had one though, so oh well, hopefully we don't see any more of them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, judgment is the most efficient thing to use in Gaia. Um, but then it turns out that judgment stops being efficient outside of Gaia. So on the ocean, we're going to use Procne everywhere, and in Aqua Rock, uh, we'll try and use Procne as well. Um, it turns out Procne will clear a lot more things in Aqua than Gaia, because Aqua was intended to be done first, I believe, although what is really first in this part of the game is really not clear at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is kind of why it's so good that we can do this. There's actually, in the old route, we used to have to come to Apogee Islands here, and then we have to come back to Apogee Islands later. But actually, because we have sand already, we can do everything we need to do in Apogee Islands. The biggest thing is going to go and pick up a very, 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 very lovely Jupiter Ginny called Haze. Haze has the ability to make one character impervious to all damage and all um, effects for one straight turn. And this is going to be used when it's just a Hail Mary of everyone else is going to die, keep that person alive. For so this turn, and then kind of go on from there. Um, so yeah, we, we picked this up for one boss fight in particular, and it's not the one that you're thinking of. It's the Moapa fight. Um, yeah, we do. We don't actually need this with Poseidon. It doesn't. It's nice, but it's not required by any stretch of the imagination. However, on Moapa, oh boy, um, he's basically a stat check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, and we, had, we don't have the stats, so we have to do Haze, and you'll see how it works out later on. But it's convenient to have Haze as well, it gives us access to Thor, which is DTF4, Jupiter Summon, so we're not complaining. We shall be complaining if we do need to use Thor, because Thor is slow. But, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have is, as a backup. Haze is a nice flex play though, like even though, you know, obviously there's the one that flexes that we're not going to use, it is not really needed for that. However, it's one of those things where it's like, there are some situations where you're like, I really want to use this just to make sure, and it is just a bit of a fail safe, um, in case things do turn, tend to go a little bit um, iffy. Um, so right now we put all of the fire onto um, Felix. Not yeah. Oh yeah, no, Felix, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fire, f fire on Felix, yeah. I thought you were going to say Jenna. Um, yeah. no, 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 yeah, yeah, that's after this, I think, yeah. Um, when she hits the level 18, I believe. Um, Correct. Yep. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, I've forgotten to do this once, and that was the saddest speedrun I ever did. Um, but, 
I, I think we all do, yeah. all do, do. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I remember that one very much. Um, I've forgotten. I've forgotten the Trident piece before, and it was fun when I found out on Obaba. Oh my gosh. Later. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's always good. Let, please tell me it wasn't Tundaria as well. It was, it was Tundaria. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair. That's anyway, an easy one. We'll, 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 we'll get. Yep. That is we'll a reset split right now. So we just gained 103. Oh wow, that's that's impressive. I wouldn't have the uh, the. I couldn't be asked. <laughs> I wouldn't have the ask to do that. Um, no, that. Uh, so we just bought the angelic ank, which is another showcase of very powerful weapons in this game. 103 attack power, so about 51 extra damage coming out from Jenna, which is going to be very very nice just for covering damage rolls when it comes to attacking um, to clear yeah, enemies. It's, it's actually. It's actually picked up for um, Jupiter Lighthouse of all things, mm. um, but it's also helpful on this split, so it's, it's very nice to better pick it up and put it to immediate use and get some extra time save, even though it's only really required for Jupiter. Mm. I really want to do some more Shining Force gushing, but I'm not sure, sure if it is really appropriate. No, it's not, Bowie. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's fair. Every, every single stream, guys, you have no idea. Hey, look, it's a primula from Shining Force 3, Scenario 5. Scenario, scenario 3, Chapter 5, when she joins. Come on. <laughs> I, I knew that would annoy him. Yeah. No, but look, Camelot is a great, great series of games, um, especially the uh, Mario Sports titles, which, which they're mostly known for. Um, for all the flack we do give them, they are, you know, they punch above their weight as far as sports games are concerned, at least in our opinion. Mm. Um, yeah, but please make an RPG again. We'd love that. Well, ta ta <clears throat> Mario Golf Super Rush does have a leveling system, just like the old GGBA type titles does, and it has boss fights. Um, so, so what you're saying up. is, I can now play Waluigi in, a, in an RPG. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was almost a nice thought, and then you had to ruin it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, this is the only skip in Aqua Rock. Uh, it's a little uh, retreat glitch gets us past one puzzle, and the rest is just us doing the. Yeah, doing for a long time we actually thought this one didn't save time. Actually, uh, we thought that this bit was like, why would you ever do this? It's really slow. As you can see, it's taking me forever to um, get an encounter here to get out of the tree mode. Um, what it actually does do is it forces this encounter very clearly, but forcing this encounter, we never factored into the time skip, uh, to the time save because. Even if the other puzzle of doing the skip on the puzzle doesn't actually lose that much time, or gain that much time, or whatever it is, that that strat that hasn't had an encounter yet, that encounter should have been factored into the calculations, and it never was. But it turns out that that retreat glitch actually does save time, on average, to the tune of about uh, 30 seconds, I believe. Very nice. Yeah, very cool. I, believe I, 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 I believe I said it was the only skip, but now it's the only uh, only retreat glitch. Mm. My best there, there are some there serious ones out there. Like small ones. Yeah. Now this is a good a good point to kind of like you know reach over to you, Plexer, and kind of ask. Um, would you reckon? I know how you feel about this dungeon. Um, so do you reckon it's a good time for donation? Uh, I'm going to do a pointless trick. And then Arga can certainly do some donations. Because yeah. I know the pointless trick. I do. <laughs> Not this I one. Love... The other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the pointless trick. Oops. <laughs> That's that, pointless that, trick. that wasn't it. That wasn't it. That's Fun fact. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact. You can actually uh, climb up left from here, up to that um, next set of stones. It's very, very precise, and it doesn't do anything. But you can. You can. Thank you, Bowie, for that contribution. Yeah, it was one of the two. I, I found a door in casual play. I didn't actually do anything. Plex did it, but you know, I found a door apparently, and I did that. That's all I've managed to, act, to actually like, push to this one. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to do this the intended way, and then I'm going to do it a pointless way, just to prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very clearly the intended solution. Just hold upright. Um, <laughs> But this is the fancy way to do that, if that wasn't fancy enough for you. But if you do it to prove a point, this is still pointless. Yes. <laughs> if you go into retreat mode, you can just walk around with this freely. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Big fact. Yep. Completely unnecessary and definitely lost time for that, but uh, that was so worth it. Swag is kind of cool. I 
it's just kind of, um, kind of kind of the motto of the run, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. You won't believe how much swag we can pack into this speed run. Ah, uh, gross. Actually, I'll just pull this pull this probably faster. Yeah, this is one of those moments where you're like, I guess I'll use Thor. I guess. <laughs> didn't didn't Thor get that quite is... the glow up in DD? He's fast in DD. Thor is oh, yeah. DD. Probably, probably got destroyed. Oh, poor is... Cockney. Very happy news. Okay, so basically through this dungeon, I'm looking to see if Jenna is getting to level 18. Um, I know I promised Argek would get an opportunity for donations, but I need to explain level 18, because after that, the dungeon is brain dead. Um, at 18, that's all the experience I need, and it becomes slightly more optimal to start running from everything. Um, we do need to hit a level threshold later on, um, but it, at this point, it's... The encounters we would take here are less efficient than the encounters we would take later on, so we take the encounters later on because it's more overall efficient and saves time. Yada yada yada. I'm gonna do a menu here. We're gonna run from everything. Argy, give us some donations because I really don't like this dungeon. <laughs> of course. Well, something that we do like is the Dullahan fight. Uh, how long do we have until that comes up? Ooh, I don't know. A while. A while. All right. There you go. Official date. We still have a while. We've had twenty-five thousand eight hundred and sixty-six dollars and seventy cents. Out of 50,000 it needed to hit that, so we still can get it. And speaking of, we have a $5 donation from Helix, who says, shout out to the marble with the screaming Dullahan inside. I like the fact how the memes are mixing now. We're getting Dullahan with a screaming marble and things are just going great. We also have a $100 donation from Cubs Rule that says, one of my favorite games ever. Love the run at AGDQ and I cannot wait for the Lost Age. Good luck, Plexa. We have a $25 donation from Silent Echo saying I had to donate during Golden Sun, The Lost Age, my all-time favorite RPG. It seems like just yesterday I was spending hours at the fountain in Lemura. Incentive went towards Dillahan. He's ruined several days of my childhood. Plexa, a man greater than I, I humbly ask you to avenge my childhood. I will be watching, awaiting Dillahan's demise. Good luck to the runner, and super hyped for the run. And we got a $25 donation from Coldergeist that says, what's happening, Plexa? You know I have to donate for Golden Sun, especially for the 20th anniversary this year. This goes towards the Dullahan fight, obviously. It should have been going towards Star Magician for that beautiful battle theme, but <laughs> we'll save that for another day, I suppose. Good luck on the run. I think you're going to crush it. And here's to seeing Dark Dawn at GDQ 2022. We've also got a massive $500 donation from a wild Chansey appeared. I was super excited to see the first Golden Sun run at AGDQ that I had to get up at 5 a.m. to watch this run of The Lost Age. Golden Sun is one of my all-time favorite games, and I'm so happy to see Plexa running these at GDQ. Good luck on the run, and let's get that Dullahan incentive. All right, I think I have calculated the time remaining. We're about two hours on Dullahan. About oh, wow, hours. that's Give a time. long time. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so two hours still to hit Dullahan. We can definitely do that. Keep your donations coming into Dullahan. It is going towards a great course. Uh, a great course? A yes, a great course. You know, like a golf course, like Camelot games do. Uh, we're going towards uh, MSF. <laughs> I'm not sorry, boy. <laughs> but, uh, but we got uh, we got another donation here. Another hundred dollar donation from Triple Cow saying, couldn't wait to donate for my favorite JRPG series of all time. I've loved these games since I was a child and couldn't be more excited to see them at GDQ. Let's get that Dullahan fight. Oh, this stuff game was really long. Oh, dude, stuff oh, is happening. Oh, super long. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. This is the only <laughs> interesting thing in the whole run, in the whole dungeon is this clip right here. And I didn't get it. Nice. No, I got it. I fixed hey, it. Hey, there. All right, continue. Hey. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's super cool to see everybody getting behind the Dullahan. I mean, I know Dullahan wrecked me as a kid, so I can sympathize with every, every one of you saying, oh, yeah, I spent three days trying to beat him. Yep, me too. Oh, yeah, oh, we've, yeah. We've, we've, we've got more. We've got so much more for them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, that's dungeon. what we... 50, 50 dollar donation from Justin saying, I had to donate for the best GBA game of all time. So happy to see it in GDQ this year. Let's keep those donations coming in for the Dullahan fight. I don't believe it's possible with only half the gin, but I want Plexa to prove me wrong. Indeed, all oh, we do. We all want Plexa to prove us wrong on this, and you can all help out. We got $25 from Sup It's Carry saying, had to donate during my favorite series, Golden Sun. I can't believe it's been 20 years already since this series started. I know we all love to see the Golden Sun rise again with a fourth game, but a GDQ run is almost as good. Here's hoping we see Dullahan today. I can barely beat that dude on my best day, and I know Plexa is going to turn him inside out. And we've got a $100 donation here from Rosalina saying, so glad to have Golden Sun, the Lost Age, at a GDQ event, especially for the 20th anniversary. Go, Plexa! But yeah, again, everybody, a big thank you for all your donations here. They are absolutely fantastic. Please do keep them coming in. As we're jumping over the water, we've got a $25 donation from Atelier TM saying, good luck on the run, Plexa. Don't let Bowie's dulcet tones distract you. Boy, do you have dulcet tones? Uh, I have been told. I, I can't verify this myself, but... I, I think we can verify it. You do. Don't stop oh. distracting our runner, please. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got a $20 donation from Golden Sun Lover, saying Golden Sun is my favorite game of all time. Never lost hope for a fourth entry. I'm always amazed at how speedrunners can make me enjoy this game even more. Greetings from Chile, and please show us that Dullahan battle. Oh my god, I'm down to like my last eight that I've got marked right now. Yeah, can we finish the them? Like, we got another five. <laughs> we probably can. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Keep the, going, I'll yeah. keep going. We, we got a $500 donation from LA saying Golden Sun is one of my favorite series of all time. I should be playing a game of Snap with everybody saying this. I love it. So happy to be able to join everyone for this journey. Good luck to Plexa on his run. Again, thank you very much for that donation there, Ellie. We got a $100 donation from Murby saying, had to donate for Golden Sun, a series I love dearly. Great graphics, great music. And yes, I did enter the gold password every single time because I never had a link cable. Oh, quick interjection. Uh, link cable is superior to gold password because it transfers your text speed settings so you can get through the first cutscene faster. Why? I don't know. Makes me sad because no one has a link cable in this day and age, but please continue because this puzzle is like legitimately a minute and a half long. We got a $25 donation from the Manly Melon. This is Manly Melon here. This is an amazing GDQ. Great work to everyone involved with its production. I have been watching Plexa run for years now and I've always loved his content. Good luck, Plexa, and good luck during Briggs. I got a $25 donation from Nordic Soy that says, Argic money! Put this towards taking Dullahan's head up. Oh, oh, wait. Um, also, <laughs> shout out to the marble with the screaming head inside. You can't do both. You can't say Dullahan's head off and then screaming head is on. Oh, thank you, Nordic. Oh, we got a $250 donation from Peta who says, watching this brings back memories of what felt like hours of transferring my game file with the gold password. It took multiple attempts due to out of order sticky notes and bad handwriting. Good luck on the run and give Dullahan the Megiddo! We won't give him the Megiddo, but yeah, I, I feel you. They have the lowercase t and the plus symbol look very suspiciously similar. I know a lot of people struggle on those two symbols. For me, it's more the out of order stick, you know, it's like I can feel getting the password wrong. You're like, what do I do now? <laughs> Having to go all the way through. All right, we got a $25 donation from Renenzo, who's saying, the most important fight while fighting Dillahan is not to lose your head. And then a $250 donation from Yariafu, who says, donating towards that super boss fight. Send her head rolling. Oh, wait. Hmm. So one doesn't want to lose the head, and the other one wants to send the head rolling. Did these what people know that there's no head? Like, do we tell them there's no head? Well, I don't guess don't tell them, Mark. There's, there's a head on the shield, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they're ready for the truth, Argic. Don't tell them. I, I, I don't think they're ready for the truth either. We'll wait and see. We'll see if, we'll see if they meet the fight. Hopefully they will. 
Why don't we have a 20? Remember that five dollar train that we had for the Dullahan train? We have twenty dollars from the Adept family, saying four train tickets, please. Two adults, one child, one gin dot destination, Dullahan fight. And we have a fifty dollar donation from Stacy coming out saying all the seal pups are cheering for you, Plexa. And then finally, right now. Oh. The dungeon's not over. You still got some time. Oh, no! I said finally! Okay, no, finally! $75 donation from Little Haster saying Dullahan Hype! Golden Sun games were a favourite of mine as a kid. The summons were such a cool mechanic, and the story was so great. We have to stop lighting the lighthouses. We have to finish lighting the lighthouses. Good luck on the rest of the run. Don't worry, Brad. Don't worry, Arctic. It's almost over. We're, we're almost there. We're getting just getting the synergy down, and after that, we're using it once to get out, and then we're tweeting twice. You, 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 you're, yeah. You made it through. You, can get you one did last good. One. You can get one last. Get one last. One last one. Hundred dollar donation from Sam Lee and Hart that says, "I can't believe I slept through the start of this." Golden Sun is one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and it's always fantastic to see the long runs in the marathon. Now let's see Dullahan taken down because I can never do it myself as a kid without a lot of grinding. All right, that is Aqua Rock, everybody. Incredibly exciting and intricate and skillful. You're really it's speed really just yeah, you're It's a really fun dungeon, but it's just not, not, not that much going on in the speed run. <laughs> yeah, you're really selling it to the people. In fact, they're not well, a guys, big fan. This is the, I do not like this dungeon. I, I loved it casually. I like downloaded the MP3 file for the soundtrack. I added it to my MP3 player back in the day. It was great. I love the track. The ambiance was amazing. But in the speed run, there's just, there's, it has nothing going for it. Uh, but fortunately, that's the worst that we're, that that's behind us now. We can look forward to really cool things. Uh, so the next phase of the game is we got to finish off getting the tridents. Now that we've got the sand and parched kind of used, we actually have access to all of the places where the trident can be, or trident pieces are. That's Tandaria, which is like all the way down here, and Ankol, which is all the way up here. So we're going to go all the way down to Tandaria and pick up a piece and then do some stuff. And we're going to go to Ankol, do some stuff, get the piece, and then we can forge the trident and finally fight Poseidon. Um, in between all of that, we are also trying to get Piers to level 22. Uh, at 22 in the full Venus class, Piers gets access to an ability called Wishwell. Now, on the Serpent, you saw Piers use what we call Superpower Wish, which is basically um, the elemental boosted Wish, which basically heals for twice as much. Wishwell is basically that from the start. We don't have the luxury of being able to cast Boreas against uh, Poseidon because he's just too scary. Um, so we have to have Wishwell, otherwise the fight is just straight up unwinnable. Um, this is quite possibly and um, Chaos Chimera may disagree with me, but I think Poseidon may be the hardest fight across the entire Golden Sun series. So, 22 or deaths, and we're going to try and get there as quickly as we can. So we're going to start taking encounters again. Now we actually have useful synergy, so we've, we've switched out our classes into the class setup that we currently have. Uh, this um, full Venus on Piers, Mercury thing on Felix, so that we can do basically this. Storm Ray and Flare Storm. So Flare Storm is extremely powerful, and Tornado and, and or Storm Ray uh, can clear these encounters very, very quickly. Uh, they also give a uh, ridiculous amount of experience, so they're just generally very, very uh, efficient ways to get to level 22. I should probably throw any heal. Why don't you know uh, speed? I don't know. Uh, a thing to start maybe, um, I guess, uh, alluding to is that inside Aqua Rock, Plexa picked up, like, he was when he was in the core, he grabbed, um, you know, a Synergy Refresh. He got full PP Refresh by checking the massive Synergy Crystal. This is actually a setup that is like, very, very long in in the, the making. Um, we are not going to like restore PP again until we get to like you know I think when we get to Shaman Village, um, where um, we were talking about the Moaka fight earlier when Haze is needed. Um, from this point, we are going to be using PP in such a way that at that point, Felix will have you know as, as little as he needs to kind of like uh, do the tricks and skips there, but it's like a massive setup of, of PP use, it's really fascinating. And it is why we've also picked up a couple of Synergy um, Crystals as well. These are items that restore PP to full, um, because we're going to be doing a lot of Synergy usage with uh, Sheba and with Jenna, and, and, and if we do need to, you know, just refresh Piers as well before the, so the Poseidon fight, we do have these um, in hand. But um, yeah, 
it's going to be a nice balance of, of, uh, of healing and, and PP usage as well to kind of get um, Felix to a position where he's like optimally managed. Pretty good. Cool. Yeah, it's quite a long sit up to, to get the PP management right, but it's not too bad. Okay, Shiva finally got 18, that's nice. Now Shiva has access to an ability to call Tornado. Tornado is stronger than Storm Ray, but uses more PP than Storm Ray. So I'm gonna use Tornado when I need to, which is usually on the Dinox fight, but otherwise I'll try to avoid it. Welcome to Centauria Tower, catch him. Oh yeah, there's a Larry of Tower soundtrack. So good. So yeah, that was Parch, and it's the only time we use it in the dungeon, but that's fine. It's the only time we use it in the speedrun, even. Yeah, you okay. use it to get out of Aqua Rock and into the Narion Tower, and then it's gone. This is the oh. one time I wish I had the Cloud Brand, but oh well. Mm. I wish we always had it. It's just too cool and unleashed, dude. It's too cool. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's some cool tricks in this dungeon. Not only does it have a rocking soundtrack, it does have some very, very cool tricks. There. And we'll, we'll talk about the move move trick later on, because uh, move's got a very fascinating property, but uh, it'll, it'll, it'll happen just a bit. We've got, we, we, we got a few fights to get through first, um, including a Ginny fight, which is... Well, I mean, it's not too tricky, but we have to go and pick it up. It is a Ginny fight, it's taken rocky. <laughs> really? I always just, you know, shade, Boreas, attack. Or, well, no, sorry, no, sorry, old, shade, 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 sorry, shade Boreas judgment, sorry. Um, it's old threat, that's why. Oh, right, I see. Someone hasn't read the, the book. I've read the book. Which, I have, I, let's, let's plug the book. So, I, I, I wrote a 150-page <laughs> guide for this game. You can, if you've played this game once, you can probably pick up the guide and play through the game reasonably fast with the book. Um, it has far too much detail on every dungeon in the game, and, uh, I did it because no one runs this game, and they really should. <laughs> uh, you can find uh, it at speedrun.com. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, under uh, the resources tab on for Golden Sun. As someone who has actually read the entire book, I can uh, actually attest that it is a really good guide. And no. even as someone who already ran it, uh, yeah, I did actually learn a bunch. Unfortunately, I do have to do the bad strat here, because Felix is not level 19, which is a bit sad, but oh well. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm dying Vindication. a little bit inside doing this. Oh, I, I see. I, I, I have been aware of the new one, but I haven't learned it yet, so I just know this. It's, just, it's easy, right? I, always, there's always a thing, right? In this, when it comes to um, speedrunning Golden Sun, there's a, there's a bit of a strange nuance to this. But there will be optimal kills. But what's better than an optimal kill with a bit of hesitation is a less optimal kill with no hesitation. Because the menus are a big part of this game. So if you know what you, if you have an, an answer, and you just like slam it out without uh, sitting there spending, you know, 20, 10, 15 seconds trying to figure it out in the menu, that's going to be better than doing the optimal kill. So if you know something works, then you might as well crack it out if you're, un, if you're not sure of, on a faster method. Um, yeah, I did get to show off one cool thing. Notice how my general on standby, if you just run into the thing on ice, you recover your gin. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah. It's a nice, safe it way to get your gin back. Yeah. It's, it's swaggy, but it's at the same time. But it's time neutral, because swag. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't it's lose just... time either. You're right. Mm -hmm. So upcoming next is like our next kind of cool trick, which is um, move the, the move hitbox. The move hitbox it goes like one tile forward, essentially, and then you grab off on, onto things. However, a little specificity about this is that the the hitbox for move is not just a, like a straight line. You know, it's not like a, you know, a block. It's actually a cone. So it starts quite thin and it gets wider and then it can it can grab onto things. What's really cool about this is that there are particular puzzles. This next one is kind of the biggest example of that. We're actually where if we position ourselves correctly, we'll be in a position where the move hitbox will dot will like be so thin that it'll get past one object and connect onto the object with like behind it or you know further away. So for example, right here you have these two pillars. Now normally you have to go to the right hand side and then pull the right side pillar right and then you can go and do the, 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 the other one. However, if we position ourselves correctly like this, by like going a little bit low, I'm trying, I'm low, trying. Come on, Felix. Like, like this. Doing. Felix. Like this. Thank you. There it is. There we go. 
If you want to like run below it and then run a little bit right and then tap up and you kind of like essentially face Felix to the right and then you can grab the second piece and then just move the first piece afterwards. So it's really cool and it just saves a bunch of time of moving pillars on ice and you have to watch them and there's pound mechanics. Blah, blah, blah. We will do that one more time. That. Two yeah, things okay. to say about that. One is rounded hurt boxes like the edge of that pillar are really annoying for the reasons that you saw there. I did quite a few excessive spins there with Felix because um, I kept running into the rounded hurt box and just being turned in the wrong direction. So super fun. Uh, the other thing to say is that actually Critical Slip found that. Um, so thank you, Slip, for this trick. It's really cool. I, I, I didn't actually find this specific application of the trick, but uh, yeah, it, uh, that's true. Yeah, the the biggest the biggest applic I did find one of the biggest applications because it skips basically half of that cover ruins. <laughs> yeah. That's where it's fun. But yeah, this concept's uh, evolved into create many things, including move clipping. And uh, well, this it's, it's far more relevant in 100% and 100% with all general summons that kind of thing. Um, there's tons of these little places where you can use move to like skip a bunch of uh, use move in that particular way to skip a bunch of stuff, but. It's kind of like two big places in this, this category, one of them being the one you just saw and the other one is coming up and not too well. Yeah. Well, well, I, need to, need, I need to make something really obvious for everybody. There's a huge cutscene block coming up, so please do not leave Argus stranded. Please get your donations yes. in so that oh, you yeah. can read them off. <laughs> yes. Uh, we just grabbed the burst brooch and it allows us to cast burst, which is a thing that blows things up. Um, you do want to keep an eye, uh, I mean, well, it doesn't say keep an eye, you, you do have to kind of be very, very aware that you can use this in a bit in particular place, but otherwise you can get stuck in the game again. Um, this is the trident piece that you forgot, isn't it? Don't yes, forget this it. Is the one. I did that, and then I did retreat, and I never picked it up. Yeah. And then I um, realized way too late, and it was very sad. Yeah. So we're going to grab that second um, piece, we've got one more to get, but before we go back, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to grab an extra Ginny, and then we're going to do a death walk. Because our last place that we... Uh, you death walk back to the sanctum of the last village you visited, or the last place where a sanctum is. Um, and that happens to be a Poji Island, so just north of Aqua Rock. So it goes all the way up there. Nice and quick. And also your boat comes with you. Specify that. Because if you do the, um, the magic save door, you don't get your boat. Um, I've, done, I've done that once mm -hmm. as well. It's fine in any percent, but not in no S&Q, because you need to do a save and quit to get the boat back. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Here's Wheeze. Wheeze hits really hard, and that's actually kind of preferable, because we need to do that that one. <laughs> Is it really Ow. annoying when, like, we get the perfect fight on Wheeze and you don't get damage? Like, please, like, you're the one I yeah. want to hit me. <laughs> please. You can hit way harder than that. He was holding back. Nice Vegeta. That's a, that, that, yeah. that's a good Magida. So that's, that's like a fast fight, but it's going to be a slow result from that. We actually do want him to do more mean things to us, because what we said, we need to die. Because currently we're here, we want to be over here, so if we have to... It's, we could walk back, but it would take forever. And this means that because we want uh, to die, we'll get one enemy, of course, yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, course. poison, that's nice. That's not bad, that does help. Don't mind the poison. He's failed fact, if, poison, if poison procs on the first member of your party, they will take poison damage when you try to flee. It won't happen to anybody else. Aww. Why? I don't know. Uh, because, well, because they're, it's, it's uh, the that first option in the menu. Um, but yeah, what we're doing here is intentional summon fails. So because we have four, um, four of most summons, what we do is um, we, just, um, we just set one Ginny, so we actually can't summon the last one, and then we just do summon fails. Because it's the quickest way to get through. Because fleeing is quote unquote fastest, but then you'll run away sometimes. But um, being able to uh, fail summon just is the easiest way to keep doing that. This is why we also keep. Oh no, we died. Oh no, oh, we died. Oh no, why no? Um, we also have the ability to heal now. So um, Felix currently has uh, four in Mercury. So he has, at level 19, you gain revive. And because he has as much PP as he has, he kept it high. We could then do the revive for him to like burst his PP down to a low amount. So we can kind of like keep it at that level when we want to get into the, the retreat glitch state again. Um, hello, goodbye. You love to see it. You love when that happens. It's always preferable. But yeah, big, it? big, big cutscene segment coming up. And so, yeah, definitely get those donations in because 
A, Dullahan is really cool, and B, Argek will get bored otherwise, and that'll be sad. Don't make Argek sad. Yeah, yeah, we're putting him to work. I could never be bored watching this run. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're currently sailing on the ocean. We're gonna go back to Alhafra. Oh, Alhafra? Alhafra? I don't know how you say it. Um, say Alhafra, but and whatever. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the boat. So get your Vohayos in chat, and then we'll fix <laughs> the boat, and then we will let Briggs escape. Um, fun fact, that boat is actually the same boat that you sail around the world in a dark dawn, which is really cool, nice tie in there. But Briggs will escape, and then we'll kind of give chase to him, but kind of half-heartedly. Yeah. And then so this is Ankle Ruins, which is really cool. I like Ankle I love the music in Ankle Ruins. This is why I mentioned earlier as well that you need to be really, like, very, very aware that when you first fight Briggs, right, you can start fixing the boat. And you'll be able to do a bunch of things, but there's one thing you can't do. You haven't got burst. And for some reason, you just have to be cognizant of, of the fact that holding the mast down for the boat is a cracked rock and that you actually can use burst on it. It took me a while, I'm not going to lie. Um, Same. When I, was, you know, when I was like 13 or whatever when this, when this game came out. Um, and yeah. But yeah, I think, I think it's about time we get into some donations because, well, I'm just going to be fixing the boat. So while I fix the boat, I'll get Henry Donos. Go for it. Thank you very much. Quick update first on the Dullahan total. We are currently at $28,391. So we're definitely getting there for Dullahan. You heard you got around two hours to get there. I fully believe we can make it, folks. And now, on to the... 30 minutes less now. 30 minutes less now. Oh, no! <laughs> on to the donations. running out. $25 donation from a Windex that says, Praise the sun. Praise the golden sun. Indeed. And we have a $25 donation from Nyan Hellcat saying, Looking forward to that dollar hand fight. Shout out to the ball with the screaming man inside. And we got a $50 donation here from Epidel saying, have to donate during Golden Sun, a series that deserves more than it's gotten. Good luck to the runner. Thanks to the whole community for keeping love and keeping the series alive. And then we got a $100 donation from Isaac and Matthew who say, so glad to see Golden Sun at GDQ and get its moment. Hope this gets the best game. Oh, sorry. Hope, yeah. Hope this gets the best Game Boy RPG games out there. A finish to their story. I think they want a fourth game. I think we all want a fourth game, to be honest. We that all would want be a grand. Game. We really do. And we got a twenty-five dollar donation from Fate's Guardian, saying have to donate for one of my favorite games on the GBA. So, question for Plexa: Will you be playing Dark Dawn for the next GDQ? We'll see about that. Like I said um, at the beginning, we are in the process of significantly breaking Dark Dawn. Um, it was a seven hour speed run. Uh, I got a 5.30 over the weekend, so we've already cut an, an hour and a half from it, and it's only gonna go lower as we just tear the game to shreds. Like I said, we can now jump off of bridges and that just unrestricted movement as soon as you get out of the first area is kind of insane to think about. So uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, there you have it, folks. We'll see how it goes. It could be the third game. Mm. Onwards we go. $100 donations from Mini Man saying, Hey, Plexa, looking forward to a great run, as always. Hilarious watching you laying the groundwork for Angry Kraden. Shoutouts to Moloch, the good boy. Moloch is a very good boy. I'm very sad we don't use it in this run, but Moloch is very important in the all gen run, uh, all summons all gen. So, shout out to the old Yeti dog. We got a $150 donation from Ace of Spades 159 saying, putting this towards the dollar hand fight so I can see Plexa destroy the one boss I never could as a kid. And in the same vein, we've got $50 from One Blossom saying, great SGDQ as always. Take my 50 bucks for this great game and a great runner. Behead this dollar hand. And then we got another $50 donations from Turu, saying, is it really a Lost Age playthrough without Dillahan? Also, there can always be more money given to MSF. They're great. 
And you are right about that, Duro. MSF are fantastic. Again, all your donations are going to a great cause here, helping Doctors Without Borders here help when and where they are needed. You heard it in an interview earlier. It's a case of if they are needed, they will be there. But they can only do that thanks to events like this. Please do keep your donations coming in. One moment, Argy. Mm -hmm. I have to point out that this cutscene is incredibly disturbing. Uh, keep in mind that Jenna is, is like a 17, 17 ish at this point. The mayor is quite visibly going to hit on her right here. And uh, that's awkward. And then everybody gets angry. Felix gets very protective because Felix is Jenna's brother, obviously. This guy is just like actual scum. So, boo. Boo this guy. Boo. Boo. No one's, no He's one the likes actual the villain. From mayor. Yeah, he is actual scum. Um, yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, when I was talking about the attention to details, what I mean, like the fact that they tell that story through our actions, it's very, very clear. And it's, yeah. It's, uh. Yeah. Yeah, we don't like this guy. We like the pirate, not this guy. Anyway, sorry, I'll continue. Now no, that no worries. How horrible this guy is. <laughs> always, always important, indeed. What else is important? Our donations here, of course. We have $100 donations from Gurnak, who says, so happy to see Golden Sun, the Lost Age. Good luck on the run, and let's get that Dullahan fight. And we have another $100 donation here from Cepheus, saying, love Golden Sun, the Lost Age. Wish I hadn't lost my copy, but I think I might pick up another one after seeing this. Let's get that Dullahan. And we have a $25 donation here from Robo Witch. Straight to the point. Let's do that, Dullahan. And a $50 donation from Chrono Dream saying, hey there, long time watcher, finally able to donate. Thanks to the runners, the hosts, and everyone behind the scenes for your hard work. And thanks to Doctors Without Borders for everything they do to improve the world. You're all incredibly inspiring. Golden Sun is one of my girlfriend's favorite game series. And since her work is quite overwhelming lately, seeing the Dullahan getting obliterated will surely give her strength. Let's get it. Cheers from France and shout out to my friends who are likely watching too. And then I'll throw back from earlier here. Uh, we got a $20 donation from Pixie One and Pixie Two who are saying, you look tired. You should get some rest. I angry like this donation. <laughs> angry like, oh no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Quick, so, so, something to cast sleep again. Oh. I wake up in cold sweats at night sometimes, dreaming of pixies. Oh, terror. I, I, I can imagine losing a run to them is just frustrating beyond belief. One of those scenarios, like midnight, there's a storm like flashing outside, there's a, a strike of lightning, and then just a face appears at the window. Another flash and it's gone. And in fact, it's just like <laughs> red eyes in the dark. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Too spooky right. for me, guys. It's not October yet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> too, too, too spooky. Too spooky. Halloween is July. Come on. All right. Closing uh, in. How, how long we got still? You can get another one in. Get another one. Well, instead of doing that, what I will do is I will tell you, this is a really long run. And what we are doing is we're going to be swapping uh, donation readers now. So I am going to do as the pixies suggest and get some rest. No, I'm not. I'm going to sit and watch the rest of the run. I will see you in chat here, folks. Uh, but taking over is the ever-wonderful Edo Bean. So please do give her all your love as she's going to come in and take over reading donations here. Remember, get that dull hand fight. We are almost there, folks. A quick update. We are over halfway. We're at 29,826. Almost 30K. I believe we can get there. I believe in you, folks. For the Golden Sun team. Thank you, Agak. See you next time. Thank, Thank you again. Appreciate Cheers, it. Fella. Thank you so much. Boost. Yeah, people don't realize that when you commentate a Golden Sun run, you're basically uh, when you're doing the donation reading for a Golden Sun run, you're basically commentating because we need you to carry the downtime. So, so. <sighs> big ask and wish for Aura. Can't wait for Edo to get on as well. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that, I mean, but yeah, I was going to just briefly re reiterate for the Dullahan fight. It is going to be one hell of a fight. There's so much to it, and there's so much nuance that uh, we, we we can go into it now, but it will just take too much time. It's going to be set, uh, we're going to reserve that for, for for the fight. But there's a lot of um, like just nuance and in intelligence that kind of gets put into it to make it work. Um, it really is worth it. I, I can't stress that enough. Yeah.
going to be making our way up to Ankle Ruins, though, by just going straight north. Um, and Ankle Ruins is really sweet. It's got a nice, uh, you know, soundtrack. Again, I love it very much. It, it, the big part of this soundtrack is like the, like the choral sounds, like you know, being able, able to hear this like vocality in the music is lovely. Um, it's not just the compositions are great, but how Sakuramba managed to make it sound on the GBA sound chip is really, really impressive. Um, but we're going to be jumping into here and going to be cracking on with the first bit. We're going to be showing, showcasing sand as a skill, um, and also um, just uh, I think, well, yeah, we're going to be showcasing sand as a skill as we make our way through. And I believe we are joined by the very lovely Adobe. Hello. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Thank you once again, Arjik, for doing the first step because it would have been really early in the morning for me. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. We saved plenty of cutscenes for you as well, Ado. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> You're very welcome. welcome. Probably more cutscenes in the back half than the first half. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna put you to no, work. No, that's a, oh that's okay. Don't worry about it. But I do realize that we are at almost thirty thousand. Oh my gosh, you guys are thirty thirty thousand for the Dolahan Super Boss. But we're not there yet. We need to get there. It's fifty thousand we have to raise. We're so close though. I know you peeps can do it. So please. Keep on with the donations, and we can we can make it happen. And we can cut off the wait head. Wait, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> We've been struggling with this all, all night, so yeah, um, <laughs> we'll cut off the thing, and it will die. I think. Yes, <laughs> it will go. We will It'll we will lovely. hit the we will hit the thing until it stops moving. That's that's, that's basically <laughs> what we're doing. That's all we can do here, the tricky boy. Um, this stone, stone statue had a night out with the lads! Um, getting absolutely razzed and just, uh, yeah. He needs to get it out. He needs to get it out of Chond system. Chondering everywhere. Um, but yeah, so that, creating that little sand flow allows us to kind of, uh, sink into the sand later and then hop under the wall to meet, um, you know, Brett with, with the lads. Um, and we can continue deeper into this dungeon. I found out in a very recent, uh, random, randomizer run that you can actually pull those, uh, statue heads away in that previous room. Not at all relevant to the speed run. Um, off we go, upstairs, and uh, that chest contains a really cool weapon, which is a mace, but we're not gonna get it if we don't need it. Um, it's the Thanos mace, quite mm. literally. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Marvel. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's Thanatos. Thanatos. Yeah, it's Thanatos. Yeah, it's Thanatos, yeah, yeah. But it, it has like a ability that like can instantly kill things, which mm. is kind of like very appropriate for it. But. It's called Heart Range too, it's a really cool ability. Fast animation. Would, would be great to pick it up if we didn't have the Soul Blade. There was a really, really old 80% route where we picked it up, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. What has... Yeah, still just fighting here, making sure that Pierce is uh, either level 22 or at the very least very close to being level 22 so that he levels up to the next boss. Um, and uh, that'll basically be right around the end of the dungeon. And uh, yeah, yeah we've, we've... I, have, I have some awkwardness to deal with here. Like, I can't use the Psy Crystal on Shiba, and she only has one cast of something left. So I have to be very careful about how I clear these next few encounters. Yeah. It's a little bit awkward to work around, but it should be okay. Normally would have used some Psy Crystal that he had to use on Pierce all the way back in Dyla. So he'd be able yep. to cast for us. Alright, goodbye, PP. You've been useful. Um but you will be missed. They defend. <laughs> of course they defend. Of course they. Well, that's all right. So we've been doing half of the dungeon, and uh, like we said earlier, we'll be basically skipping the other half. And uh, I'm very happy that I actually found this, considering I only have one other contribution to this game, and they have done me the service of calling it dumb skip. So uh, I'm happy to actually have this have this good thing as well. It makes, makes me happy. We're really good at naming glitches in our community. <laughs> My favourite is uh, obviously the fact that you are the purveyor of magical rivers, sir. Is that, that? It's always oh, yeah, me one of my oh, favourite yeah. ones. Magic river, what a great name! Magic river, <laughs> great. But yeah, so, here yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Sense uh, flipping into it with sand, and then once again using the cone from move in order to uh, 
move the pillar and that skips us having to do the entire other half. Yeah, so you can actually do either half and it doesn't doesn't really matter. Like you can just do the same trick but on the other side and you can, you know, finish the half that way. Uh, it's just about 30 seconds of movement faster to do it on the left side than the right side, but the right side is slightly more impressive because you're not meant to do it. Oh well, it's fine. And I will say, it does make this dungeon a very nice length. It used to be quite a bit of a slog to get through. Just, just because you're doing the same thing throughout the entire dungeon. But now, yeah, perfect length. It, it quite literally halves the length of the dungeon. Um, it's like, in terms of like raw movement, it's like 4 minutes to left past 4.30 for the right side. So it's like, well, it's literally just cut the dungeon length in half. Thank you, Sid. Well done. Awesome. Uh, you can also do that in, in a couple other places that I feel like I should mention. Uh, Treasure Isle, there's uh, a log right near the end where you can, can do it. This is all on the, the Golden Sun wiki, by the way. The um, community wiki, goldensunwiki.net, not the fandom one. That one is not up to date at all. Um, yeah, there's all the clips on like Treasure Isle, Animos in the Sanctum, and where's the other one? I forget where the other one is. There's one more that's quite useful. Ah, uh, it must be in... Um, in uh, Yampi Desert Cave, of course. Yep. Yeah. But we're not going to see any of those, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's another little, little Bowie... trick to sand here. Thanks for Bowie. Yeah, Bowie, yeah, Bowie pointed out if you move diagonally here, you go faster than if you move cardinally, which is one of those things where they didn't, they, like the two velocities or two speeds add together rather than calculating velocity, if you know what I mean. So like X and Y add together to make you go faster on a diagonal. They just didn't think to check for that, which is fine, I guess. Hell yeah. Sid and Bowie are probably like, what on earth is he doing? Why is he running from these things? It turns out all you need is level 20 on Felix and everything is fine. And I got that much earlier in the dungeon, I just didn't realize it. I assume the, your, the Adamant of Light will be just enough to level you up to, uh... Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. And this is the worst thing in the game to pick up. Um, there's a setup for it. Run left, run right, face up, and it's good work. Come on. Come on. It works sometimes. I'm right here. I'm right here. Oh, Thank the hitbox of the pedestal is so big compared to the hitbox of the Trident piece. It's, oh, it's a nightmare. Look, if there's a, if there's a remake of these games, that's the only thing I want to fix. I don't care about <laughs> anything else. I will deal with the gym and just fix the pedestal. Yep. <laughs> oi. All right, uh, you know, um, Alexa. we have a nice little cutscene here that uh, oh boy. <laughs> graciously fill us in on. Well, I have an anonymous... They don't have anything they written, but they donated $2,500. And that Ooh. is just amazing. But, uh, they didn't yeah. but I guess I guess sometimes, you know, actions speak louder than words. So thank you so much for that donation. We really do appreciate that. We have a $5 donation from Todd Berry GG that says, for the Dullahan train. We also have oh, a $100 donation from Little Debbie that says, So pumped to see Plexus and the Golden Sun at SGDQ. Best birthday gift a wee boy could ask for. Have a good. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, oh my gosh, we have a $25 donation from Emp, Emp, I, I'm sure I'm butchering this name. I'm so sorry. Emperor that says, Gimme Dullahan. Gimme Dullahan. Gimme Dullahan. Gimme Dullahan. Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! It's not stopping! Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! Gimme Dullahan! You know what to do, chats. I think that was very clear. It just kept going and going. to give them Dullahan. Can we confirm? Are they wanting Dullahan? What was that for? Are you sure? I mean... Yeah, can we just like... Can we just... We just confirmed with them. Can, I think yeah. it was a bit subtle, you know? Mm. <laughs> I'll make sure to, to, to keep an eye on that person, <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> Thanks so much, cheers. <laughs> and uh, we have a $250 donation from Rainfall that says, had to donate for one of my favorite games of all time. Glad to see Plexa back at GDQ. And come on, everyone, let's get that Dullahan fight. Yay, we do want that fight. We already, like, we kicked it up already. We're at 36 we're getting there. 
but I know we can make it happen. So we'll keep on with the, with the, if you want to do a $5 train, if you want to do a $10 train, whatever you guys can do, let's make it happen, okay? Plot is happening. Yeah, okay. plot tends to happen in this game. <laughs> yeah. Basically, all you need to know is Barbie died and those were the baddies. Oh. Cool. Oh no! So boo! Boo the baddies! I feel bad because I have not, I have only played the first game, so I feel horrible. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. At least I know oh, what Lord. happened. <laughs> yeah. But the lore is that the, uh, the girl, the girl baddie is the sister of the baddie from the first game. And she's kind of grumpy that, that the sister was killed, so she's out on a vengeance spree. Yes. I but she likes us okay. for now, but she will eventually betray us because uh. yeah, we're very betrayable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always happens. Uh, we finally met up, up with Alex as well. It's been a while since we met up with him. He uh, he started off quite early into the game, and we're finally catching up. He's been doing he's been doing his own thing. It's very clear that Alex has his own goals in mind here, but he's happy with us just uh, cracking on. Um, we will bump in to Briggs once again, and he, in all his uh, infinite uh, machismo and and confidence, runs away. So we have to go and uh, find him. He's hiding with his grandmother, being like, don't let the bad man get me. <laughs> Come on, Briggs. Pirate captain here. What are you going to do? Captain of his bath, love, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. I really want someone to do some found out of like Briggs with like, a rubber ducky, just like oh, playing yes. pirates in like, a bath. Being like... <laughs> All right, matey. Oh, jeez. Oh, that would be... Okay. So yeah, a little bit of setup right here. Uh, you're once again going to be yeah. making good use of summons, and um, Jenna is going to be uh, throwing a nice heal in there at some point because she, she actually now that she has four uh, Martians, she has access to the Aura uh, line of synergy, which are a nice heal. And other than that, we are setting up in order to uh, cast some sleepy spells. So we have Waft, the gin that is uh, has the ability to maybe put something to sleep and the, the force of synergy sleep and you might think sleeping a boss hmm well if you've seen the uh, golden sun one run at hdq you will not be so surprised because just like kraken yeah, adam and there it's a little sleepy he's a little sleepy boy yeah, he, it is vulnerable to sleep but they actually patched it in tla they gave bosses actually reasonable luck values so it's a long shot whether we sleep or not but it's it happens enough that it's worth going for even if we don't get it we need the damage anyway and there's no better way to do it yeah, it's not, it's not a mandatory oh, thing, it's one of those things that, wow. Well, yeah, it's I not mandatory. Okay, cool. That's fine. Well, just, just get Waft sleep. Oh, never mind. Wow, I'm, I'm so surprised <laughs> it didn't work. What happened? Huh. <laughs> That's really strange. Oh, well. Um, yeah. But it's okay. So he's going to sit there and do like 14 million damage with heat stun. Um, fire Blast, yeah. So, I mean, this is on the off turn, just going to pop an aura and just defend up, I guess. Um, just to get yeah, the, the only thing I'm worried so about this fight, the only thing I'm worried about is heat stun. Thank you. Uh, and if it actually works on somebody, if it works on somebody, we have a problem. Uh, if it doesn't work on anybody, we're okay. Um, so far, so good. Just gonna get through one more turn. And that second turn was very much just to get some gin recoveries in there and just survive until then. So then, then you. And then. Spring. Yeah, so Shade will come back last, and then we'll be able to use Shade again. I'm pretty sure. Willow. Oh, no, it, it's already up. Ne never mind me just talking. And we're using yeah, Cockney we there instead of Thor, because we don't need the extra damage or the animation. Yeah, we also proc the resistance drop, which is something you'd do in a manipulated run, because resistance is kind of like the, the stat that determines how much damage summons will do. Um, it is meaningless here because we can't plan on it reliably, but it's nice to get. Nice to point out. Shoutouts to Sawa, making the Zero Light Serpent a reality in, uh, in oh, any yeah. extent. Mm. Anyway, that was, that was the Abbey Manta fight. Um, usually it's fine like that, but it does have enough nasty stuff that it can ruin your day. Um, it's, it's certainly not a boss you expect to make you feel sad, but it does. Um, Bowie can attest to this. I saw him brutally get murdered by the Avimanda on, on one unfortunate run. Mm. Um, it's just a thing. Yeah. I think when you get, like, stun, stun killed, it's one of those things where you're like, I always pick it up, up an elixir, it's worth it. 
just and yeah, he 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 he's not like that hard, but it can just go south. And, yeah, I'm not a fan. But Chorcha, who is uh, Briggs's very headstrong and much cooler wife than him, um, is like, stop being a baby. <laughs> stop being a baby. They're not they're not here to fight you and hurt you. <laughs> Please. And uh, he decides it's actually a good idea to. Um, you know, just let it's fine okay fine I'll, we'll leave it um, we, obviously what we're, all we're doing is just trying to find you know how to get through Poseidon and it turns out that Obaba here this this well here is actually a forge it's an ancient forge that um, the champions have and Obaba is like this awesome you know uh, blacksmith of sorts and will allow us to uh, use our trident pieces to forge the trident once again so yeah about like an hour and a half ago or an hour ago, we were an hour and twenty, or yeah, you know, yeah, an hour twenty. Um, we, you know, got the boat and off we go. And after about an hour and twenty, we are ready to go. Um, so three pieces. We come here last. Where's one one piece? You can say yes or no to uh, trusting her with them. Doesn't matter. The same result happens. But I one one way she goes thank you, and the other one she goes it's fine. And the way that you can speed this whole thing up is that um, she doesn't actually check to see what trident piece is being handed to her, so you could hand her three left prongs. So if we could ever duplicate prongs, then we would just give her three of the same piece and it would skip probably sand, which would be amazing. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> For now, we just get the tridents and go fight for some. The fun thing about the Trident, though, is that it pops up bang in the center and doesn't go anywhere. And so you're like, okay, how are you going to go and do do that? Well, we're going to pop the reveal energy, and she's not at all perturbed by that. <laughs> what are you standing on? Yeah, you, don't, you don't need to know. To be fair, okay, there's a giant that. magic forge that erupts into giant flames. I wouldn't be perturbed by much if I had that to my availability. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. All okay, right. so, so we're going to be... One of the, the worst yeah. but most technical dungeons of the game. Yeah. Um, we have the Sea of Time, which... Movement in the Sea of Time is really frustrating. And there are a bunch of little optimizations you can do, just like skip bits and pieces. Um, I go for all of them, and it makes the dungeon kind of precise, which is... For a dungeon with really awful movement, is not really the kind of thing you want to do. Like, precise tricks with awful movement usually don't mix well. Uh, mix well. So we'll see how we go. Uh, just the vibes in Sea of Time are so down as well. They're, they're very fitting. It, yeah, well. it's quite a... It's quite a, like a... a um... It makes you really want yeah, to not yeah, be yeah. there. Yeah, it's <laughs> like it remind really... you, guys, guys. Does it remind you at all of a watery grave by any chance? Oh, ho, 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 yes. Ho, 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 ho. Yes. That uh, was very well played. That was masterful. That was very good. It's also um, in the the song that was the kids sing in in Gallum, which is what yes. you're supposed to find out. There are like. Follow the path, or you end up in a watery grave. It's like, okay, cool. If I follow the path, I'm going to end up in a watery grave anyway. So what's the point? Yeah. Oh well. We to go to the stars, to the stars. Um, yeah, I, I think it's kind of fun though. It's it's, like, it's not that difficult or hard or anything, but it's you know it's just a little bit of fun of a dungeon. Um, quite small. It's just it's just building. It's just building like the anticipation to fight the boss. Like who is this scary, scary beast we're going to be going up against? Um, but there's some cool things you some cool things you can do to like speed it up. The idea is that you want to spin around these uh, little volcanoes in a certain amount of times uh, in order to kind of stop the flow of water. And then we can actually go straight up here and it's completely fine. Um, and uh, yeah, Generally you want to avoid the rivers, but that particular river is fine for some yeah. reason. Just goes there, Help, actually helps us out a little bit. But all the other ones is like, don't touch the lava. If you touch them, you get what we call the cutscene of shame. If I get it in this run, I don't know what, how I'll live with myself, honestly. Now, no, no jinxing yourself here, mate. It's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, the, the next boss fight coming up is Poseidon. Poseidon is a big boy, um, and he is the fight of the run, pretty much. So um, obviously, we'll let Plex uh, focus on that one. Um, but there's a lot of setup that we need to do, and a lot of set of things that we need to have right. So we picked up the festival coat earlier in in Izumo. Uh, that does have an increased, um, I believe, uh, water resistance. 
um, which is kind of luck. very uh, luck, luck. Sorry, luck, yes, um, which, is, which is very very helpful in terms of like the luck stat is also kind of like based on resistance to like stage state ailments, so it can prevent things like getting one shot. Um, I think it's like 40 is the cap or, or, something, or something like when you get like quote unquote resistance uh, or like immunity. Um, but yeah, so the main thing is that what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get a, uh, a buff onto Felix so that his um, attacks, his Megiddos and his usage of Trident deals him enough damage. Jenna is going to be dropping as many, um, you know, summons as she can. So she's going to go, she's going to open up with Meteor. Um, we've set this up so um, that she goes after Felix has to go because in order to do deal damage to Poseidon, he has to have no shield. Now, the, the trident itself breaks the shield, so having Felix go first with the trident breaks the shield, and then Jenna can use her summon and get into the fight. Um, and you can see we've got the certain um, Jin in certain ways that so we have set, um, like spells coming back at the right time. Here's the save. Best of luck, mate. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do. First off, Watery Grave is an AOE damage that also has a chance to insta-kill. Ocean Fist is single target that can reduce our characters to one HP. He has Ice Horn, he has Flywell, he has Counter Rush. All the kinds of things that are just going to make it really, really bad. So opening, we're going to go Meteor Trident. Um, we're going to use Wish Well immediately, as well as um, the impact onto Felix. There's Counter Rush. So every attack that we deal will be countered, and this sucks. Um, because uh, the heal should come out before um, Jenna's turn, so she's going to be a little bit low, I think, um, if I'm not, not mistaken. So yeah, that's going to come out first. There's Wishwell, and now Jenna's going to be in danger. <laughs> so not the strongest start, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, it's a shame, because Jenna's really the one that you don't want to be in danger, because if you die with Jenna, then you will lose all of the firepower that you just built up from your summon. Oh, jeez! So, um... Uh, okay. Oof, it's okay. okay. That's fine. So turn two, we're going to summon a Mercury, we're going to use Wishwell, then we're going to use Shade. So we get Shade, then it's immediately brought back. It's immediately into recovery. So counter rush, not so bad, because we have Shade, shade up. Shade is a 60% damage reduction to any damage going out. This is a good start, considering the fact that it went that way. So Jenna will take a bit more damage here, but she is shade, shade, Shaded here. It's going to be a little bit better off. Typhoon Blow to Jenna target, that's not ideal. She's in danger now. Um, so because we want to be aggressive here, so it's going to be Kindle, it's going to be um, Char, Char as well, Wish Well once again, and then we're going to um, reflux onto uh, Felix. If Felix get, gets attacked, he will capture. That, that's on Jenna. And there goes Jenna. She's dead. See you, Jenna. All right. Yep. Off script time. Off script time. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the point when you don't know what you're doing and you have to try and just try and work it out. Um, Typhoon. Ooh, bloody Nora. Um, Shades back. We have to water. We oh. I think, ooh, okay, uh, there was oh, a... I, I didn't do the thing, I didn't do the yeah. thing. Okay, that's gonna be fun. Uh, let me double check, let's have a Shiva. that. Do you have the... You do, okay. Mm -hmm. This might be tricky. Um, breath. Uh, five. No, you've oh, got no, 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 yeah, yeah. He's like first on himself, yeah. And, um, shade as well, yeah. <laughs> safe, safe, safest way to go about yeah. it. Not much you can really do here. We need to keep Shiva up at this point. Attack on Felix is a good start. Good first. Ice missile. That's painful, but it's good. It's the best of, of, of a bad bunch. Out comes the heels again once more. I'm gonna bring back. That's a good start. Really good start. If we can get everyone everyone back to full health and alive, that's very, very lovely. This is a no damage turn, so nothing coming out of that counter reflux. <laughs> Watery grave though, will it proc? All right. All right. No problem. We're good. targeting of Jenna though, but it's okay. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, I'll be fine. Which well, and we have Shade back again. This is a this is a this is a, a really good choice by Flexa to uh, rather than summon the Ginny, just bring it straight back, which is something you can do, which is obviously very very helpful. Uh, Kindle will be a nice um, upgrade for all of our attacks. Hopefully, Felix can do some bit, do some big damage with Wheeze. Oh jeez, man. He is going in on water and grapes. Okay. Well, okay. No, 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 uh, okay, we're gonna bring back Shade, yeah. So yeah, this Shade, is playing this Shade is playing on a counter rush turn, yeah. 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 Well it's counter rush turn because Patty is reasonable. Yeah, yeah. 
His first turn is, is semi pan. Oh, he's pan. He say he's a semi pan character. His first turn is kind of like on a set, but um, his second turn is just whatever. That's a really really nice dodge, but please. Oh my oh, god, he's, he is oh. going in. Uh, actually, I, I prefer that. Just winning the fight is more important than having everybody alive. So here's where haze is. Haze is useful. Um, haze can be used to make someone immune to everything. So. If there's any targeting on her, she's going to be fine. Wish world to come out. You get her good Meg kill. Eater. That's nice. Does kill her. Very nice. Nice. There we go. nice. <laughs> that was nice. Recovery. very good recovery. Yeah. <laughs> good job, Lexa. Very well I have experience in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we actually even created a, uh, a joke category around this called the Watery Grave Run, where you get to you get to Poseidon and die as quickly as possible. Oh, God. It yeah. happens way too fast sometimes. But the fact that we have saw that many Watery Graves and no procs is unbelievably lucky. <laughs> so, I, um, yeah. yeah. What Bowie is saying is, is more true than he knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we are just going to go back into the ship here. Once we get into Lemuria, we're going to be getting the Mist Potion. And we're thinking that's quite a long ways out of the way just to get one potion. And uh, you would be correct. And we are once again going out of our way to get something for Moapa because we do not meet the stat check, so we need other options. <laughs> yeah, we failed the stat check, so we must cheat. This is cheating right here, this is Mist Potion. And you can just retreat out. Also, everybody donated for this wonderful cutscene where Kraven gets angry, so. We'll hold off on the donations while we get through the next cutscene because that's where the Korean gets angry thing happens. But then we've got the rest of Lemuria, so what's that? Give yeah. take 15 minutes? Yeah, Lemuria is a big lore dump, and uh, there is one cutscene we do want to go through because it's very critical to the narrative of this game. <laughs> and when we get inside the castle, but until we're inside the castle, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, full on with the uh, with the donation train. Let's get that yeah, hand incentive met. So the point here is that we've said no strategically to a bunch of text boxes or yes no's in the game. Um, most people don't know this, but if you say no to at least four of these, there's like seven opportunities, I think, and if you say no at least four of them, saying no to a question in this cutscene will make uh, Kraden exceptionally mad at you. Uh, Bowie, can I ask you to narrate Kraden for me? Of, of course, yes. get there? <clears throat> of course. Wonderful. So these are Lemurians. Uh, the whole point of the first game was trying to get to Lemuria because Barbie's like, I need immortality because, uh, spoiler alert, Barbie is also a jerk. Not quite as bad as the other from there, but he's pretty bad. Um, and this is Lemuria. We made it. Isaac didn't. Uh, we get to find the secrets for quote-unquote immortality and alchemy and all that jazz. Um, but they're, they're impressed because we used Move, which <laughs> is kind of cool, I guess. They're a Mercury it's something lot. about Mercury. Mercury addicts are impressed by move for some reason. So <laughs> Mia in, in the first game, Pierre's in this game, and this lot in, at this point. <laughs> being very careful not to mash past the text box. Shall we let them in? I beseech you. All right, here it is. Bowie, you're up. <clears throat> OK. What? Are you insane? Or maybe you think you're funny because you're not. Maybe this whole quest is just, just a game to you, but it's not to me. Are you bored? Do you want to go home? Fine, that's it. Then let's go home, yes? <laughs> so that's the secret cutscene. Uh, we're trading gets angry. <laughs> thank you, Bowie. <laughs> Sorry, just thank you. Good job. <laughs> Cheers for letting um, me do that. <laughs> wonderful. And, if you say yes to that text box with the trade encounter sufficiently high, he says, oh, good, I thought you were going to say no for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, that, that's one thing I remember seeing as well. I was like, oh, God, there we go. That, that's the even lesser known trade in cutscene, but it's way less funny. <laughs> All right, uh, we're just going to do some gambling. Don't, don't mind me. Um, is, but is it really gambling if you know you're going to win? I don't know. 
Um, but they all say Plex, so you have a problem. That is called counting cards. <laughs> or please, sir, <laughs> leave my establishment. Um, <laughs> yes, we picked up this lucky medal out of bounds at, at uh, Yampi Desert a while ago. We threw it into the middle of this fountain, and if you do that, you guaranteed get this summon called Eclipse. This is the only optional summon we get in the game. It is the highest damage to gen efficiency ratio in the game, aside from Iris, which we may see, depending if you meet the incentive or not. Uh, it's just busted. Um, yeah. <laughs> it also helps but that yeah. it's uh, predominantly Jupiter, because uh, basically everything from this point onward is weak to Jupiter for some reason. Not That's everything, but basically everything. And now, we're into the cutscene gauntlet of death, so Edo, you're up. Oh boy, uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that right now we're at $37,638 for the Dolahan Superboss. We need to make it happen. Make sure you guys are sending in those donations and make sure you are selecting the incentive so we can make it happen. I know we can do it. We have a... Whew, we have a five dollar donation from Atelier TM that says Plexa, more like Flexa. Come on, people, <laughs> let's make this legend kill Dullahan. <laughs> we also have a, another twenty five dollar donation from Sunny Muffin that says, "Good luck on the run, Plexa. Thanks for all you do for the Golden Sun community." Hey, Sunny. Uh, recent convert from uh, Octopath Traveler. Thank you for uh, joining the Better RPG. No, I love Octopath oh, 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 RPG. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna get crucified for that. I really genuinely like Octopath's game, so please yeah. don't hate me. It's a good okay. game. <laughs> Team Tressa. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> wow, no okay, problem. okay. <laughs> it's okay to throw. I guess I have a little shade every now and then. <laughs> we have a ten dollar donation from Anonymous that says, "I know almost nothing about Golden Sun, but this run has been the highlight of my morning. Donating for that super boss." So we can keep the run going. We also have a $25 donation from Aether Shane. Says Golden Sun, The Lost Age is one of my favorite games of all time. Can we get a $5 train to get that Dolahan fight? Here's my five tickets. <laughs> Mark Golden Sun is worth it. I agree. Oh gosh, we have a $5 donation from Boots that says. I'm sure you can dull a handle the boss. I'll say myself out. <laughs> just, just a quick MSF plug. Um, we're finding out that Piers's mother has died from an unfortunate heart condition in a place of near immortality. Things might have been different if MSF existed in this world. So shout out to all the work that they do. They could have saved Piers's mother. Please continue. <laughs> oh no problem. Yeah, that was so sad. <laughs> it's very sad. It is. He's about to run off to the graveyard. Goodbye, Piers. We have a $5 donation from the Paladin Breakstar that says we must duel the Dullahan. Yes, we do. Oh my gosh, there's so many. We have a $25 donation from Blue that says gotta see that Dullahan. Yes, we do. Ooh, Cabbage donates $100 that says Dullahan fight? Give. Oh gosh, we have a $25 donation from Tim and Paul that says, Edo Bean has convinced me to put this donation to the Golden Sun Dullahan Incentive. Great job on the run and commentary, and thanks again to everyone involved in putting together this wonderful event. Tyler Salt donates $5 that says, this donation is specifically in honor of Plexa's menuing, which frankly gives me feelings I should probably unpack. Donation goes to the Dullahan fight. Say donates $50 that says I had to donate during the run. I was looking forward to the most. I try to catch Plexa practicing his runs when I can. I know he's just gonna kill it. Definitely have to put this towards Dullahan. Best of luck. And Jonah, thank you so much for your $25 donation that says Arjic and Edo Bean commentating the same fantastic run. Dullahan incentive. Can I get a hype in chat? Hype. <laughs> so that's the uh, canon way to say it during GDQ. We're, right? we're bringing the audience with us. We're trying in spirit. Oh, by the way, Eight. this is Lunpa. Oh. Sorry, just quickly. This is Lunpa. He's no, really, good. really old, but he looks really, really young. 
This is kind of like, <laughs> this is what happens when you stay in Lemuria for a long, long time. Because Babi, uh, or Babi, or Babai, how you want to say it, is an old ass man. Um, but Lunpo is not, <laughs> despite the fact that they're roughly, they came to Lemuria at the same time. Um, so this is kind of the magic of Lemuria in action. Continue, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I love learning plot and lore, so don't feel bad. Uh, Snow Cone uh, donates fifty dollars. That's a smash that dolly, Plexa. <laughs> we also have a one hundred dollar donation from Echo the Blue that says, "Woke up at five a.m. to make sure I wouldn't miss this." Thanks so much, Plexa, Bowie, Sid, and the entire Golden Sun community for all the memes and memories over the years for croissants in Lumeria and the Dullahan fight. Croissants sounds really good right now. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get croissants. <laughs> Scott Brown donates $25 that says Golden Sun. More like Golden Run. <laughs> Thanks for everything. $50 from Abel65 that says I'm at work but had to donate during Golden Sun. Let's get that Dullahan fight. I want to come back later to see that we met that incentive. Let's see where we're at now. Right now, we're almost at 40,000. We are so close. So close, yes, so please, close. please, viewers. I know you can do it. You guys are so amazing. You make so many wonderful things happen and it's all for a great cause. So keep it in with those donations, okay? Wait, am I still good to go? Or? <laughs> you are still good to you are. This is Lemuria, you got time. <laughs> yeah, you this got is it. the <laughs> lore dump of the game. There's so much this, lore this being like dumped. The, for all the cutscenes we skipped at the beginning, like this is like the entire plot of the game in one area. It's like, okay, well, fine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. All right, we have a $250 donation from Just In Time VZ. I said, did someone say Dullahan? I want some Dullahan. <laughs> All right, we'll try to get you that Dullahan. <laughs> we also have a $25 donation from Drew, a conclusion that says we interrupt this broadcast <laughs> for a surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just, oh, yeah. it'll, it'll never, it'll never leave me. <laughs> it will never leave you, Edo. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. gonna be like, SQDQ 2073. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Like back just in my quickly, day. Very quickly. Yeah. Uh, this is the map of Wayard. Well, soon at least. Yeah. Uh, um, and when I first played this game as a kid, I, I genuinely thought my my GBA was broken because well the, the the cartridge was broken because the ancient map here didn't look like a map as far as I could tell. Um, so in honor of that occasion, this is the ancient map. I had a special commission made to represent the map. This is the special question. Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> a croissant. <laughs> oh, may we, may we. Uh, <laughs> so, what's essentially happening here is like this is, a, a, the, this is the map of the world that Lunpa brought with him, and this is the map of the world that the Lemurians have, and he's showing it side by side that we have a, a croissant and no croissant. Uh, croissant, no croissant. Essentially, um, because of the fact that when the lighthouses were, um, you know, um, shut off and the powers of alchemy locked away using the elemental stars, Wayard slowly began to die. The power of alchemy waned and Wayard couldn't, su uh, couldn't support itself as so slowly it's been, it's been breaking away, falling apart and the, um, the, the great fools out the edge have slowly been making their way in. Wayard is in danger. Um, and so actually it turns out that what we were going happening in Golden Sun 1 was in fact incorrect by s trying to stop Saturus and Manali by lighting the lighthouses, we were letting Wayard slip slowly, inexorably towards its doom. However, with Felix, we now know the truth that we actually what we want to do is relight the light of the lighthouses, let alchemy flow back into Wayard and stop it from dying. Man, ancient map. Man, ancient Wayard was sure tasty, but yeah. thank you for that commission. I really appreciate it. That, right, that, so that is the short version of this cut. That's the short version of this cut scene. That the world used yeah. to be a lot tastier. <laughs> <laughs> Less buttery now. Less buttery. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you wanna, if you, if you have, have some more, Edo, and then. Uh, oh, I more. have a lot. Keep going. We, we got some <laughs> oh, yeah, So many. We have a uh, one hundred and seven dollar donation from Pia Cadet. I'm. I don't. Uh, 
Words are so difficult. <laughs> it's so much fun watching Plexa run this amazing game, being accompanied by the commentators and such a great host. Wishing all a great GDQ, and let's see that Dullahan fight. Yes, let's make it happen. Oh boy, we have a... <laughs> We have a $25 donation from Kido Radra that says two hours until the marble with the screaming Dolan in its head. Let's see how scrambled we can get the reference before then. Here's another $25 towards the fight. Just for all our Pacific friends just waking up and catching this run, go watch the marbles run. It was really, really, really good. <laughs> that's that's the reference. Anyway, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> no problem. Oh boy. $250 from Regehead that says, had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time. And Drake also donates $250 that says, here's something extra for all those who couldn't make the dono train. Carp, uh, Carpe Diem uh, donates $25 that says, maybe the number of glitches in Golden Sun explains why I was never able to beat it <laughs> as an eight-year-old. <laughs> At least that's what I'm telling myself. Good luck on the run, and here's hoping for Dullahan. Oh, boy. Rocket Game donates $10 that says, hey, Plexa, awesome to watch you at SGDQ and hope everyone watching is enjoying the run as well. Also, big shout-out to Shop Girl, as Shop Girl is best girl. Agreed. Oh boy, <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> ah, there's so many. It's overwhelming. Uh, Farinox oh, donates $15 that says, I can't believe how much swag you packed into the speed room. $10 from La Charis. Thank you so much for the consistent fun runs and the great cause of the event. Let's get that Dullahan encounter, folks. Let me double check. Real quick, we are at $41,834. We're getting there. We Slowly, have two dungeons sure. left. Two, two, dungeons dun left. two dungeons left. So remember, two dungeons, we got to make that Dolahan happen. I know we can do it. I know we, <laughs> we can. Are, sorry, we got to make that Dolahan. <laughs> oh, everybody gets one. Let's everybody go. gets one? Everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll mute for the Bowie, rest I'd like of this to ask you to leave <laughs> the commentary team at this mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Uh, no, thank I you. Bowie, <laughs> Bowie will okay, be Bowie. replaced by a buttery croissant uh, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. the remainder of the run. Mm. We'd probably give more insightful <laughs> commentary than I. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Andrew, by the way. He's our resident French uh, Golden Sun speedrunner. He educated me on the correct way, or the, the correct regionality of a uh, pain au chocolat. Apparently, there's a region in France where I'll, I'll get crucified for saying that, where it should be a chocolatine instead. Um, thank you for that factoid, Legrand. I will never forget it. And now we need to do it. I always feel bad. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm interrupting. No, you're good. Go <laughs> We have a $5 donation from Conical Flack that says, Death had to donate after that Poseidon fight. Plexa is the only Golden Sun runner that could recover that fight. Insane. <laughs> I agree. That was a crazy fight. I was uh, yeah, I was getting I worried. <laughs> I, I, I have a habit of finding myself in horrible positions and having to work my way out of them. Like, I, I did a 15-hour series playthrough over the weekend. Just why not? Um, <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a horrific situation on the Fusion Dragon in the first game, and like everyone's like, well, you're dead. I'm like, actually, if I do this, this, and this, and this, I might win. And I got out of the situation. It was... The sheer uh, amount of Gordon's Sun knowledge in his man's head is crazy. That's where the shine in your glasses go in and be like, actually. <laughs> the anime glasses uh, push. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> we have a $5 donation from Pumpkin. Mm -hmm that says, I dulla have to see that boss battle. Sorry if my puns are bad. I just lose my head whenever I try to think of one. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we also got a $500 donation from Mr. Horrible. You're not horrible if you're donating that much. They say, why is it called Dullahan if everyone's so hype about it? Whatever the case, I gotta see it. So we are getting into the Western Sea, which is like the whole point of this game. It's been teasing you the entire time. Like, there's this one little thing we have to use grind to get through. 
You can only get grown from the Murray so you basically spend the entire game chasing this one thing so you can access to the Western Sea, where the other lighthouses are, which is kind of the point of the game. Um, yeah. It should be noted that we are, like, we have gone the full length of the entire Golden Sun 1 speedrun and it's in a single lighthouse, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's also worth yeah. pointing out that I did write a 150-page guide for this game. It is literally a book and it's very high quality, if I do say so myself. Two weeks after I finished writing it, I rerouted this portion of the game, so apologies, <laughs> I need to update my book. <laughs> oh, damn. That is... Yeah. It's always good, isn't it, when you spend all that time. Because you also did the guide, the video guide for, for Golden Sun 1, and then there's obviously, you had, you had to recently do, like, a full addendum, didn't you? Like, this, by I the way, all of this, update, yeah. 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 Of yeah, most like... of it's still accurate, so it's fine. It's, it's good enough to get runners going. Anyway, the, the realization was that running in this part of the ocean is slightly faster than taking encounters, despite what it may look like. Um, it's, it's just they take too long to clear otherwise, which is just very sad. But I need to not do that. To be um, fair, it's probably a good idea to save this version of the book as a beginner-friendly version, because it's, it's a lot yeah, safer, will, it's enough. I, I'm not getting rid of the book, I'm making it exactly. an update to the book. But. That's good. Um, but this actually made me really depressed, um, because I realized that fleeing was faster through the entirety of the rest of the game, save for the final dungeon. And I don't know about everybody, but if you're just running away from everything, it's just kind of less interesting, because I'm, I'm not even thinking, like, oh, cool encounter, I'm gonna run away. Um, but then I had a brilliant idea um, that actually ended up being faster, and we'll show that off in Jupiter Lighthouse, which very, very slightly is faster than just running away from everything. Um, but other than that, there's going to be a lot of running in this part of the game. Poseidon is well and truly the roadblock in this run. Um, everything we do is for getting past Poseidon, and then the extra stuff we pick up, well, it gets around Moapa's stat check. If we had actual proper levels of Moapa, we wouldn't need any of that stuff, but we don't have actual proper levels. We have these levels, which is like 19, I think? 19, 20? About that. Yeah. Something like that. This is going to be a quite... This is going to be a really interesting bit as well because we're going to have a bit of a strange change in how a couple of places actually work. So you may have noticed as we've been going through this that most of the time we've been doing retreat glitches and the, and the like in dungeons. Um, well, funnily enough, we are going to be going through a cave into a village. And wouldn't you know, the cave has no retreat glitches, but the village does. Um, a very strange thing happened where um, they kind of like swapped around the property or like this kind of like this base property of both of the uh, the cave and the village of the Shaman Village Cave and Shaman Village itself. So the village is kind of coded in as a dungeon and the cave isn't. So it makes it very weird to get through the cave because there are no gin ticks on running around the cave because it's meant to be a village. And the, the and then you get you get all of all, all, all of like the, the ticks and stuff back in the, the actual village itself. But it does mean that we can do some cool stuff in Shaman Village and actually allows for some pretty cool skips that we can do when, when we get there. In the meantime, whilst I've been talking about that, this fight against this other um, world map Ginny is, uh, has gone down. This is Petra. Petra is the, uh, the TLA version of Ground, which is a priority Ginny that when used, stops an opponent getting their turn. This is huge. Um, and we actually get both ground as well, so we can actually stop two turns, or two characters, or two enemies' turns, or consistently roll turns being stopped over and over again, which is a, a funny thing I bring that up, but it might be relevant later, who knows. Um, but yeah, Petra is grabbed and will be very, very integral to completing the upcoming boss fight. As Plexa mentioned, Moappa is a stat check, we don't have those stats, and Petra will make sure that we can do that. So Shaman Village Cave. Um, Again, if you do try and summon him, you won't get any, any ticks back, so it's kind of tricky. And as I mentioned all the way back at Aqua Rock, Plexa grabbed the Synergy Crystal to restore the, the, the PP for everyone in, in his party. And it's pretty much been set up so that when we get to this point, um, Felix will run out of PP. He's currently got 27 here, um, and he'll be able to heal down the rest of it. So all of that um, play up until this point to get into re Retreat Clip. Uh-oh. That is not the rare. second oh. encounter. Hmm. That's rare. Yeah. And that is some please. Thank Ooh. You. I... Made it through. I have That's died fine. and gone back to the Maria before. It's not a pleasant experience. There we go. Let's just say that was for getting Felix into the proper PP range. That's Totally planned. 
pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, there's no retreat glitches here, but we're gonna go straight into uh, the, the meat of this. We're gonna run down these stairs. We're gonna then do the retreat spell. It's gonna fail. We're gonna run through this door to get to the right-hand side. On the bottom side, we can move this pillar. Um, at which point we'll probably do an immediate retreat glitch once again to pop into a uh, into a house. We're gonna run down uh, up the stairs, retreat glitch, run down the stairs, and we'll be exactly where <laughs> the genie was that we just turned. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, the, the lore of this place is that they closed the outsiders, so every building is locked, so you're not supposed to be able to access any of those buildings anyway. You can't just walk into them, so all of those retreat glitches are 100% necessary. Anyway, that was fun. Oh yeah, and at the very beginning of Golden Sun 1, Ivan picked up a Shaman's Rod. And at the end of Golden Sun 1, we handed that Shaman's Rod over to Felix and Sheba. So we've had this Shaman's Rod the entire game. We raise it aloft, and at last it leaves our bloody inventory. <laughs> catch him, catch him. Oh, that's a Zarya Tower, such a track. Yeah, it's good. A banging tune, I believe the kids say these days. Do the kids say that? I'm sorry. I can, I, don't I, can know. I can feel myself aging, so I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. okay, well, if anyone can. is saying it, indeed, it is lit. Right, yes, of course. That <laughs> is a banging tune. One would call it lit, yes. <laughs> Shout out to Bowie. He did a run earlier. This marathon it was really, really good. The, the okay. deed lit Lodos. <laughs> it's got a very long title. What's, what's the yeah. title? Record of Lodos War, Deed Lit in Wonder Labyrinth. But, uh, yeah. So Deed Lit, very you. good. I'm glad you liked it. Thank Deedlet. you. Very, very kind of you. Um, speaking of ama amazing runs, though, we're about, what is it, four hours into one? Three, yeah, 353 yeah, three into a, 350 three odd into a pretty damn good run. Going very well. Uh, this is cool. Um, actually, uh, Sid, if you want to take this one, because this one's pretty... Pretty nice. Oh yeah, yeah. this is, this is going to be pretty fun. So upcoming we have Trial Road, which uh, if you remember the first game, it's kind of like Colosso, where you just kind of race against uh, the other team and uh, we uh, uh, until you get to the end. And you go through a whole bunch of puzzles and, well, first off, he's going to give you a tutorial for that. He's going to explain you everything about Trial Road. And, uh, well, we don't really like tutorials. I think we've made that very clear. Flint, we don't like tutorials. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. And, fortunately, we have to retreat glitch. This is another nice side effect of the fact that we can retreat in Shaman Village. So we, after this cutscene, go into the retreat glitch. And the retreat glitch doesn't actually have to be on yourself uh, going through a screen transition. It can just be someone else triggering a screen transition for you. In this case, it is going to be these two knights who are going into Trial Road to do the tutorial. So they're going to walk through the door, we're going to pop into the Sanctum, do a couple more retreat glitches to uh, get back to where we want to be faster. O only slightly faster, but still. 0.5. And, yeah. and uh, just like that, we have skipped the tutorial and can now do Trial Road. And Trial Road in and of itself is also very interesting. This is the last remaining reason uh, why we use this specific name for Felix, or another another name which gives the same set of puzzles, because the puzzles in Trial Road are random that you get. So we manipulate that we get all of the fastest puzzles on one of the two sides, and we just have to go pick, pick that specific side. Yes, so the, the whole reason why this is the faster name for 100% but not any percent is that it has the faster puzzles on the left side and not the right side. That means when we go do Trial Road a second time to get um, the gin at the back area, um, it's just significantly faster. Whereas getting them on the right side means you've got to run across the top again and it's just, it loses like 20 seconds or something to this name. So, yes, genuinely is an optimal name. I also need to point out that lore-wise, the whole reason we're doing this is that Moapa does not think girls are powerful. She's like, I cannot comprehend that the descendant of Yegalas is a woman and that she is powerful. I, I, I reject this thoroughly. Um, <laughs> Shiva so rolls the sleeves up. <laughs> it's incredibly fitting that Shiva is actually just going to carry this fight and just deal unfathomable amounts of damage to him. Um, so oh right, yeah. Shiva kicks some serious butt. She's a badass. <laughs> yeah, like, excuse me. Excuse me. What? <laughs> Come again, Moapa? Yeah. Woman bad, he says. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's really satisfying just to beat him up. 
One of the aspects of Trial Road, by the way, is that after you uh, clear a puzzle, you do have to leave one of your items behind. Uh, since we don't match the stat check, we're not going to bother using actual attacks with any, any physical attacks, so we're just going to dump all of our weapons in there, because wh why bother? As a matter of fact, we don't need any weapons on anyone, not even Felix. Let's just dump the Soul Blade, dump all of his attack stuff. We don't need it. Just get rid of it. And then set up Fortify and do it, do it like that. Yeah. We just get rid of everything while we're at it. Okay. So, uh, things to keep a note of, we have Mud, we have Petra, we have... Oh, no, no, right. The menu was kind laggy at this point. Yeah. Oh. And we <laughs> have Shade as well. <laughs> yeah, it's horrid. Yeah. So, we, um, Plexa picked up a Mist Potion in uh, the Lemurian ship when we first got to Lemuria. Uh, after we had Pipe, we can do that. So, when we uh, crack on with this fight, we're going to open up with Shade. Felix is going to use the Mist Potion. Um, and then we're going to have Mud go out on the first turn, and we're going to open up with a clip on the left-hand side. We're going to have to spread this damage very precisely. Shader so we don't get absolutely one turn wrecked by these moves, because they're very, very powerful. Um, so this is where we're going to use the Mist Potion, heal everyone up. On this second turn, we're going to try and dump as much damage into the left-hand side to kill it before it gets a turn. So, um, they're all um, slowed down with Mud, that halves their speed, so we're going to out-turn a, a bunch of them. So we're going to have uh, Judgment, I think, goes over to... Uh, sorry, uh, Meteor goes over to the left, I think. Judgment uh, cracks on in the center. Petra, Moappa, and then do another Eclipse. All that damage being put in will kill off the left knight. We've stunned Moappa so he doesn't get a turn. So the only enemy getting a turn on this one is going to be the right-hand side knight, who can still do something really annoying, but only one enemy is going to get a turn. If we don't kill off the left-hand knight and we don't stop Moappa, thanks for coming. He do. But... Knight should go down. There he goes. Now this next turn is just to set up strong hit. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> haze, fog, breath, and uh, blitz. In this turn here, all we're going to do is make sure that, that Shiva survives. So we're going to haze her, and then everything else is just going to be get your gin off. This is so that we have access to one final eclipse to win the fight. Haze means that she won't die. Uh, blitz comes out, and there's also going to be a fog, which is very, very lovely. Uh, of course. Oh well, she's alive. Never mind. No, uh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, Gemma. Um, and then Bosch. There we go. Uh, that, that. I mean, everyone can die, but as long as as long as um, Shiba survives, it's so only the right yeah. side. Yeah. It has to be Shiba that survives. So we put haze on her. Everybody else can die, and I've had them die. Also, this is the best track in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Just. It's so good. Oh my god! Every <laughs> single note. Just uh, this, this. To be fair. Like, Sakuraba peaked here. Absolute peak. Listen, yeah. But we should be in silence while we appreciate this track. Of course. Oh, mate, yeah, the tear to my eye. No, oh, now it's ruined. Okay. Oh, oh man, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame we don't get get to hear it for longer. Um, I know. <laughs> so, as Sid mentioned, obviously, when you do the retreat glitch for the, uh, skipping the trial road uh, tutorial, it actually kind of like changes up, up how some of the music triggers uh, play. This will be fixed at some point, but it'll always be like one track behind for a little bit. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun. Um, but a really cool thing that happened, and we should talk about this now because it'll be relevant later, you're probably wondering why we dropped extra items when we didn't need to in Trial Road. Well, Trial Road, what it actually does is when you're going into Trial Road, it's almost like an instance, if you will, where the game kind of makes a copy of everything that you have when you go into it. So everything that we used, obviously, because the whole mechanic is putting items into the chest, the game needs to give that back to you. So the way that it handles that is just by making a copy of your, inv of your inventory as you, as, you were, as you were when you go into it. So everything you use in Trial Road comes back. So that, that, that mist potion we used in battle returned to us. All the items that got dropped into the chest returned to us. The items that Felix dropped returned to us. So even though we dropped them, we still have them. The soul blade's still there, the war gloves, the thorn crown, it's all there. Lovely. There's a very interesting um, caveat to this, however, that when you drop those items during Trial Road, by dropping them, it actually makes it kind of, it, it makes the items go into the, um, 
relic pool of items that you can get, or like deals, or like the rare items. So we'll actually be able, able to grab those as we've actually managed to somehow duplicate them a little bit later. We'll see exactly how that works a bit later on. But we get all of our items back, and because of the copied inventory, we actually, we actually managed to duplicate any items we draw. Pretty sweet. Simply put, so blade goes brr. So good, so blade goes brr. Yeah. <laughs> Because we are eventually getting another character that can use the Soul Blade, so we are giving him one, and we are giving him all of the attack stat boosting items as well, and for good measure, just duplicate some Tide Crystals while we're at it to make it through the rest of the game comfy. A reminder as well that this next light, this next dungeon is the Jupiter Lighthouse. Um, nice little movement here, that will be relevant later. Um, the next dungeon is the Jupiter Lighthouse. After Jupiter Lighthouse, that is when we will be cutting off the Duller Hand incentives so we have five thousand to go this is your time to make it happen this last dungeon so this is definitely the uh the intended track here <laughs> and still definitely the intended track absolutely um so i mentioned that i did a big reroute and that fleeing was faster everywhere and i got sad well then i found this strategy that i'm about to do oh my god boat fleeing and continue that's so good yeah. right pick up this gin early and can go into the ninja class ninja class is super good because shuriken is busted Shuriken does 80% yeah. of your attack stat to three enemies. It doesn't have any diminishing returns or diminishing ratio on it. Uh, it's, yeah, not meant to be that good. They nerfed it in Dark Dawn, which is entirely fair, personally speaking, but whatever. Uh, we will make use of it while we still can. Yeah. Just grabbing that extra Ginny essentially means that one person can have six, and the ninja class is a tri-element class. Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. And by having six on one person, we can give that sixth Ginny to, uh, to Felix, who's now a ninja. And there's one thing we know, is, nin is ninjas are pretty cool. Um, and the whole thing about the, uh, the diminishing ratio, as, as, as you go, we mentioned it a bit earlier, but just in case there are people who joined in since then are a little bit unsure, um, the main target of your synergy will take the max damage, and then it, it, there's splash damage that gets less and less as, as it goes. But as you see there, Shuriken doesn't have that. Disgusting. It's very good. <laughs> I am so happy with this reroute. When you said Ninja and Jupiter, I, I, lit, I lit up. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't often like, have yeah, the time like... to... I don't often have the time to test stuff myself anymore, with this kind of stuff. With Ninja, I actually wanted to experience the testing myself and just set up the file for it. Oh, it's so good. What we, used, what we used to do was we used to use Eclipse and just Eclipse everything down, uh, and which is fine, you can do that. Um, but it's... It takes so long and things don't die and things are generally off. We'll, we'll need this later. Um, and uh, it's just that fleeing just was faster than clips and it was very sad. And then Ninja came along and uh, never been the same since. It's just been super fun to be shurikening things down. It actually makes the dungeon, dungeon kind of fun. Um, yeah, I like it. Kinda, because I still don't like it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's fine. <laughs> But yeah, in order to get a little bit of extra damage and just for those extra ranges, we did need a little bit of a better stat stick on Jenna though. So that's and why we ended up getting the, um, the Angelic Ang. Oh yeah, finally we've got the Jupiter Lighthouse too. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry about the music. It'll fix itself at the end of Jupiter Lighthouse. For the time being though, it's uh, going to be just uninterrupted it's Jupiter Lighthouse. It We'll point it out one more time, like right at the end of this dungeon, where it really adds to the ambiance. And if we get an encounter that ruins it, I'm going to be particularly mad at the encounter. And I will do everything in my power to deliver as much pain to it as possible. Anyway, um, good time for yeah. donations then, I think, probably. Yeah. Well, should we maybe explain um, something about these little blue fellas? Uh, if they come up, yeah, sure. If they come up, yeah, they might come up. We, we had one just now. And uh, they're a very interesting monster in the sense that their name does not fit, actually, in the amount of characters that are available for monster names, uh, at least when there's multiple of it. Because uh, when there's multiple, you're going to have like Devil Scorpion uh, 1, Devil Scorpion 2, Devil Scorpion 3. The numbers, they don't actually fit there, so it, um, they will not actually be visible, and instead that number will be written into the the part of the memory where their level is kept, which means that there are going to be extremely low level devil scorpions whenever there is multiples of them. So, the mess works out like this, right? 
Like, everything in here is level 28. Um, if you recall the math from earlier, that basically means we're not running from anything, and obviously it's very fast to close back now as well. Um, so the point here is that um, with two Devil Scorpions in play, their effective level gets half. You should, you should be dead. Um, their effective level gets half, so they're now a level 14 encounter, and we can run from that very easily. In fact, if you have three Devil Scorpions, they become a level 8 encounter, which we can flee from 100% of the time. So we like seeing multiples of Devil Scorpions, but um, don't know if we'll see them. Exactly. One Devil Scorpion. They're also pretty squishy, so even if it's one, it's fine. Yeah, one is great, but two, three, perfect. Exactly. But if, if there's multiple Devil Scorpions, we run it. We, we, right, like we, we, we have got a long, long dungeon, yeah, so Edo, uh, your time to shine. Yay! Yeah, let's, let's get to Dullahan. Oh, We're yeah. so close. We are like under $800 away. We are there. We are there. Come on. Send in, send in those last. Those last little dollars, please. Uh, we have a $250 donation from uh, Tiberius that says, just got off of work. Glad to catch the last half of the best GBA game. Good luck, Plexa. Time to get that Dullahan incentive. We have $100 from Michael Showers that says, want to shout out the whole gain of the Golden Sunrise Oldies crew. Wish you all the best and hi. Please put my donation towards the Dullahan bonus fight. <laughs> Tuxedo donates ten dollars that says, "Hey GDQ, this is just a subtle hint. Give me dollar hand. There are no hidden messages. Give me dollar hand. I have no ulterior motives. Give me dollar hand. Thanks GDQ. Give me dollar hand. You guys are awesome. Dollar hand. <laughs> that this odd feeling of wanting dollar hand is weird. Yeah, I, I, I know, a baby. Just I, th I think. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Uh, $50 from Anonymous that says Golden Sun, first of the name, was the best DBA game of my childhood. Hype to see that Dullahan bus fight hype building up. Let's go! We're almost, we're like, we're like under $300, come on! We're right there, guys, we're right there! <laughs> we're so close. We have done it. We have made fifty thousand dollars for dollar Let's go. Hand. Let's go. Oh, thank you so That's much. <laughs> oh, thank you, you guys won't, so much. You won't, wow. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. It's just in the same fight. You won't regret it. No, you won't, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> It's wow. funny because like Plexa is both the most qualified person to actually do this in a run, as well as to commentate it, because he's he knows how to do it. Bowie and I, we were just handed an entire document for and it's, okay, here's how Dollar Hand works. Learn it. <laughs> yeah. I will not be able to commentate it by my own. It's way too intense. It's, it's like, yeah, this. like there's a lot of stuff that it's goes on in there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievably technical. I, I feel like we need to do story time for a moment because there was this great marathon that, that participated in a while ago, a long time ago, where his incentive was get Iris. And everyone was like, oh my god, he's gonna fight Dullahan. And everyone got really excited and then he trolled everybody. And I'll troll you the same way, um, but then I'll do it the hard way as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, what have I done? Okay, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Moments before regret is what you're seeing right here, everyone. Um, but it's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, there obviously must be a lot more it's donations that came before came. disaster. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There obviously must be a, a huge amount of donations that came in to make that happen. So obviously, that's, we, that's this is unreal. Um, just yeah. the amount of support for the game, the series, this run, the incentive is wow, uh, unreal, absolutely unreal. Uh, I thought. 30k for the meal list of Ross was insane. This is just blowing my mind. Uh, I guess still a hundred ruined a lot of people's childhood, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh boy. Um, let the people speak. Uh, let, let's get a couple more donations in before I do the, the one glitch in this dungeon. No problem. We have a uh, $50 donation from Grant that says Golden Sun. <laughs> we also have a $25 donation from Linkus that says Excited to see another Golden Sun. Shout out to my roommate Lala, who introduced me to the series. 
$25 from Draco8 that says, Golden Sun was one of my favorite games as a kid for a good reason and wanted to wish a uh, flex of luck on the run. Shout out to the shop girl in Izumo for no reason. I appreciate shop girl. Yeah. Shout out to Valissa. She's great. And she's got a appreciate shop girl kind of points thing. And it's fantastic. Great emote too. donates $100 saying, I owned Golden Sun, but was never able to get very far. Enjoying seeing it being played today. Good luck to all the runners and huge thanks to the incredible GQ team. Jess the Great donates $100 that says, Sup, Flexa, tell me how to get that gin. Which gin 50... do you want to know? <laughs> I know, right? Which one? <laughs> there, there's there are a... 72. There's 72. <laughs> yeah. how, how, how do I get gin? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Clearly. <laughs> but, uh, Varuna donates $50 that says, Thank you, Plexa, for running my favorite RPG of all time. Good luck on the rest of the run. Uh, Venom Turtle donates $25 that says, I'm so excited to get to see more Golden Sun on the GDQ stage. Let's get that Dullahan incentive, which we also have made that. So thank you guys so much for your donations for this incentive. You will not be disappointed. You will not. Alyssa donates $15 that says, Work has made me miss part of the run. But now I'm ready to kick back and enjoy this amazing run with top tier commentary by Bowie and Sid. Uh, looking forward to breaking Dark Dawn more with you, Plexa. Let's get it sub five hours. <laughs> also, shout out to Shop Girl. There she is. Thank you, Melissa. There she is. How you doing? <laughs> also, um, let's talk about this for a little bit, then you can get back to donations. You can do diagonal movement over here, so you can just walk past that, which is kind of unintended. I don't consider it a glitch, it's just an oversight. Um, and we're about to do a retreat glitch in a very strange way. Uh, there are all these um, tiles, and the way the game handles the tiles if you fall through them is that it remembers where you were when you fell down, then loads you into the next room at those coordinates. We call them falling coordinates. By using the retreat glitch as we fall down one of these tiles, what's going to happen is the game's going to load us to somewhere without falling coordinates as a load-in mechanism. And so the game's going to keep these, these coordinates in memory until the next room uh, that has these things exists. And that's going to lead to some very unintended consequences. Um, so I'm just going to kill this guy here in a very inefficient way. Well, it's not that inefficient, actually. Um, with intent to drain my PP as much as possible. And then we're going to do the retreat glitch. Then we're going to end up back at the start of the dungeon. And then eventually things will happen. But we can get a ton of donations in between then and that, then. And then. So, I guess we get the blue key. Yay, blue key, hold on. <laughs> the blue key went to blue, that's appropriate. It is the blue key. Alright, now it's the tree glitch time. Well, perfect. Tree glitch. Fall down. Very, very, very important that I do not leave the dungeon at this point. And I need to get my PP back, and there we go. Alright, so now I've got falling coordinates stored in memory. The next time I enter a room that has the ability to support that, I will fall to those coordinates. Keep that in mind. Let's get some more donations because we've got more puzzling to do. Yay, puzzle. Uh, we have a... Oh my gosh, it has, once again, no words, but from Alex X. They donated $1,000. Amazing. We really do appreciate uh, the donations. No, no matter how big or small, we really do appreciate them. I have a $250 donation from Mr. Mark that says, I love Golden Sun and was quite happy to see the first at AGDQ. Now the Lost Age in SGDQ. My inner child is very happy watching this run. Anonymous donates $20 that says, please use the small donation to crush Dullahan and his poorly translated special attack names. I mean, what is a Formina Sage meant to be anyways? Is it some sort of health drink? It's certainly not a name I would use for a sword attack. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Considering the amount of damage it does, it is not a health drink. Not even slightly. <laughs> <laughs> it 
might be a hell drink for Dolan. <laughs> oh, it's a death drink. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's going to be dealing 800-ish damage to people unprotected. Ooh. We have like 200 HP. Yeah, that, that's yeah. not going to end well for us. Yeah, like, it, it's, yeah, if, it's, if you're not flashed, you're dead. Like, it, 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 it flash is the only Ginny that will save you. That's it. It does like, it does like 70 damage through flash. It's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it's gross. Like, actually gross. <sighs> we'll see that in a moment. Because you're also generous. Also, this puzzle is terrific. Please continue the donations. <laughs> yes, help us. All right. Gush Blood donates $25. I said, favorite game of all time. Plexa, good luck on the run. We also have a $25 donation from Project Zero that says, Golden Sun was a classic game for my childhood. Happy to donate here to the cause. So excited to see Plexa absolutely destroy it. Ooh, and then we have, ah, we have a $100 donation from Angel Ducky that says, the Golden Sun games are among my favorite games ever. And I always love seeing the runs of GDQ, especially when it can make the workday go faster. Let's see that super boss. Keeper of Light donates $100 that says, You have the light of the sun in you. Come, show me how bright you shine. <laughs> we have an anonymous donation of $200 that says, The Ragnarok weapon unleashed is still one of the coolest things I remember as a kid. Uh, throw in some of the best battle music ever, and well, have to donate for Golden Sun. Here's to Dullahan. All right, so we're coming up on the glitch point now. Uh, so remember, I've got these coordinates stored in memory that are like, oh, you should fall here at some point. Um, well, some point is coming up after we jump across this room and then go up some stairs. If I get an encounter out of bounds, I'm going to be very sad uh, because it's not going to ruin it, I'm just going to make it way harder to get. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> Yes, and then we fall out of bounds because, yeah. Upright mm -hmm. until the yeah. plus is off the screen, and there we go. Let's get like two or three rooms of this dungeon, including some of the most famous rooms, including that room with all of the hover panels, which is really cool, casually, really slow in a speed run. We cut it with that glitch. It was the only thing we found, and when we found it, we were so happy because Jupiter has resisted us for a long time for, for being broken. And also, you probably didn't know this, but this is the thing. That is a thing. Yep. That is correct. That is a thing. Block leg, sure. Block leg. Block leg. 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 Alright, so we're about to do the boss fight for this dungeon. Um, this is the part where most speedrunners will tell you, oh, it's such a hard fight and we're just going to die instead because this is the one fight in the game where you can actually lose and still progress. Um, I, I just want everyone to appreciate how, A, how great the Agashio and Cast theme is, because we're going to get it very, very, very soon. Then how great the battle theme is, because it's a remix of their theme, and it's like it's the most metal track in the game, and I love it to pieces. So good. Track 52, look it up. <laughs> I did, uh... <laughs> I, I remember having a conversation with Plexer about this, and he was, he's was he been umming and ahhing about whether or not not to play up the whole joke of, all right, here we go, we're going to do it. Oh, oh no, I done. forgot to set my jit. Yeah, exactly, yeah, but I, yeah. I respect the fact you didn't go for it. It's good, yeah. It's, it's fine. Tight. We, we hammed up the music instead. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we did, did the music too. Actually beat, yeah, we did the music thing. Well, let me talk about how you actually beat them. You get the Ginny rhyme from the Maria. Rhyme has this wonderful ability called, uh, that seals the enemies. I'm doing this to preserve the music, by the way, because I really want to get the good music for a long time. Um, so <laughs> cool, does it? Fantastic. Um, so, what was I? You get, you get, the, you, you get, you get Rhyme for Synergy Seal. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you seal Agashio's synergy with, with Rhyme, and then Agashio is like a little puppy dog who can't do anything. So you just keep applying the seal on him, and he can't do anything except one dangerous ability and as long as that doesn't happen you're fine um so that's the strat we do it in 100 percent because 100 percent actually does include all boss fights because we wanted a way to include dullahan uh without uh being arbitrary and stuff uh, you'll see why that restriction was necessary when we get there because we're almost there this is the agashio cast theme 
and the music glitch that we enabled through the, the tutorial skip is going to keep this theme playing through the rest of the dungeon unless we get an encounter and I think it adds a ton to the ambience in this dungeon mm. rather than the Jupiter Lighthouse theme. I think it really plays up the, oh, things are going to go down, people. Like, yeah. This is oh, it. yeah. I love <laughs> it. We, we, there's also a very important thing we do have to mention, very, very important stuff, that once again, Gara is the reason we're in this situation. Um, thank you very much, mate, for just sucking. Yeah, <laughs> industry. I, uh, yep. I will have you know that the most useful use that Garrett has in this run is that we get to sell his gear for money. <laughs> <laughs> that would be true, except I need him for the hunt, so Garrett will be more useful than normal. Good, good job, donators. You have made him useful. <laughs> what have we done? You don't need to make Garrett again. useful. Oh, God. <laughs> There's no amount. No. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, Garrett sucks. Um... Off we go. We do also, also get See the how most ominous convenient. Yeah, it's this really is good. It's so ominous. Oh no. What's going to happen? Oh yeah, so much better. Ah, oh well. Just don't get an encounter, easy. Easy, done. All right, continue. Um, I was going to say that, yeah, we're going to, before we reach the point, because we obviously want to go, we want to go and save our friends, you know, as much as, you know, they are, you know, quote unquote, enemies of us, you know, opposite in terms of what they want to try and do. Um, we do want to try and save them. We want to obviously do um, a, you know, you know, die to Agatio and cast, but Alex is like, you know what? How about a full heal, my friend? Give you a full heal. <laughs> yeah. um, you can also use a move clip to get behind Alex at this point and go up to the top of the lighthouse. It, it just does nothing. You get soft locked because your retreat's disabled, so you are actually just genuinely soft locked. You can't even get out of it with a a Phantom Warp, so don't do that. Um, but, oh no, Orb's gonna die. All right, you Orb. Bob was already down. The, uh, the stiff breeze that went through that wet tissue paper is <laughs> finally connected. <laughs> but um, Orb also getting bodied by a really cool move, like Rising Dragon, I think it's called. Like, really, really Very powerful cool. skill. Uh, there are, there are, uh, this is the thing as well about Agatio and Kart. They have really cool, unique skills. Like, Meteor Blow is unreal. <laughs> um, and yeah, what, like, ro and rolling cool flame. <laughs> is, it ro is, it, is it rolling Roll, flame? Yeah, no, rolling, rolling flame. flame. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So it's like a base power of like 300 or something or 200. It's just like hit 200. 200? Yeah. It's 200. Yeah. yeah that's yep. a disgusting base power. That that's before working in his attack or anything like that. It's just going to deal 200 damage or you know whatever. You know minus your defense or whatever. But it's going to deal like 100 damage. Um, it's like everything, everything about this fight is so cool. Like the music, the, the character design, the abilities they have, the fight design. This is the only fight in the game where you get two people, then three people, then four people. It's so awesome as like a casual moment. You're like, the lighting of Jupiter Lighthouse is this thing that you've been dreaming about since the first game is now like this epic conclusion. It's, it's so good. It's just a shame you can lose. Whatever. Plus, plus, there's also the whole thing about you know we know that we're being chased by Isaac and 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 Cohen to meet up with them for the first time. There's that there's that saying that there's that sense of that of anxiety about what we're gonna do when we finally meet up with them again because you know we had that you know moment at the end of the first game when we did meet up you know again fully as a team and we clashed and it was a, an epic battle and we finally see them and you know it's like ah there's so much going on here. Yeah, I'll try pull out the one line in the uh, reunion cutscene that gets me every time, um, because it's just such a good line that Isaac says. I think you think you guys know the one I'm talking about. I believe so. Yeah. Also, it's been, uh, been a while since I, I read the lines. Go, I do want to say a better thing about Agatio and Cast as well. They're normally kind of like critiqued as being not as interesting or not as cool as like Satoru and Minardi. Excuse me. The thing is about sort of Tadoris and Minardi is that Minardi and Cast are pretty much the same. They're both very fierce and like headstrong characters, right? But Saturos is this very kind of cool, cunning, level-headed um, force that just kind of tempers her anger and like pu and pushes it and redirects it in really fascinating ways. Whereas Cast doesn't have that, and I think that that's a really nice thing to have a have a, have a look at is like the set the separate ways that that, that the two operate, where Cast doesn't have that mitigating force she's just got another brute who's just like this like all about the power and all about the strength that they and the pride of their um tribe as uh, proxians just pushing forward and their desperation to save their 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 people whereas satoris is, is this very different force 
So I think they're both very interesting in different ways how they operate. You know? Anyway. Also, look at that. Oh, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> and it shows up on both sides for some reason. <laughs> yeah, both sides, yeah. Great first turn. Great, uh, great soundtrack. Uh, this is my favorite battle theme in the I game. Oh, so good. That's the one we don't want to see. Right. Oh, oh, the Raising Dragon. It's fine. Raising fine. Dragon to save the day. Bonk. Oh. And then there's Shiva, but she she's made a paper, so she'll be fine. And this car gives her a little kiss. Oh, nice. Perfect. Good fight. Oh man, I did a challenge playthrough of this game once where I only used um, Shiba and Jenna. And Jenna wrecked face, of course, but this was the only fight I couldn't do because they are forced to appear in the same place because normally you separate them to the two ends of the uh, party so that, that they never get like double like damage and like really, you know, hurt. But you can't do that there. I tried so hard to do it, but it's so hard. That is a tricky fight, it really is, because of the nature of that two, three, four. They are powerful. And I think that's why they made it so you could lose, because, you know, it's just really tough. Yeah, but they shouldn't have. They oh shouldn't well. Have. That's the way it is. Um, last chance to get some quick donations in, because um, then we're going to go into the reunion and then the lot hunt. Gotcha. We have a $10 donation from Senders the second that says, May your RNG be grand and your movement be poggies, Jesse. Excited to see you <laughs> running on GDQ again. With love from the TL fam. Yay! Hashtag TL win! Shout out to, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Team Liquid, my, my work. They are a, a great company to work for. And uh, some great people who work there as well, like uh, Cinda the second. She is fantastic. Everybody is fantastic. Very lucky to, to work with these people. Thank you for the support, everyone. We, got, we can get another one in, I think. Uh, we have a $250 donation from Anonymous that says, Good luck, Plexa. Hope that's a comfy chair. <laughs> it is. I'm just and then we... the blues though because he needs to buy a new chair. Anyway, continue. <laughs> 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 it's okay. Uh, the Irish above donates a hundred dollars that says, "Good luck on the run, Plexa." I want to see Dolahan get destroyed. Yep, and we have made that incentive happen. We'll be seeing Dolahan get destroyed. <laughs> Twenty-five dollars from Jake Vidya that says, "Golden Sun is a fantastic series, and I love to see it represented here on GDQ." Donation goes to the Dolahan boss fight. We can go one more. Okie doke. We have a $25 donation from Osmina uh, Devarox that says, So many fond memories from the Golden Sun games. Very excited to see Go uh, Golden Sun Lothage again. This is a really cool moment. By the way, it's the... Isaac learns that everything he's been doing has been in service of destroying the world. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. all right then. Um, okay. And yeah, the, the, like the, it's the whole merging of the parties. They're like sorting out their differences with words, and that Isaac's party is slowly realizing that okay, Felix has been this incredibly noble warrior, shouldering an immense burden, betraying his hometown. Uh, in an effort to save the world and to save his parents as well. Because, hey, spoiler, they're not dead. They said in this cutscene, so it's not that much of a spoiler. Um, <sighs> it's such a cool moment. This is Hama. This is Ivan's sister, which is like... <gasps> and it's going to be relevant to the story. <laughs> um, like, I, I, I <laughs> think he finds this. Piece. All right, here we go. Here, this is the best line. This is the best line in the game. This is we last quest now. We're just doing what we can to help. Him. Isaac Isaac concedes that all his efforts were in vain, and now his only purpose is to help Felix save the world. Oh, so good. That's that's what true heroes do. Yeah. Um, you donated for this, so this is uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're doing it now. Yes, we're not doing anything else. This is, we're going to do it with this party with this set of gin. But this, yes. is, this is the deal I signed up for. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So this is, there's a lot to talk about here. Do you want, do you want us to take over now or do you want to crack on with some stuff first? I got to drink some cookies, so yeah, go for it. And I got to do a menu, so I don't know this menu very well, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> okay, this is this is a specific thing that um, Plexa has to do to sort out this as a separate part of, of the run. The save point that was made earlier will be used to continue the run to to mitigate all of the stuff that's happened here, because there's a lot of basically, stuff that's going I on. I don't want Iris to mess up my menus, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, least, yeah. It's one of those things. So, uh, Dullahan is ridiculous. First off, it's uh, important to know that Dullahan does have a form of pattern. If you know much about the Golden Sun 1 speedrun or about anything like that, you'll know that Saturus has an eight um, turn pattern, the same moveset in every eight turns. Dullahan when I had one of these, uh, there are 24 rather than eight, first thing to note. Um, the starting position is determined by both the BRN and the GRN, and the fact that it's, it's both battle and general, um, general RNG, is, a, is, a, is something that is uh, only Dullahan has. This is a unique to him, which makes him a very, very spe special fight. Um, and Dullahan will kind of go through that, that, that pattern quite smartly. So it's, it, there's a sense of like, um, you know, um, AI kind of responding to what's going on. Um, it will use, so it has like break is a thing that like removes all kind of buffs from the party and it will use that only if there are buffs up. It will do something else if it doesn't have it. So it will kind of re react to what you're doing and how you're playing it in that kind of, of regard. Um, so there's a note here saying that the BRN from the Manip always has Ginstorm as a second action. So when we, the way that we're going to try and do this, this cannot be non-manipulated by the way. At this level, it is straight up 100% impossible to beat Dullahan without some form of manipulation going on. Now, I, obviously this is a thing that's separate to the run, so it's not kind of falling within that whole thing of no save and quit, so um, this is one well, of those things. Well, we, yeah. we, need to, we need to save and reset to get into the dungeon at all, because yeah, you know, exactly. normally you need to have all 72 gen to access the dungeon, but spoiler alert, you don't need to if you do this trick. Speedrunners have this one simple trick that will make you scream. Like, it's this trick. It's pretty great. Spoiler, it's Retreat Glitch again. It's, it's, it's always Retreat Glitch. <laughs> yeah, it's always Retreat Glitch. Okay, but, yeah. so, so I gave that, that law story before about Critical Sid and the Iris incentive. All you do is you go into Retreat Mode and talk to this chest, and you get Iris. Congrats. Yay! There we go. Yay, we did it. There it is. Um, so that's the easy way to do this, and now I'm going to do it the hard way, and... I need silence for a small moment. Of course. All right, fingers crossed. Okay. All right, so the reason he needed silence is because uh, He's essentially manipulating the general random number as well as the battle random number, as uh, Bowie said. However, in order to do that, he needs a specific audio cue, because ev on every frame of the title screen, the GRN changes. So he needs to be within a specific audio cue to hopefully get one of the seeds that he knows. He will get an encounter in a bit that um, he will just try to see if he can recognize it. And if, if it is one that he can recognize it, then he can advance with some uh, attacks and that he then cancels, he can advance the GRN to the points that he needs in order to uh, get it to yeah. where, 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 where he needs yeah. it for Dullahan, yeah. Yeah. essentially. If, yeah. if we don't do this, we get destroyed because we don't know where Dullahan is in his pattern. If I've done this correctly, I know where he starts in his pattern, and that's the trick to the fight, yeah. knowing where he is in his pattern and then being able to play around that. Yeah, if I so don't that, do this, he can start in one of three different locations, and good luck. Yeah. Could be Jin Storm. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, a thing that you may know as well there, so like the first encounter of every single fight is a is an, an attack first. So you're able to just run away from it um, when where when the BRN when the BRN is zero. So on that reset, he got an encounter, and then what he did is he uh, forced the general RNG to be advanced in a certain way by doing. Um, like action cancels, so he'd go, he'd go like, uh, he'd do attacks to kind of push the GRN a little bit and then cancel out and then fled. So that's very much a specific setup to get the GRN in the right place. Um, so I was mentioning earlier how Dullahan will respond roughly to how, um, you know, you are uh, like buffs and stuff like that to do certain things. So what is going to happen is uh, Plex will be trying to put a buff onto Ivan and then take Ivan out of the party on the off turn so that there are no buffs in the front side of, of the party so that he does something that we know we're going to get. 
um, which makes it a little bit easier to kind of um, you know work on that. Um, Elemental power is like a big thing. We need to make sure that Ivan's, you know, doing a lot of damage. Because so again, he's going to summon, get the buff right, get him out of there, so that that buff is not removed. So he can come in, do a hit, and get out again, kind of, kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of moves that were being mentioned, like four minute sage. Um, but yeah, let's go straight into it. So it's uh, turn one. It's going to be uh, meteor attack, mud, and flash. So flash again, mandatory, so we don't die. Meteor is going to be a little bit, bit of damage coming out from peers. Um, attack from Garrett to get something done. Again, this is forcing Al. Um, this is forcing RNG to move in a certain way. Because attack will um, push in a very, very particular way. That should be attack peers. Formina on Garrett. And attack Mia. It looked like it was a Formina on Mia and attack on peers so far. One more attack. Which will be. Oh, wait, did I just cancel that? I might have just cancelled that. That could be really bad. Uh oh. Okay. Let's find out very quickly. I cancelled it and I will need to grab it again. It's okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Fizz, Petra, Petra stops one of the moves. Fizz is just to heal. Eclipse comes out from Ivan and a wish just to make sure that um, everyone is, you know, standing up a little bit here. Move first turn. Fizz is again, again, setting Ginny, so we have the ability to do that. Okay, elemental swapping and a hawk, so nothing too bad on yeah, the second turn. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, so we're gonna have to start over and uh, try to do the manipulation again. Yeah, it was a little bit. The thing is, uh, he accidentally cancelled a little portion of the uh, summon animation, and oh, depending. Bad, by the way, this is a very, very, very hot fight. Oh yeah, no, it's okay. extremely hard. And depending on uh, where he cancels or it doesn't, uh, where he cancels an animation like that, that animation progresses the general random number. So the only consistent way to get what exactly what you need is to just let the summon animation play. Mm. And since he cancelled it a little bit, this kind of shook everything off, unfortunately. So yeah, trying to get another encounter and. Uh, See if he can recognize if it's one of the seeds he has. Hopefully it is. Um, yeah. One of the yeah. things of how he's getting in here, by the way, with Retreat Glitch, is that Retreat Glitch also stores your coordinates of where you used it in the previous room, which means that if you then save and reload, you can get all those coordinates in the first room, which can be out of bounds. After which he just goes to a door that takes him right to the end. Mm -hmm. There's a GRN uh, set up as well, just make sure he's on the right seed. Um, okay, so. There are some specific things as well to mention, just so you're kind of like cognizant of it when when watching. Um, ele elemental swap is an ability that doesn't do anything inherently, but it's, it's essentially a tell of what's coming in the future. Um, it's going to be um, basically uh, Karon is going to be coming, or Sharon, or Karen, however you want to pronounce the name. Um, which is essentially a, a, a big summon, but it's got a AOE death <laughs> attached to it as well. Um, yeah, it has an AOE instant death proc chance, which is very, very scary. Um, it starts, it's quite high on the target, and it, like, I, th I think, is it guaranteed on, on the target? And then it mitigates down like 60, 30, 10. Um, it's so not quite guaranteed with the right manipulation, you can make sure that uh, it doesn't feel like that, pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Actually, having characters different base stages of chance does avoid it, yeah. Um, a big, st a big, a big uh, turn to look out for is going to be the ninth turn in the fight, which we will talk about a little bit closer, but it's the one turn in the fight where we don't have any, any real protection. No, fl no granite, no shade, no flash. So it's very, very important um, that, uh, that that turn goes well. So we're back into it again, turn one. Meteor attack, flash. Might again important to lower his speed, so we have the ability to get some of turns in. There's the attack. Form in Sage. Okay. And attack again. There we go. Alright. So this is the thing. You need to make sure we get the right um, actions coming out. I'm going to swap Pierce for Isaac again. And so all of the actions that you do are also manipulating the RNG further, so that's also something to take into account. You can't use this on someone else ran. Yeah. And that takes in the resistances, all of that into account, so Wish and Fizz and stuff like that is actually used to manipulate the gear into a very advantageous point. There we go. So again, nothing from the Petra, Elemental um, Swap, and then Haunt. 
So here's where we're gonna um, going to try and avoid this uh, this Karen hit. We're gonna have uh, ground's gonna come out to stop the first turn. Um, and I'm gonna ground judgment and flash. So there'll be nothing, then Karen, and then find. This has been done right. There's the ground. Up to this point, the uh, move that we have been avoiding at all costs is, is, is Gin Storm, and we don't actually have a very consistent way of move, avoiding it to begin with, because right now in the pattern it is as the second action. If we try to prevent it from happening with like a Petra or a Ground, it, would, it only removes the first action. So the way in order to get it into the first action is actually this turn, turn, turn 4 right here, where uh, he specifically switches out Ivan, who is now the only one who has an elemental boost so far, uh, in order to make Dullahan skip his break attack in the pattern. Since he skips an attack, that means he's the next attack is pulled one step further into the uh, into the pattern, which means that Jin Storm is no longer in the second slot, but in the first slot, which means we can cancel it with extra and stop. Okay, so Felix had to go down, so it's been put, taken back out by I Ivan, so um, we've got the Mars Kite, Potent Cure and Flash. What Kite does is give two turns to the person you use it on, so we're going to be a able to do a double turn on the following one. That was turn five, turn five, turn five. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I'm not saying anything that's going to distract. Uh, okay. So turn six next now. This is, um, yeah, is going to be a little bit of Spritz, Haze, Shade, Eclipse, and Defend, which we should get um, yeah, Condemn, we should get Karen and Curse. In this case, Karen would insta-kill someone, but he specifically hazes that person so that uh, the insta-kill is not. Very, very lovely. Okay, that's turn six down. That's the Curse. Pretty good. Mia will be swapped in for Shiva, or will be swapped out for Shiva. Essentially, we're using uh, the TLA party just kind of as uh, a resource to get through Fermina Sage, because Fermina Sage, it, 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 it does so much damage that without Flash it kills people, so we just make sure it kills our weaker party members who are right now lower level. Fermina Sage again. <laughs> So this is turn 8. The following turn is going to be the scary one. That's the one where we don't have any, any defense. It's going to be very, very precise. We've got True Collide coming out. We should be attacked and forming a Sage once again. One damage. Let's go. Hide out. Please just to heal up. Forming a Sage. There we go. Bob's device. Thank, thank, thanks for the flash. Right. Turn 9. The scary one is going to be uh, setting flash again so that we can use it uh, in the future. But uh, so also um clips and flash. There we go. There we go. So flash is gonna come back for the following turn. Um it's gonna be very, very nice. But uh, we should get the first turn is gone and it should be attacked into true collide. And you might be wondering why he's switching in a dead party member, and that is specifically because uh, Yay. Yeah, that, was, that is <laughs> what, uh, Please watch me as spooky ghost when we use cannon on this turn. Yeah. Uh, that was specifically so that True Collide didn't actually reach all the way up to Isaac. It just stopped at the dead person. <laughs> Otherwise, Isaac would be dead. Okay, Shade comes out. Breath again to get that priority heal. Elemental swap. This is going to be preparing for, cannon, uh, for Karen once again. Nice spin on this one, let's see friends like it. Okay, turn, turn 10 down, there are three turns to go. It should end on turn 13, so turn 11. The ground haze. Defend the charm. Haze once again to make sure that, 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 that the person we need alive will remain alive. These birds, these buffs are important. It should be noted as well, I should mention it, that actually um, 
Dullahan has reduced damage taken from summons. This is um, unique to, well, it's, to only, it's set to only him and Valakar, which is a super boss in, in the game. The break did not work on Ivan because of the haze there as well. So it's very, very important to get that haze off and allow the break, break to come through. If you were allowed to, uh, that, uh, that break to not come through and, you, and Dullahan would have skipped it, that would mean that Jin Storm would be pushed to the third action, which means we can no longer prevent it. So it was very important to let it go through and deal with it in a different way in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very close. I think it should be. This is Meteor. This is turn 12, so one turn to go. We've seen the attack. It should be a true collide and a full minute stage. That's true collide. Mina. Fieri survives. Final turn, Jupiter, Petra, Judgment, and Neri to put as much damage out as possible here. Uh, Isaac comes in from here, of course, as well. Just to make sure that that should, should do it. But that should be the fight. And if that is, that is going to be... Like, you guys have to give it up for Plexa for doing this, because level 28 to 23, taking down... It's Dalahan. There's the Jupiter. And that's and the finish, dude. He did it. Yes. Yes. Go on. Oh, wow. You did it. Cool. <laughs> oh that's, my that's god. Incredible. That's the hard way to get Iris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> way to school me, Plexa. <laughs> I, Good oh god. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, sorry if you, if you don't if you don't just go and sub to Plexa right now for that. I don't know. <laughs> just uh, do it. Just do it. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Hard assignment oh, of the okay. game. No, no character <laughs> higher than level 28. 32 out of 70. <laughs> Jin, it's nuts. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was off. Yeah, it, it was. I think there I was like a slight change. There was a slight change. I'm pretty sure there was, there was a missed target early on that I noticed that I was just a little bit curious about. I wasn't sure if that was going to change everything, but I did notice a missed target. But... Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, words hard. No, uh, <laughs> Just get back into the run whenever you're ready. You can explain it. But as we said, there was a save done before, so we can crack on with the run as as per because that just changes too yeah, much. Yeah, otherwise in, I, in the there's, run. there's oh. too much stuff I'd have to worry about, and I can't be bothered. Just take the reload. Thank you, everyone, um, for your donations. Hope you got yeah. your money's worth because that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how long did that must have taken to get that perfect and get that right with that? Like, I mean, like when it comes to top level oh, routing, wow. yeah. When it comes to top level routing, these guys they they know what's going on in the game, right? They can see everything. They can see the GRN. They can see the BRN. They can see how every single every single thing affects it. It takes so very very long. Oh yeah, that's um, a skip. Um, and yeah. okay, I, I, so war time really quick. Okay, so Shiva is this really cool character in this game. Um, she was taken prisoner, and she's kind of sad at the moment, and that, uh, at the beginning of the game, she's like, oh, I have my own reasons for joining your quest, like, Barbie kidnapped her at the beginning of Golden Sun 1, or sometime during Golden Sun 1, and basically, yeah, captures a 13-year-old a girl for his own devices, a very evil Barbie person. And then she's stolen by Satoris and Minati, so she's basically had no agency in, like, her entire life, basically. Um, after being raised as an orphan and all that stuff, it's just, it's truly terrible. And then she joins this quest of her own volition, right? She, she joins us because she's like, I feel like I want to find out about myself. And she hopes to find answers in Contigo, but, but she doesn't. Um, but it's all okay. Um, I need to continue my Shiva story, but I want to try this one because I got to show uh. this off now that we can do it, <laughs> this is anyway, uh, the whole point of Shiva's story is that um, everybody underestimates her and she never has any agency, but eventually, um, is this in this, this famous cutscene in Garoth that where she's like, oh yeah, I am, uh... oh, this is the Magic River. Uh, this is Magic cool. River! <laughs> <laughs> I found this, this is mine. Um, so yeah, she's never had any agency, but she like steps up through the entire run and just like carries the whole run and just, like proves Moafa wrong. Shows people that the power of wind is really something that you should respect and, and look after. And she's just just a kick-ass character. I love how she's written so much. Anyway, you're not meant to enter the area from the side of the boat, and so you end up being this NPC. This is us, by the way. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> that's a thing you can do. Um, but that's fun to show off. But I love Shiva's story. It's so like.
I think it's a story everyone can relate to with someone you'll like feel like you never have agency over your life and you've just kind of taken one run things to another and then everyone consistently thinks like you're not enough and not powerful enough or just like just writing you off and that's like Shiba to a T but she consistently steps up and just does stuff like you saw her destroy Moapa she's gonna carry the fight against Doom Dragon she's just what a character, right? I never appreciated how awesome her story was as a, as a tale of regaining agency and uh, becoming a very, very powerful young woman in this world. It's, it's really cool. I love it. Anyway, I didn't do something, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. I feel good these. Yeah. <laughs> All and of yeah, that. Shiva, yeah, it's, Shiva, Shiva's great. I, she's my favorite. It's incredibly cool, and it's, it's very, very true. I mean, in every word like I said, it's, it's pretty much how she, Shiva goes. Um, yeah, um, we should uh, crack on with this because it's going to get a little bit more in intense as well. So, uh, is it possible to know what a Z axis is? Um, because Burst no. is asking. <laughs> no. Burst is asking. Um, <laughs> this Z is axis is a lie, it doesn't exist. <laughs> is, yeah. you, know. you so, might wonder how is anything going to follow up Dolohan? No worry, don't worry, Mac will yeah. also deliver. <laughs> It wasn't yeah, Aquarox. <laughs> oh, so uh, Ma Magma Rock. I just touched it Aquarox for some reason. I mean, Magma Rock's got some real cool stuff to it. Um, the fact that they uh, it just checks to make sure that you're in the right Y and X axis, and it goes, is it right? Sweet. Uh, it doesn't matter how high up it is, and it actually allows us to do multiple um, great skips in Magma. Magma is like as broken as 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 I'd say roughly. Like they're yeah. the two most fa like fascinating and brilliant uh, rocks for sure. But Magma's got some real real beauty to it. Um, and it's majority a of unique it, tech. Like it's, yeah. it's unique to Magma Rock. We can't do. We can do it elsewhere. It just doesn't. It's not useful elsewhere. We can do it in like, like the burst glitch that we're doing. Like this is really going to be obviously wrong. Like that is obviously wrong, but it works. Um, it, it doesn't work to the same extreme degree anywhere else. Um, Yumpy Desert is like a usage of it, but yeah, it's just. What is the Z axis, guys? Like, who cares? Who cares about 3D things? It's really, really helpful. helpful. It should be noted as well that we're staying in um, Felix's team to run away because we're going to do a retreat glitch in a, in, in like a little bit. Um, but it, the best way to get into a retreat glitch, glitch state is to kill off one of the parties. At this point, we're going to be doing a lot of fleeing because Isaac and his co team, Isaac and co, rather, wow, well, Isaac and his team are level 28. So they have a much better chance of fleeing than, uh, than Felix's team does. So what we're going to try and do is be in Felix's team, try and flee, fail, have them all be downed, and then we can use the fact that they're, that they're downed to revive them and waste a lot of PP and get back into um, like a low PP count quickly so that we can retreat glitch again. Uh, at that point, it'll also auto-swap to Isaac's team so that we can then run away a lot better. I should also address we have a flying boat. So I feel like we kind of... Uh Oh, yeah, yeah, glossed yeah. right over that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and did the cutscene skipping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we kind of also skipped the cutscene that explains the flying boat. But uh, yes, they put wings on our boat and now it can fly by the power of synergy. It drains our, your the synergy of everyone. Uh, it's kind of prioritizing the ones with higher levels. And uh, but with some good positioning, and when we arrived there, we actually managed to skip the introduction of cutscene to that, which seems quite a, quite a big deal. Nice. Pretty sweet. We're also going to do another blind screen as well. So if you remember all the way back to that first hour of the game when we were in Ayers Rock, I keep saying we. You're, well, I'm not doing anything. It's all you, Plexa. Um, <laughs> we are living we're, vicariously through Plexa. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were in Ayers Rock and there was that um, blind screen that Plexa did where he climbed up the, the ladders and then kind of moved the pillar and then managed to come back round and fix the puzzle. We're gonna do something similar, but there's not, we're not gonna be any like major puzzle fixing. It's just we're gonna to get to the web, to the right hand side and skip a bunch of stuff. Because normally what you need to do is on this on this screen above, you need to be on the west side and kind of sort out a puzzle to get everything um, to, to, to break a particular rock. But because of the um, retreat glitch removing the loading zone, the next screen doesn't load, but we actually go onto the actual um, topography or you know the actual like area, the area itself. But what's all the things in the way, like pillars and stuff like that, don't load. Only the ground and the climbable surfaces does. So we're going to get off the ladder, we're going to run to the right-hand side, and then find ourselves a little nook and cranny, move up left, get onto another ladder. At that point, we know that we, the hard bit is going to the right and then left to get onto the ladder, but there is a way to find it. 
get an encounter to reset the, the retreat glitch state and then run down right and then just kind of climb down to reset the screen because by getting an encounter retreat glitch state leaves um, and then we can go through screen transitions again so it's just um, probably mentioned it a very long time ago but now we have isaac's theme playing because only isaac is in the party and not uh, uh felix so it's a nice little callback to the first few games it's a really nice touch actually just to have isaac's theme playing in this game it's really cool you can also get jenna's theme which we routed out again thank you stella for that one um, but yeah, it's... <laughs> you won't let him live that down, will you? <laughs> Just like thanks, Salon, you every time it comes up in conversation. That's good. Yeah, well, it, it goes both ways because yes, this is technically faster, so that's a good thing. But it yes. also removes something really cool. So yeah, yeah. Again, the order of priority is Felix, um, Isaac, Jenna. So if you know all three of them are in the party, Isaac's will play. Um, Felix will play. Take out Felix, then it'll be Isaac. Take out Isaac, then it'll be Jenna. Yes. Now we're yeah, almost and done the, with the outside. Yeah, the, the, the battle strategy here, if you haven't worked it out already, is run away. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. They, gave us, they, gave us level, they gave us a level 28 party. It's like a good eight levels higher than everything else. Um, so, sorry, we're going to abuse that and we'll just run away from things. Unfortunately, the last dungeon of the game, it's not faster to run away from things, which is good. So. Double DM, okay. Hmm. No effect on orb. Orb is too strong. Also, we haven't appre uh, appreciated the Magma Rock soundtrack enough, I feel. Like, this oh, is mate. a great track. It's, mate, so, it's good. so good. It's an it's absolute slam. It's very slam, Magma yeah. Rock. It's so good. Very fitting. Magma just does every, every rock has a great score, but Magma's is on another level. You can see that I'm, I'm getting slightly better uh, chance of slightly better, slightly less turns per each encounter with Isaac's party rather than when I had Felix's party. And again, it's the fact that they're just coming in at a higher level, which gives it more probability to flee, so it's just good to do that. Mm. Please note what's happening here as well. The mechanic inside the interior of Mars is uh, to fire the fireballs using burst into the big tiki statues, and they will start vomiting lava everywhere. And what the vomiting lava does is um, activates these panels that will slowly move around so you can like get around and the idea is to kind of like raise and lower the lava level so that you can you know traverse um keep that in mind as we progress because it's going to be quite fascinating we uh, obviously we're doing it intentionally sure. right yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing yeah, yeah, it yeah, intentionally I mean, right <laughs> everyone look it, this is this is the team liquid very own so dr mr jesse Blexer heart um, of course he's going to do this run and this dungeon Master, completely. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry, sorry. Master, very important. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Grandmaster of Going Faster, Master of Bridges and Purveyor of Magical Rivers, sorry. Um, of course he's going to do it very legitimately. That's just how it goes when you run, when you run Golden Sun. It's all about legitimacy. So, you know, absolutely, why on earth would we ever just randomly end up walking on lava? I mean, that, that isn't going to happen. You know, and that makes no sense. I mean, the, well, what yeah. happened there? <laughs> he looks oh, lava God. Jesus for some yeah. reason. He can walk on lava. This, 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 this thing here skips an, an insane amount of the dungeon. Uh, yeah. This oh, always yeah. second floor just doesn't exist. So that's cool. Um, so you pretty much have to do the first, the, the, a little bit of the first floor before crystal lava into the third floor. Very nice. It's good to know that in. Um, at uh, Dark Dawn, we have the, the protagonist is called Matthew, and Matthew is the son, canonically, of Isaac and Jenna. Um, and part of the Dark Dawn speedrun is that Matthew runs across the water a whole bunch. It's very clear where he got those genes from. He got them from <laughs> Jenna's side of the family, um, as Felix has clearly got the lava walking ability, and the water walking ability is just kind of passed down. Uh, let me see if I can get this. This Please is a very... Well. Yeah, don't. Well, it, it's not. It's, it's not really a subject. It's one of the things where it goes really slow, right? For like a million years. Okay. Yeah. Basically, so it, it, either you get it, or Edovina has to read a lot of donations. As we wait, as we wait for the we, need, we do clear. need a few of those anyway. Soonish, we do need a few. Of those. Hey, we got it. Very nice. Made the cycle. Very nice. Shout out to Regnus Trace yeah. for pointing that one out. Uh, we've praised them a ton already, but he found that that actually was possible. You get that janky jump, and it works. It's so cool. Yeah, we can get a donation in, um, then we'll do some fun stuff, and then we'll give it back to you, to you for a little bit more donations. Okay, we have a $15 donation from Jun Coral that says, Congratulations on the Dolahan fight. I am glad to see the fight is as epic 
in speedrun as it is casually. Farming a sage. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bit, that is an ability. It's basically instant death, as you saw. Um, <laughs> Not at all scarred by that, are you, mate? No, Not at all. It, it, <laughs> it did make me sad when I had to sacrifice my TLA team members. It's just that the Lahan's AI is like, I can kill you, and he does. So it's like, me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well, thank you Shiva for your contribution of dying. Very sad. Very sad. Oh well. But yeah, I guess so uh, just like she gets back to our normal contributions of whirlwinds and, and getting us to places we need to go. Because well exactly. we have we have more lava to run on, honestly. Exactly. So now we're gonna cast the burst from below again, and this time we're gonna get vomited on by the statue and we're gonna walk on lava again. Yeah. Good times with Felix. Like Barry, I've had a rough night. It's coming out. It's the last Man, night we're going out with Steve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! That was the most <laughs> spicy food. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you can get a couple of donations in as we finish this up. Uh, there's some fun stuff at the end. Um, but yeah, we've got a little bit of, of dungeoning to go. I can get like three or four in probably. Okay. We have a $25 donation from. Adam the Feverish that says SGDQ is back and boy does that light a fire under me to send in donations. Something in the air just makes me want to give money to a great cause. And there's no better cause than the help fund doctors all around the earth. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> well played. You can well see played. what they were going for. <laughs> okay. Uh uh, Pseudonymous uh, donates $25 that says Golden Sun is lit. Oops. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, that, was, that was actually, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was I like that. that. That's creative. <laughs> <laughs> um, sodium 70 milligrams. I don't know why that was a name, but sure. Donates $100 that just says Dullahan. Ryan donates fifty dollars. That says excited for this Golden Sun run, one of my favorite series as a kid. Are, are you doing okay, Alexa? Just, I, I condemn is just a fantastic ability. How oh, many more props can we get? They both have condemn. It's hilarious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh boy. All right, it's fine. It's, it's not a big it's, deal. We expect uh, people to die. It's fine. Uh, uh, yep. Mia has arrived. Let's go. Good luck. Oh goodness. Earlier on in the run, that would be catastrophic, but now we have Revive as a basic ability, so it's nothing. It's whatever. Okay, we got one last trick in Magma Rock. This, this rock is fantastic. You too can just cast a burst from the low ground and uh, walk on the lava if you like. You can also do this trick. Uh, well, surprise, that's not the trick I'm referring yeah, to. Don't do that. Yeah, and now for the enemy's next trick. <laughs> yeah, I recommend not doing this trick. <laughs> How many more condemns can we get? No, um, we're gonna do the same kind of thing we did in Airs Rock, where we change our retreat point to something else, and then that's gonna allow us to do a fun little skip. Oh, yeah. So jump over here. If you thought some of these retreat glitches didn't make any sense, this one, <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> it, it does make sense, it's just. All if right. you say so. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's left over from development, basically. It's like a couple doors that were used as placeholders that they just never done anything with and then we can act anyway so we're, we're at that point now so i don't want you to have a five i want you to heal the ball oh no one else is hurt dang okay that's fine we just do it the slow way so now i'm gonna go into retreat mode with my retreat pointer sent to the first that the first room i just came from and then i walk through to this door and that's going to take me to the blaze chamber because that's a thing and we're gonna get blaze. That's awesome. That's a huge uh, skip in terms of like skipping some uh, fixed cutscenes, skipping encounters and stuff. It's really, really convenient. But we don't done with this dungeon. Unlike Aqua and Gaia and Ears, we do actually need to get a key item here called the Magma Ball, uh, which we will then use to fire into a wall of ice for reasons. So we can exit out through this way, which is significantly faster than doing the blaze tutorial, which is also a good thing. We have a chance of an encounter skip here. Hopefully, we get it. And Please. Yeah, we've got the encounter skip. Lovely. And now I'm going to do my favorite trick. Uh, this is called Felix the Magician. This is where we pull a magma ball out of thin air. Because uh, you're not meant to be able to access this location through normal means. But after you do 
because we never activated the cutscene here, which causes a of fire to spew everywhere, um, basically, the, the developers were like, there's no way they'll ever get here except through the conventional method, so we're just going to put the orb here all the time, and then fine, whatever. Um, so clearly that's, uh, well, seeing as we can use the retreat glitch and get behind the cutscene and never activate it, we can just walk right up to the, the, the tile and get the magma ball, which is really convenient. And now we're rapidly approaching the end of the game. We have one dungeon left, but it's literally the longest dungeon of the game. Um, yeah, as it should be. Um, but before yeah, we go more, straight there, we need less, to do a couple of things. Yeah, I cut a couple, a couple of, a couple of gins gets, and one last hurrah for Magma Rock because it was full of surprises until the very end. <laughs> I, for a while, we didn't even know about that Magma Ball thing. Crazy. So there's no reason that should work, but it does. But yeah, whatever, you take those. So this is a two-part thing. We're going to use the magma ball here, or the magma orb, to uh, magma orb uh, to break down this wall. And first of all, they're like, wow, a cannon. Let's put that onto your ship because we don't need it. Um, so we're going to get a cannon on the front of our ship, which we're going to be able to use to get to the the northern reaches uh, where Prox is and the Mars Lighthouse. Also. By breaking down this wall, we now have access to the Jupiter Ginny, who is hanging out on top of the uh, roof of the building over on the uh, left side. This gin, and I know the chat's gonna love a love this one, is called Lull. Um, that's L U double L, thank you very much. Um, Lull is one of the most broken Ginny in the entire game. Like, it is so, so good, but the specificity by which you have to use it to get the most effect from it is quite tricky. So, you know. Awesome gin, but you know, you need to use it right. But you know, yeah. again, we're speedrunners, we know how to use it, right? Yeah, yeah, young kid me did not figure out how to properly use that gin, so I it, it was just summon fodder for me. But uh, now that I know its power, I can never look back. Lol, lol is incredibly powerful. How are we looking at time, by the way? Do, do you want to know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I can only have a look at, I mean, I can only have, have a look at the stream being played back, which is about 5.08.20 when the wall came down. Or when, or rather when the cannon was taken okay. away. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they just go, they're like, right, we, we put that cannon on your ship. And we can go and use that. Very friendly people. Hmm. Ah. All right, last chance for some donations for a bit. Uh, so let's get to know while we go through the northern reaches. All right, so we have a $25 donation from Cario Mart that says, so glad to see such a great game finally being able to be showcased in GDQ. Good luck with the run, Plexa, and hi, Bowie. Hi, Cario Mart, how are you? You won't recognize that name when it popped. <laughs> we have a $25 donation from an Ursa Major that says, Love me some Golden Sun. Sagathayan? I, I, once again, I'm butchering names. I'm so sorry. Uh, they donated $15 saying Golden Sun, The Lost Age, was the JRPG that got me into JRPGs. So I had to donate during it. Teal Lara donates $25 that says, I wake up and what do I see? A golden sun run? What a wonderful day already. All right, into Prop, uh, the hometown of the villains of this game. They're not actually bad people, they're just misunderstood. Well, they are in a tricky position, of course, because they are the ones who are seeing the immediate effects of uh, that, you know, the death of Wayard. Because, like, they're it, behind Prox is just this massive chasm, just slowly. Um, encroaching upon their upon, upon their land. Do they have any lost cats in this? I can't remember actually. Do they bother making no, snowmen? No, no, no. I think no, they're, they're not very happy people. people. <laughs> lost cat, one um, moment. Mm -hmm. It's like they're misunderstood people, yes, but they, they they really should use their big boy words more often. Yeah, they, they, I feel like a lot of cats. Yes. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> Desperation does, you know, does. A lot oh, yeah. to people. It does a lot. lot to people. First of all, we we brutally push this uh, Ginny into a wall and get him covered in snow, and then we're like, sorry, mate, scoop it up, and off we go. Um, a while ago, we did a cheeky thing called dropping 
and duplicating the saw blade, the war gloves, and the thorn crown. I'm going to oh, pick that up. This is right. my favorite. Sorry, bro, but this is my favorite strat in the game. It's called Naked Garrett. Um, you go to Garrett, you sell everything on him so that mm -hmm. you can afford to do the shopping trip that we're about to do. Thank mm. you, Garrett, for your contribution to the room. There's the small blade that Bo was referencing. And you can buy the war gloves. You can buy the thorn crown. The, the lucky pepper. The sea, the sea god's here. <laughs> there we go. The oh, yeah, on that junk. Uh, and this flag was really quite useful, I think. Oh, it's more of them. Oh, fantastic. Ooh, lovely. Yeah, there's one in the store back and forth as well. Yeah. Forgot about that one. Good strap, good strap. Mm -hmm. Alright, so gonna need to get one more gin from here as well. From uh, the house that uh, previously Felix and Jenna's parents were being kept in. And uh, there is one gin there where it can be like one of three gin, depending on uh, how you did the manipulation. Um, and you have basically the, the control that you can get. It just creates a set of three, and you just need to make sure that you notice which one you got. And it, it will be pretty easy to notice in the menu because it will be on standby. Yeah, yeah I probably should do my minigun for time. That's helpful. Yeah, we got hail. There we go. There we go. We're going to be setting up for not one, but two ninjas. Um, both. Isaac and Felix are going to be ninjas because A, ninjas are cool, and B, shuriken. Um, and again, they both have soul blades, they both have all this power, and you know, Isaac of course has five levels on Felix at this point, so he's going to be dealing with lots of damage. Uh, we will be getting levels slowly, they will, you know, we will hit a point where actually the straps might change like, in minor ways to be, have more optimal fights because we don't need to like pepper some extra, extra damage in order, order to, in order to cover you know, damage requirements because of the extra levels being handed over to Felix and Isaac just to make sure that their damage increases a little bit. Um, it's very, very minor, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting cutscene because Isaac obviously was the one who um, who slew um, Saturus and Minardi, and it's like, yeah, I did do that, and he's like, whoa, don't don't fight me kind of thing. Like, okay, we don't need to go go to war here. What happened happened, and it was what everyone felt needed to happen. Let's, you know, stop fighting and go and do what we need to do. And uh, you're about to see the destruction of Wayyard firsthand, um, and why the Proxians were so worried about it, because, well, that's the end of the world right there. Yeah. Alright, catch up, should... by the way. Yeah. Uh, remember, the direction to go? Yeah, left. <laughs> we, we had this conversation last night, because he was always going left, but I remember that he used to go right all the time, but it would always say that it was wrong. So then I started going the wrong way, I thought that I was already going the right way and that I was then I had to swap and it just we ended up confusing each other like three times. Left says the pile of movement, that's basically the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so dumb. It's completely it's minor. Um stay alone. That firebird is a lot of experience. It's like 5k for a firebird. There are there are exper there are like metal slimes in this game. There was the Phoenix in Magma Rock, there's the Firebirds here in um, Mars Lighthouse and there's Wonderbirds in um, the um, Islet Cave uh, somewhere in the Eastern Sea, which is like a secret dungeon with a big boss. Um, but yeah, those are the three thingies. Doesn't matter, but we don't really need any experience here, really, but we'll just take whatever we get. Yeah, I don't really want to see them. They blow. <laughs> everything from here on out is routed, assuming you get the minimum possible experience. So if we see them, yay? <laughs> enjoy hearing the level up animation a bunch of times. Um, but yeah, we don't need them. Preferably they run away, it'd be nice. Megiddo. Megiddo's still here. <laughs> it's always been here. <laughs> Megiddo. Uh, yeah, Megiddo. we actually get to use that again. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Grind still has some relevance, apparently. Um, which is kind of cool. So coming up soon, actually. This is this is something that you want to talk about, I think, Sid. Because this is... This is yours, uh -huh. right? This is yours. I guess, yes, this is this is mine. It's called Dumb Skip. Like, so, remember how I was happy about the really cool thing I found? I found something really dumb as well. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you did it, thanks. But it's, so but it's, I went right. You did go right. But, uh, yeah. Frames. Oh. 
There is uh, puzzles Just in this game where there is uh, some can I, can fire. Can the run over guys? Sorry. Nope, not allowed. Nope, you have to live <laughs> with your shame, that, it's fine. That, that means you have to do Dullahan again. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. No, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, so sit, okay. as you were. As a, yep, okay, so uh, moving on, we have a puzzle here where our uh, way through is blocked by one of these uh, fire spewers. And you see this nice little animation of the fire coming out, and well, what, what we found out, or what, or what I found was that whenever you load it in from a save, or, in the, and fortunately we also found a way to do it without saving, um, is that the fire essentially has to load uh, from its origin point uh, again. However, it, there is still some lingering hitboxes from the fire from before it was there, which means that you can fail it. Uh, th there's only there's only a certain amount of frames that work, and you try your best to get like a good visual cue for there you go, very nice try. first try dumb skip <laughs> to get a good visual cue for where the fire is in an animation so that you can recognize whether you're on a frame or not that works. But still, it has a chance of not working, pushing you down, and you lose time, and then you try. It's still wise, to, It's still wise. I just yellow it every time. The reason <laughs> it's called dumb skip as well is because it can just not work. Um, it can just yep. not work. It can just yeah. not work. That's that's why it's dumb skip. And we yeah, have to do that three times. It's true, we have to do it three times. But basically, there is a one in nine chance that we just cannot do it, depending on where the flame splitter is in its cycle. That's like an eleven percent chance that it just fails for no reason. Um, pretty good odds. Um, from the position that I was at, is at worst a three in nine chance that it fails. For no reason, depending on slot pixels. If you're a pixel higher, um, I believe it's basically best case 50-50 or worse, basically, to the point where it just cannot work at all. Um, so it's a horrible, it's a horrible trick, but it's fast and it's it's dumb that it works. It's dumb the way it works, and it's dumb that you can lose time. It's very appropriately named Dunstead. But save but time so we do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, good, it's, good. it's Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good, so good. We're really good at we're really good at naming glitches in our community. Magic River, Felix the Magician, Dumb Skip. Let's go. We like uh, to have fun here. We do. Uh, coming up though, um, I hope you uh, <laughs> have you ever played Chicken with a Fireball? Um, yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? I do that all the time. Like, well, actual, actually, I have a very interesting past that you might want to know about. Um, well, yeah, we're just going to uh, shortcut pound here just to break these ice rocks because uh, we actually have the ability to uh, run straight up to the next one, and it's going to be fine. Don't worry. It'll be fine. <laughs> That's uh, unbelievably free, by the way. Like, yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It seems oh, yeah. scary, but like no one's ever been caught. It's not that hard. It just looks hard and impressive. Oh right, this room exists. Oh god. <laughs> you remember this time? I'm impressed. Yeah, everyone I forgets it. it half the time. Everyone forgets it <laughs> everyone, like half the time. Yeah, everyone yeah, just, just like yeah, everyone I, runs down and never use moves. It's just the thing. Yeah, right, I guess kind of Yep. This isn't a great ability. If only we had it maybe two hours ago. This is the uh, teleport is the um, uh, it's a spell that when you use it in dungeons that has this symbol, you teleport from one symbol to another. They're linked, right? If you use it on the world map, you can teleport to any um, any like village you visited in the entire game. Just teleport anywhere. But you get it at the very end of the game. I mean, it's it's you, so you can kind of at this point maybe get the soul blade before you do do the final boss, go and do the, all of the side quests and stuff. So that, that that's why it's there. But it would have been nice to get it a bit earlier, you know? Jupiter it would be nice. Yeah. Uh, it's it's nice that the movement progresses slowly, uh, like uh, at all. At first, you just walk everywhere on your legs like some scrub. Here's another dumb skip. Um, <laughs> then you get the boats. <laughs> then your boat starts flying, and then you fail dumb skip. Maybe we'll find out. Yep. yep. <laughs> and uh, then what you do the teleport time. Yes, the, the save and quit you wouldn't do in the run, of God. It's just a marathon run, and that's about a minute. Wow, there you go. It's like a minute, so it's like, you, you, yeah, we can't be bothered with that, so let's just move on. 
Um, again, because the only main the, the main way that we can at this point manipulate is through battle RNG, the fact that a soft reset is used doesn't really affect um, the inherent spirit of what this run I mean, is. Really. That, we already did Dullahan, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't... Yeah. The run was invalid at that point, but that's fine. It was worth it. Yeah. Uh, but it does come to go for a, 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 a trick that I like to call extremely stupid skip. Um, it's yeah. a two frame window of a four frame window, and I'm probably going to fail it. But I'm going to try it anyway, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, so be it. it does Basically, it there's a. Yeah. Go ahead, go. There's a teleport coming up, and if I, I can open the menu on four frames, if I get the right to two frames of that four frame window, uh, a save and quit at that point will allow me to skip a puzzle. Uh, it barely saves time. Uh, you, I go for it in any percent because I just hate myself. Um, yeah, let's see if I can do it. Probably can't. I'm going in very poor. Yeah, this is, this requires... Yeah, I, I'll let you focus for the attempt first, obviously, but watch out. Holy crap, I actually got the frame. Well, I may have got the frame. We'll see. Mm -hmm. That's the first bit. I could have got one of it. Yeah, we're not done yet. Hey, we got it! Yo, got it. let's go! <laughs> Yo, very nice. Oh, of That's course you did. window at, at 60 FPS, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the Soul Blade. We don't need it. We've already got two! Ha-ha! <laughs> I can't believe I got that first try. Wow. <laughs> I no, guess no. it wasn't as extremely stupid. <laughs> yeah. It is very dumb. You should never go for it, but whatever. Now we what's, do these things. What's more flexor? Dullahan or extremely stupid skip? Uh, but very flexor. That's me. Extremely I mean, stupid skip. Yeah. Flexor, <laughs> <laughs> it saves like no time as well. It's really slow. This is the flame dragons. I wonder who they could be. Yeah, two two dragons of oh, fire descent, one slightly bigger than the other. Uh, we're gonna do a, a quick uh, setup here just to make sure that it's a are you right, mate? Oh, the uh, menu's the no, menu it's setting. the menu is so laggy. Oh, it's okay, we'll be fine. Oh, we'll get there. So we have two, we have two turn stopping and, and moves, ground and Petra, and we also have lull. Now, what lull does is lull ends the turn. At the point of its usage, it ends the turn. So the, the, the really Im interesting thing that you can do here is set it up so that you have every one of your characters go first, but the last person who goes you uses Lull and ends the turn. So what we're going to do first turn is ground both of the dragons, and so neither of them get their turn. Ground and Petra are on, on one and then on the other. Um, hammer them with summons, um, and then set up to use Lull on the second turn so they don't get any turns at all. Well, we're going to use Zephyr to make sure we outspeed. You can use Mud, but Zephyr does the same thing in your favour rather than that, there, rather than to their detriment. Um, where are you, Shiva? Mm. There we go. Eclipse. Lol. So J J Jenna is fast, but she's also the slowest in this team right now. So Eclipse is going to slam out some sick dams. Um, Boris is going to further up the deeps with even more dams. And this is why LOL is broken. And I hope you're all spamming LOL in chat, because this is stupid. They did, a, they did a difficulty mod of this game, and they left LOL untouched. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, that's not a difficulty mod. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they, they adjusted everything in the game, like, Flash was way weaker, Jim did worse damage, but LOL was unchanged. Like, oh boy. Anyway, nice that's fight. just one dragon fight. Jeez. They don't take a uh, I can confirm that there are lols in the chat right Fantastic. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's very silly. Shout out to Total Biscuit. What a legend. Mr. Memory Day. He is a huge part of the uh, Starcraft community when I was big in the Starcraft with CLNet. So uh, I had the opportunity to work with him a few times. I'm glad that he's been immortalized in that emo. What a legend. Absolute legend. Absolute legends. Yeah, I, I followed him very closely and watched a lot of Starcraft in that day. So. I do really miss this good. Yeah. Great laugh. Alright. Okay. We are so done with this. And time to 
Do the final part of the final dungeon. Oh. Yeah, okay. by, by, by facing the Mars, the Mars um, ele elemental star into the mouth of that, of that dragon, you kind of like light the fires um, under Mars Lighthouse. So we can now access um, the top floor and then um, start cracking on with uh, lighting the wings so we can reach the lighthouse proper. Um, so yeah, we've got some interesting stuff, stuff to do first. We've got, um, we've got four wings to clear, one of every single element, which are geared towards puzzles akin to that element. So, you know, um, we've, got, we've got a bunch to do. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot to get through. I think we might have some time for some donations as we kind of like prepare to crack on, on with this. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we, we, we actually do. I mean, this is a really cool moment where you go up the uh, right side, God damn it. Every time. Seven years of bad habits, guys. It's really hard to break. Yeah, we're gonna go up here. Cool moment. Games like, rah, do these elemental challenges so you can progress. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. We're gonna clear through encounters, do some puzzles. We'll complain about the Mars doing a bit. Um, but yeah, guess, let's get some donations in while we get pounded by encounters for a while. We have a $25 donation from Daddy Do that says, let's make it do it. <laughs> <laughs> We also have a $10 donation from Alex that says, Hey, GDQ, so glad to have woken up to this run this morning and watch it through the afternoon. Flexa is absolutely killing it, and it's been amazing to watch this with some of my favorite commentators in the GDQ roster. Thank you for bringing love to this incredibly ambitious series. Uh, Ceremi donates $50 that says, Good luck, Flexa. Very glad to see you here. Dark Dawn next year? Hmm. I really don't like this encounter. <laughs> Dark Dawn donates $10 that says, Hi everyone. Hey Plexa. Great to see you as always. Good luck on the run. This run's gonna be S tier. I can feel it. I just want to point out that I have done the math on that Akamana encounter, and it is faster to run away, but it never feels like it. So never, never feels I'll, like it, yeah. I'll probably just fight them to save my sanity. <laughs> They're just like three times as strong as anything else in this dungeon. It doesn't make any sense, but a lot. That's fine. So these Minos Warriors, or Minus Warriors, however, however you want to say it, they can be killed with just shurikens after a, a few levels gained. That was the one I was mentioning earlier. Um, you may you can just take out the prism after a point. Yeah, look, well, the point of the Mars Wing is to drive speedrunners insane. Um, <laughs> for some ungodly reason, the encounter rate in the next room is like three times the rate anywhere else in the game. So this ginormous, stupid room gives you about five, six encounters on a good day. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to suffer through that, and Ida Bean is going to make us happier because she's going to read out a lot of really cool donations, and we'll feel good about being tortured by Master. It's all for charity. Yay. All for charity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You have a $100 donation from JAPF that says the Golden Sun games are one of my favorite games of all time. It's been a joy to revisit this part of my adolescence together with the runners. It says don't die to cruel ruin. Huh. <laughs> I'm That's assuming I'm missing something. To do. <laughs> That's a very smart thing to do. We will do our best. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from the Casual Scrub Gamer that says, I've never played Golden Sun, so I want to know what their super boss is like. Well, you saw how it was. It was really interesting. <laughs> it was super. We have, a, we have a $15 donation, and I really do apologize. I'm not going to be able to pronounce this name. <laughs> it's... I'm just going to say Bloomin, because it, it's very long, <laughs> so I'm so sorry. Uh, I love Golden Sun, and I'm so pumped for this run. All the best luck to all runners and staff involved in this amazing event. Protosith donates $25 that says, enjoying this Golden Sun run, keep up the good work, and a great fight against Dullahan. It was. Kindle like Dust donates. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, fin finish your thought. Donations are more important. 
than what I... Well, yeah, yeah. Say, say what you're going to say and then I'll, I'll crack on. Okay, Kindle just donated $150 that says, I can't see the run because I'm at work. But from the way things feel, it seems like Mars's lighthouse was lit first. It's like the Sahola out there, Flexa. Go light Mercury lighthouse, please. Good luck and good RNG. Don't die. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to quickly remind that because I, I, this is something I wanted to get in. I've, I've thought about it a few times, but I was like, I kept forgetting to do it. But one thing that Plexa and I forgot to do oh, no. last time, we can't oh. forget this time, can we? We cannot forget this time. Thank you for reminding me. No worries, it's all good. Um, there is, uh, well, there was, um, well, there is and was. During AGDQ, Plexa and I uh, forgot to do one thing, and that was shill the fantastic shirts available at the Yeti. Specifically because uh, JMV is one of the artists who um, has been doing some, some of the uh, designs, and has designed an incredible um, Golden Sun The Lost Age shirt. Um, so remember that all of your um, purposes at the Yeti do go towards, um, you know, a portion of it does go towards the donation total that goes towards um, M MSF. Um, and we forgot to shield the shirt last time, so wanted to make sure that we do shield it this time. Uh, JMV's designs are really, 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 really cool, um, and it'll be awesome if you picked up a shirt to support Golden Sun, support JMV, support M MSF, and support the Yeti. Um, yeah, we did. And forget. also to just also to just own a really cool Golden Sun shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah it's it's really I cool. love it. I'm getting it. Same. I definitely want it myself as well. I I've already got my up to themselves this time. <laughs> the first, the AGDQ one was really good, but this one is, is really, really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, that was the worst room in the game. <laughs> uh, like I said, so many encounters for no apparent reason, but whatever, it's done. Now we get to do dumb skip again, because if you didn't like it the first time, well, now it's dumber. <laughs> this time yeah, the fire is this moving. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Left this time side. The fire is moving, so. Left, left side. <laughs> left. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> Save Sorry. The pile of movement. Good, good job. Thank you, Bowie. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It. If. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Just do my part, man. Um, but yeah. I think we got. Uh, I, I, sorry for like jumping in or the donation reading for a little bit of shillage. So if you do want to crack on with a couple more there, uh, Edo, please. Yeah, sure. we, got of, we got a little bit of time before Dumbest Gift. The gotcha. Dumbing. We have a uh, $30 donation from Karasu that says, Donating for the first time for my favorite game of all time. Golden Sun left a huge impression on me when I was younger, and I'm so happy to see it being run. Seeing that doll hand fight, and don't forget that Kidding Shiva is the most powerful play you can perform in this game. Moogle Mage donates $100 saying hello, Plexa, and all of the Golden Sun community. Been a big fan of Golden Sun 1 and 2 for years. No Dark Dawn yet. It has been a joy to watch the runners over the months and seeing the times lower in a crazy pace. And obviously the money went towards Delahan, which we did have it happen, so it was really cool. And then Kido Raja donates $25 and said, Golden Sun The Lost Age was the first game in the series I found, and I thought it was amazing from the start. Love seeing it at GDQ, and can't wait to see all the ways it can be absolutely destroyed at the many points I struggled with as a child. Take my money for Doctors Without Borders and keep up the good work. Devin donates $25 that says Golden Sun at HDQ, The Lost Age at SGDQ. Sign me up. Sir Dan 1987 donates $15 that says I recently have played through this game casually and I recall how horrible the Dolahan fight was. Curious how this turns out. This is towards the incentive and one of the many times I'll be donating during this run. Best of luck to the runner. When you want Megiddo and you don't get Megiddo, it's the way of the blade. <laughs> Every game that has some something like this, it never actually happens. 
I've been playing a lot, a lot, a lot of I've been playing a lot, a lot of FF5, and it's like whenever you get the chicken knife, there's like a 25% chance to proc flee for you, and you'll always attack when you're trying to flee from encounters. But you get to a boss fight, and it's just can't run, can't run. <laughs> like, yeah, can't do it. Ah, sod's, yeah. sod's law, man. Sod's law. Right, here comes uh, Dumb Skip 3, the Dumbening, the Dumbest Skip. I guess by a lot of names, but, and, but there's Dumb in there somewhere because it's the same principle as before. We're going to open the menu, close the menu, and hopefully we run past the thing. Here's the thing. Time. It's moving. It makes it harder. Hey, okay, we did it. Yeah. Go. Plus one. Yep. That skips a lot of stuff, but really quite boring so good skip good skip that one fortunately uh that one if you fail it you only have to climb back up the ladder ladder so better. it's very quick to reset it's, it's not even yeah. close to as bad as the other ones so very good nice good best but don't want to do that don't, don't put the fire out you need that <laughs> yeah i do that's, that's, on the wrong way. that's two out of four we're halfway there halfway oh man They the best last two. I really like these last two. Yeah, yeah, the last two. I, I, the Venus one is, is really fun. I, I, I do like it a lot. Uh, I mean, okay, considering, we've, a... considering we've just done, like, you know, the, good job. Uh, considering we've just done the fire one, which is just such a drag. And, and the wind one just feels long because of all, all of the cyclones. So it's nice to kind of, like, have Mercury and Venus to kind of, like, finish off with. Yeah, just the, these, these last two are much, much, much faster. So mm. we are almost to the Dim Dragon, so if you have a friend that you'd like to call for the Dim Dragon, now's the time to call them. Uh, because uh, it's going to get real really quickly, and the Doom Dragon fight is theoretically the most impressive fight that I think has ever been developed in the speedrun. Like, Dullahan aside, like, Rignestrace's original concept for this um, was just brilliant. Like, it, it wasn't faster at the time, but it was brilliant and the right ideas were there and then between me and him we, we, we've taken that strat and turned it into what it is today and it's, now it's the fastest strat considerably and it's just unbelievably impressive and, and I'm sure Bowie and Sip will walk you through the technical details when we get there but if you do have a friend who is interested in how you get around the Doom Dragon now it's the time to give him a call. I, I will gush all over that strat and ex oh, explain man. the best I can. I love it so much. Yeah, I think we'll, I'll, I'll preface it by saying that um, it's got a really sweet name because the strategy for Fusion Dragon at the end of Golden Sun 1 also has, has a sweet name. So whilst we do come up, come up with really stupid names for skips, strategies usually have some pretty cool stuff going on for it. So in Golden Sun 1, when we're fighting Fusion Dragon, we have the courthouse stress because the idea is that we use a lot of judgment and rotate judgment around. Um, the strategy for Doom Dragon... Oof, Dark side. Dark side dark of the moon. Of the moon. It's so sweet. But, you know, we, uh, Sid and I will expound upon that a little bit later on. But um, until that point, we've got to finish up these last two wings. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've ever had a run where I was happy with my Megidos. There's always some, just so many that... Just... <sighs> Megido. Yeah. Looks cool. Sounds cool. Oh. And in, in casual paper, Looks I wouldn't know. It's just, it's just really slow. It's yeah. just really slow. Like, if, in any other situation than a speedrun, it's great. Um, okay, so three down, one more to go. We're just going to quickly blaze this one, and then off we go. Um, so yeah, we go. To, uh, Bal Nocturno for this strategy, it's really good. Mm, kind of nice. Just got to set up for the fourth one, and then we'll be really cracking on with that one. But um, yeah, so we'll uh, quickly go to the Venus one, and uh, nice, done. Good, good job. job. Yeah, so that retreat glitch for some reason enables the Venus wing, so you do three out of four wings, so we're actually done with elemental wings off of that. Yeah. And Baal found that like many, many, many years ago, and it's, it's pretty cool. Baal has since moved on to the uh, OOT randomizer community, so we missed you, Baal, please come back. But um, yeah, his, his one contribution is a pretty big one. Oh boy. Yeah, it's, it's really cool that it works, but it does. Mean. There we go. This is a big menu, so focus on that one. Um, we'll crack on. Um, yeah, so Sid, dark side side of the moon. This is cool. Oh yeah, this is very very cool. 
So the way Doom Dragon works is he has three three heads, which each represents phase and each represent uh, one of his attacks, with the last one having two attacks. And those three uh, th those attacks are essentially on a pattern, uh, much like Dollahan, except this time we can't really aren't you manipulated to see where in the pattern we are. So we're just gonna make sure that we never have to worry about where in the pattern we are. The nice thing about the pattern is that all of the most dangerous uh, abilities, so that includes Jin Storm, which resets all of your Jin and would ruin the entire strategy, are on the first action. Which means that throughout this entire fight, we will always either be using Vetra to remove the first action, Ground to remove the first action, or Lull in order to end the turn before Doom Dragon can even have it. We're also using the Trainer's Whip here, finally, picked it up all the way in Yonki Desert, I said we would explain it, and we don't actually... Trainer's Whip is a, a item that gives, gives you a certain class, there are a couple of items like that, and in this case it's a Trainer class series. We don't actually care about the abilities of that class itself, what we do care about is its agility stat. Because with that agility stat, uh, Mia on, on Mia, she is exactly and fast Mia. enough, and only yeah. Mia. She is only exactly Mia. only Mia. She is exactly fast enough to fulfill her role in uh, in this particular fight. Yeah. Other, so, other, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, then uh, I, I Isaac without speed or I speed, and then yeah. yeah. I have, to, I have it, to point out that every character in this fight has to be that character like it's really rare because a lot of these characters are clones of each other but you can't replace isaac with felix you can't replace garrett with jenna you can't replace shiva with ivan it has to be these exact characters doing what they're doing um the only two that you can interchange are garrett and pierce because they do nothing um yeah but all the characters we're using there's no other option it's a unique combination of stats and elemental affinity that makes this threat work it's very very yeah. cool and also, I, I don't know what Sa um, Motoi Sakuraba did, but something happened, and uh, he composed the Doom Dragon theme, and woo. Um, it's high yeah, no, he was theme. having a good day that yeah, day. Yeah, that was a good day yeah, in the office, was, for that sure. Was, that was a good <laughs> day. Absolute barnstormer. Um, so yeah, as, it mentioned, um, as Sid mentioned, the first action is the one that we're really critically trying to get rid of. It's not just uh, Jin Storm. Um, things like Haunt, which can eventually give you a spooky friend, and the spooky friend will have a chance to proc damage back based on the amount of damage you deal which can kill people um guard aura so you know all the things like flash um granite and shade that we use to reduce damage down um doom dragon has one as well so we want to stop that too um which is very very important when we're doing you know certain strats and all that kind of stuff so again there's three phases um, at this point, Craven says, wait, Isaac, stop. Don't, you, you don't know what, what you're doing because there's something going on here about the... Why, why on earth exactly does the uh, Doom Dragon have three heads and why are two yellow and one red? I wonder why. Um, there's a... Yeah, there is a, a quite an obvious reason there, but we'll figure that out shortly. But um, phase one, immediately, we're going to bring uh, Shiva in here. I think these are slightly different to the other ones I usually have, but um, the Flash is going to come out first. We're going to um, unleash... Petra to make sure that we don't get any um, action from the first one. Um, right now we're a bit slower than him, so we need to try and get that down. Thor comes out. What this does is gives 100 or 96 um, elemental power increase to Shiva. Shiva is going to be our main summoner here, um, so she's going to be dealing a lot, a lot of damage. Mud comes out to halve speed, so we now outturn when we want to do lol moves to ensure that Mira is fast enough to get the lol off and also. Here's, um, here's naked Garrett, by the way, doing his job. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah, has yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he brings Jin in with him. That, that's yeah. It is a really cool element of this game that you can have, if you're not using the pair of characters in the back row, they can just, you can just stand by loaded Ginny for them. When you bring them in, they're ready to summon. So they're just basically, you can just have someone loaded with an Eclipse and just bring an Eclipse charge in. So it's super nice. And uh, one thing that I actually didn't even touch upon yet is that even though we can remove one of his actions, uh, he still does quite a lot of damage. So throughout this entire fight, we always make sure that on the, on the turns where we do get attacked, where we don't end with Doom Dragon's turn before he can do it with Lull, we actually have either Flash or Granite or Shade up just to get that damage reduction. Because Cruel Ruin goes in, which is an ability that will come into play in the next phase. Two turns down, not so bad. 
We'll bring Ivan back in. Um, Ivan has a uh, kite, I believe, so we want to pop that on. Uh, so Shay's going to come out. Yeah. So, you the, the last turn, this turn, and the next turn form the basis of the original strategy. It's this ability to cycle these three turns endlessly to basically make this fight completely free. Sorry, mm. you, Bowie. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, you, you were right, yeah. There's just close to cycling those three is essentially what we're trying to do. In between those turns, what we're trying to achieve is just trying to ready up more eclipses. So you'll see things like you know, shade will be the uh, the particular um, defense that or defense up we use. Um, you know, things like spritz to heal a little bit of fizz here and there, and you know, kite to give those two turns. These are all Mercury and Jupiter Ginny, which are the exact elements we need for Eclipse. So we're also going to be cycling in, you know, things like ground and Petra being used, and then Flint, and then because because he used kite, we're going to Flint into into Judgment immediately afterwards. Um, what this means is that we have immediately got. Um, the gin ready to be reset so when we're also using petra and ground we're readying up a judgment to come in so we're building up eclipse we're building up judgment and then when we have lol ready we then use the judgment so we can reset round so lol comes back into into play right now um on these turns again when we have lol we use this op opportunity to heal and it just keeps ro resetting and rotating similarly to how we did courthouse where we have one turn attacking one turn preparing one turn attacking again like that so that's cool and then we just try to get as many eclipses in as possible. Get the dark side of the moon in there. Hmm. That's why. Yeah. 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 That, in that's case anyone, in case it went straight over anyone's head, you know, just, whoo! Uh, yeah, Ooh. eclipse. <laughs> the dark side of the moon. He said the thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, oh, so this is the final turn of the first phase. And uh, after that, so yeah. The first turn, the first phase is the longest because we have to do a lot of setup. We have to get Shiba powerful enough that her eclipse to extra damage for the floor was born. And just have to do a whole bunch of set up to get the ball rolling essentially seven turns. The next phase is going to be four turns. So e even though things get more difficult, uh, yeah, we are about to blast in a way. Once again, going to start off with a turn where uh, we use another judgment in order to get our Venus gym back. The Venus gym are also very essential to this just because we have granite, we have petro, we have ground. Uh, so Granite for protection, veteran ground for uh, disabling his moves. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of courthouse uh, featured in this trend. It's very nice. Should be noted as well that for the longest time, uh, there, it, there was like a breakthrough that Plexa made like, a few years back when he finally figured out exactly how Doom Dragon worked. It's like this big thing that I remember him kind of like being like, right, guys, I cracked it, I figured it out. To note that the first turn was where the pattern was. Um, and for the longest time, like even no SQ before we had Dark Side, we, we did have there was like eight pages of notes of like varying different fights based on what the first two turns were, because we'd figure out what the first turn was, see what he followed up with, so we know where in the eighth turn turn order he is. Because he's got eight turns that he rotates his first action for, and they change based on the fate. They get worse and worse. It starts with Jin Blast, which is just one person, and then Jin Storm is like goodbye the entire party. So. It gets worse and worse, and so it was, yeah, it was like so many pages of notes. Just if it starts with this, you do this, and then when you see it change to this, you go to this set of notes. And it was incredible routing, but um, and it, it's not, a, it's not a shame that we lost that because it was tricky. But at the same time, there's a lot of work work put in, so it's a thing. I'm a tiny bit worried that uh, I've got uh, something in the wrong place, but we'll see how we go. Yep, save it. Okay. You, you've been one, saving crazy things all run, it's fine. <laughs> one one yeah. Ginny in the wrong place can literally cost, cost everything. I did a run where I just I had swapped Forge and Flash in the wrong order. It's just those two were swapped and the run, the, 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 the stress died. On turn one it died. <laughs> Great, fantastic. But, um, okay, phase three. Now the Cruel Ruins are going to come in a lot more. Um, so you may remember as well, you may have noticed that there were three heads. Two yellow, one red. Does anyone know what those colours denote? Anyone? Anyone? Any, 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 any takers? You in the back there? Yes. Um, no, yes. sorry, don't understand. Oh, okay, 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 sure, no worries. That's completely fine. Anyone else? Uh, you with the glasses, um, with the mic. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Okay, no, what you're, you're... possibly be? Is it the wise one? No, we these ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already seen them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the elements, the the colours of the elements, um, blue for water, purple for uh, wind, red for fire, and oh, yellow there for earth. There's cool ruin. Cool ruin hurts. Look at these HP values. Uh, yay, that's good damage. 
Um, that's with protection, I think. Um, so yeah, pretty tricky. So you do have yeah, to make sure you have, yeah. these, have these heals coming through. Something is definitely off. Oh, maybe it's because I have... Water is down. I don't know. Something is not quite right. And that's okay. I think we're fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Seems like we're putting out the damage and sort of rotating this. This is when we bring it in. Awesome. Alright. Almost there, only two turns to go, so it should be fine. Yeah, it should be the last two turns if everything is correct. If not, we will recover. This late in the fight, you could probably, you could probably just try and find a way to burst it down anyway, so... Yeah. Case in point, this, this Zephyr is completely unneeded. Oh no, God Aura, too bad we're not doing any damage. Mm hmm Because we're just preparing for the following turn. His guard aura is also a priority, so if you both use priority uh, abilities, you'll, if you have to have, have enough speed even after the priority to make sure you have them. Um, lol once again. And, uh, I believe this is one of the final turns. This is the final one. Uh -huh. This is yep. the final turn, everything looks good. Put in the last bit of damage, and that is all this on the last page. And uh, time, time is not yet. Not be yet to time is yet. It's not time is not yet, time is not yet, but this, yep. this is the last. And, uh, we, uh, we beat him with a Tiamat, with Jenna. My dragon beats your dragon. We'll watch the whole animation, because why not? Yeah, we can. Yeah, Jenna gets the kill, so really Jeez. it's all her that did it. Well done, dude. Really good job. It's such a good strategy. Yeah, I would man. like to, I, you, I'd like to note <laughs> that by complete accident, I am wearing my Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the World shirt. <laughs> Fantastic. Of course it's accident. Perfect. Um, so upon defeating the boss, we realize, well, it reveals that there are three people who are the three heads of the of the Doom Dragon. Jenna's mother, who's the fire um, side of, of the family. Uh, Jenna and Felix's mother. Jenna and Felix's father, the Earth side, and Kyle, um, Isaac's father, who again is an Earth adept, um, because hey, Isaac is all Earth. Um, so the three, the three people who we thought we lost at, at the storm, um, of Vale at the beginning of Golden Sun 1 didn't die, as we mentioned earlier, um, but Wise One used them as um, a catalyst to create the Doom Dragon as a final challenge. The, the Wise One was considered, is he, is he bad, is he, is he good, what is he? He's the custodian of, of, of Wayard, as Plexa likes all -knowing. to call him. Yeah, he, he's yeah. all-knowing, that's the point. Yeah. Um, so, he knows that once, well, it knows, I should say, it knows that when alchemy is restored to the world through the Golden Sun event, that there's going to be war and chaos and all kinds of things. And we see some of the consequences of that in Dark Dawn. But the world is going to need, like, very strong warriors to look after it as... Well, otherwise, the world will just descend into chaos once again. So this was the final test for um, Felix and Isaac to basically say... if you, Because Isaac has this line where he says, I do who are fighting as soon as I have raised my sword. Um, basically implying that they will sacrifice everything to save the world and that's what the wise one was looking for and since they're willing to do that everybody gets out alive and it's all very good hmm. so that, that, another cracking line from isaac like it, it's a real shame that we don't hear him speak in in the first one because the kid's profound um but yeah <laughs> pretty wise pretty wise yeah, he's good he, he was a good kid it's a wise one that one yeah. felix is much more stoic in general um, much more quiet, a reserved uh, kind of hero. But, um, so uh, I have to start, I have to mention it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Cam Camelot have done this before, where they have like different games show different perspectives of the characters. There are three scenarios in Channel Three, and you hear different sides of the story. And I would have loved to see the opposite side of things, like Golden Sun One from Felix Felix's perspective and hearing what Isaac's saying, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, the final jobby is lit, and um, we're hearing, you know support and voices from around the world as, you know, the power of alchemy is, you know, starting this, you know, beginning, the, the start of this return is, is happening. Um, and those who have, we have connected with, and those who we have supported over the, over the, uh, the course of the journey are uh, backing us one last time. Well, golden sun. Now, okay. now that we're here, uh, just once again, I, I cannot express enough gratitude that we were able to raise 50 grand for uh, Dullahan. That is insane. I hope it was worth it. Um, just a, an absolute honor and a privilege to be here showcasing a game that is very long for a marathon. So 
uh, to be given the responsibility of the time slot. I hope we uh, we, we, we did you all proud, so uh, thank you for having us. And lots of people I got to shout out. I, I got to shout out my dad, because I didn't shout him out last time. I felt bad about it. <laughs> so I spent, I, spent, I spent three years in Australia. Um, I'm from New Zealand. I live in New Zealand, but I spent three years in Australia. And I, I was speedrunning stuff in Australia, which is really cool. But he... Um, He'd get a little bit lonely sometimes because all the kids had moved away from home. So he'd actually just tune into my stream just to watch me speedrun, just to hear my voice because, like, he's all alone. And he knows nothing about Golden Sun, absolutely nothing. Um, so I think this was, like, really sweet that he would do that. So thank you, Dad. You're, you're amazing. So thank you very much. Um, and, of course, my wife, who puts up with me doing this, uh, she is great as well. I didn't shout her out either. Um, <laughs> she's these games great. take quite a commitment of time. Like, this is a six-hour speedrun. That's, like, a whole day. As uh, so they can attest to how difficult it is to get in the ground. It's <laughs> extremely um, difficult. So it takes it takes a very understanding wife to let you do this. So thank you, Neela. You're the best. I love you so much. And of course, the rest of the Golden Sun community is just a real honor to be a part of that community. And yeah, we keep doing cool things. So thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, definitely. Is coming up, by the way. Yeah, when once they raise their fists, it's time. So I'll call it out. I gotta say, no on this next uh, yes no to save half a second, because that's you know the kinds of things that we think about in the epilogue. There we go. We saved a little bit of time. Job, dude. What was and, the uh, final time on that? The final time looks like it's a 557. I don't quite see that. I think the stream's a little bit Damn. behind. We can, we, we can get 42. Damn, that is a good time. Um, <laughs> I don't want to let this little. This is a great track, by the way. I love hearing it. It makes me emotional every time I hear it because this is such a grand track. Alex's plan is going to get foiled, but uh, I know we want to keep the show moving, so I do really need to show off this last like little thing while we do our epilogues so Bowie said is there anything you'd like to say before we get to the best scene of the game I'll just quickly do a, a big thank you to SGDQ for having Golden Sun once again um, it's an incredibly uh, important series to, to, to not obviously not just you know um, to everyone but you know to me it's a very very important series it's Camelot as a company are very very precious to my heart they gave me so much including my name um, and yeah uh, to have this game showcased by the best runner it, it, it has um, on this stage is incredibly humbling. So uh, thank you very much for, again, as Plexi said, giving us the responsibility, and I hope we did you proud. Um, it's a real, real pleasure. And thanks to everyone watching, the GS community, for being awesome. Um, and yeah. Yeah, and so jumping on a thank you for the community because they have been popping off in the Discord for this entire run. <laughs> they've, they've been great. And we've mentioned a lot of names before already. That doesn't even begin to cut it. How much the community has grown is absolutely crazy. It's been wonderful to see. Uh, I do wish more people would also run TLA rather than just call them someone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a really good guide for it. I, there is yeah, a book. A book. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> But I'm sure it'll... Speedrun.com slash Gthun TLA resources section, Golden Sun pictorial guide. There are pictures. It's a picture book. It's a, a picture book. page picture book. Oh. <laughs> They're pretty pictures. And picture it's... books are the best. <laughs> oh, yeah. They are. They're really good. It's absolutely got... amazing, though, for how much the community is growing. And it, it, I've barely been able to keep up with everything that's been going on with Dark Dawn, but it's just seeing that game finally get broken. And uh, honestly, probably going to end up faster than... Uh, Oh, this category, because <laughs> oh, oh yeah, only oh, just started. It's absolutely crazy. So, thank you, everyone in the community. You've been doing great, and I know I, I know I can be rather quiet. Since life's very busy, but I'm watching from the shadows. All of you. I don't know if that's creepy, but if it is, I don't care. I, you're doing great. Love you. All right, all right. Best, best thing in the game. Here it is. This actually does make me emotional. I love this cut, this, this screen so much. It's so good. Wow. Uh, I love this game. Um, yeah, this is my favorite game of all time. It's a pleasure to speed run it, and uh, that end. Thank you very much.
what an amazing run of Golden Sun, The Lost Age. Now that I've seen the speed run, well, half of it, now I'm gonna have to play the game myself. <laughs> So we have, uh, I'm going to read a few donations that I didn't get to, uh, didn't get to read uh, during the run. We have a $100 donation from Boar that says, I'm glad I could make it to the end of this run. Golden Sun was one of my favorite GBA series and glad to see it completed so fast. $100 donations from Griff that says, Golden Sun is one of my favorite games of all time and Hitman is my favorite game of this year. So donations went towards the Dolahan fight as well for the Bald Assassin. <laughs> Which for those wondering, that is our next incentive. Let me double check real quick. It's the bonus game for Hitman 3. Uh, I believe it's to add the trilogy campaign, uh, which is the SASO professional run of Hitman 3. Right now, we're at $41,809. We need 70000 So we are already well uh, push the halfway there. I know we can make that incentive happen, make that bonus game happen. And then we have a $250 donation from Unholy Sheep that says, giving me for a good cause and getting to enjoy people break my favorite games, count me in. And with that, we're gonna be taking just a little break, but don't worry, we'll be right back. Get a snack, get some drinks, and we will be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to SGDQ 2021 Online, powered by Twitch. I am Edo, and I'm going to read another donation for you. I have a $275 donation from Garbage Clothes that says, I am unfortunately missing Plexa's run today, but I wanted to make sure to get this donation in 
while it is live. Good luck to all the runners and thank you GDQ staff for putting on a wonderful event for a wonderful charity. And now, a word from Fangamer. Yes, Fangamer. Video game merch company. They are amazing. New SGDQ merchandise available now, including event badge, limited edition pin, water bottles, joggers, and more. And do not forget that 100% of profits from GDQ merch sales support MSF. You can look at all the amazing things that they have at www.fangamer.com slash GDQ. Remember, it is www.fangamer.com slash GDQ. All right, I'm going to read a few more donations, some that I didn't get to, to read, so I do apologize. We have a $25 donation from Korak that says, love the GDQ events and love Golden Sun, so I had to donate. Keep doing your best for charity. You are heroes. Chrome1942 donates $25 that says, so excited for the Golden Sun, the Lost Age run. Good luck, Plexa. Here's to a great run. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, indeed. Text donates $25 that says Golden Sun is the best and seeing the Lost Age make it to Chitty Q is the bestest. Here's to Plexa and the whole Golden Sun community. C Squared, thank you so much for your $50 donation. Golden Sun, at the back to back GDQs, you'll love to see it. This is a special game right here and I'm glad to see Plexa is here again to speed through the Lost Age. $25 from Cyberbot X that says, so excited for this Golden Sun run. I love this series despite how incredibly wordy it is. It really is. I kind of feel that Dark Dawn was not as strong of a game as the GBA games, but I still hold out hope for a fourth game so the story can at least get a proper bookend. A man can dream, right? Totally love Jenna as a character and her battle theme is the best. Best of luck on the run and the Dullahan fight. Plexa. All right, everyone, I am going to be sending you guys to Scent for the Prize, but this is my time to go. Do not worry, I have one more shift at the last day, so you will guys not see me, but you'll hear me again. But thank you so much for being so awesome. Remember, make sure you are eating, make sure you are staying hydrated, make sure you are comfortable. Stretch those legs, and I will be giving you the wonderful Zenadir. Thank you, and take it away, Zen. Thank you so much for that, Edovin. As mentioned, uh, my name is Sent, and joining me as always is the amazing Mr. Game and Shout. Hello again. And together we are here to tell you all about some of the amazing prizes that you can win by donating between now and the end of GeoGuessr. Shout, I was going to actually open this with kind of a little dig at uh, Dark Dawn, but wow, the donation comment's yeah. actually getting in there for us. So, so I haven't actually played, uh, recurring theme, I haven't actually played uh, any of the Golden Sun games. Shout hasn't played anything. I have played... I have played some games. You're talking to a man whose first Final Fantasy was eight. I have a weird education. But Scent was just telling me that... <laughs> <laughs> this is even funnier because it's not actually my birthday. <laughs> Production is incorrect, but I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs>
<laughs> you're, you're off by a day, everyone. <laughs> but thank you so much. Shout, I think we have some great prizes we to show everyone. Some let's, amazing prizes. We're just going to save ourselves by getting into them. Let's, let's grab some. All right. Uh, top of the list. Let's start with some absolutely beautiful cards. I love these. So Those are great cards. From Shuggle Up Sketches, we have a set of three new baby cards. These are actual cards. You can open them up. You can, if you have hands that work better than mine, you can put things in them, write in them. They're functional have, cards as opposed to not functional cards. Well, it's not like a postcard. It's like a greeting card because, you know, there are different kinds of cards, okay? <laughs> you know, playing cards, your experience with? That, that, that's uh, fair. So we that's have fair. a sleeping sun. Yeah. We have a sleeping mew. I just realized I'm being a little louder on the sleeping babies. Uh, and we have a... Uh, peach and that's like a little stuffed Yoshi, I think, wrong hand. Uh, gorgeous. Absolutely adorable. Uh, $5 minimum donation gets you entered to win all three of these. Fill them out. Send them to someone who just had a kid. Yep. It happens. Shout, you, you have toddlers. I have toddlers. How, how do these new cards for babies make you feel? I mean, uh... They make me feel real warm and fuzzy, I'm going to be honest. All like, right. my that's, wife that's just sent good. me a real cute video of my kids today, Aww. and uh, it was great. His, his kids are adorable. His they, kids are absolutely adorable. $5 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Shuggle Up Sketches for sending it out. Mm -hmm. uh, from Itazan, we have this absolutely beautiful The World Ends With You themed pin. We got Neku with his back to the camera staring up at the 104 building, and it's a little hard to see while it's attached here, but maybe if I shine it in the light of it, the entire pin forms the outline of the player pin from The World World Ends With You. Um, I you know, I don't know about you, Shout, but The World Ends With You, probably my favorite RPG on the DS, just an incredibly R, you know, powerful RPG for me in my formative years. Big fan of this game. Big fan of the energy and the emotion captured in this pen. Thank you so much to Itazan for sending it out. $10 minimum donation from now until the end of GeoGuessr, which is coming up next. So if you're interested in some of these prizes, you got to get your donations in. Yeah, not a lot of right time now. left. Not a lot of time left on that. Yeah. All right, next up, from Fangamer and Megacrit, we have oh. something adorable. We have a cute little ironclad plush from Slay the Spire. Um, absolutely wonderful. Uh, boiling blood not included. We, uh, we were trying to find a way to ship that out. Can, and can, can it dropkick? Um, I, I haven't tried. All right, I'm, I'm all in on I have the a general. I have a general that. rule against dropping the prizes. Some of them are fragile. Some of them are easily offended. <laughs> And then we'll chase you down the dark hallways. Um, $10 minimum donation uh, to get in and get entered to win this. Indeed. And thank you so much to Fangamer and Megacrit for sending that out to us. Uh, now, we have a couple of Chrono-themed uh, prizes, I believe. We here. do, yes. Yeah. yeah, from Escalash Studios, we have a Chrono Cross Shadow Box. It is absolutely <laughs> These are both adorable. from Escalash Studios. you got to warn me which one you <laughs> i got to grab. Sorry about that, Chuck. <laughs> it's the Shadow Box. It's absolutely yep, it. amazing. I mean, just look at that. That is entirely made out of paper. Deeper, by the way, um, and it's just the feel, the depth of field you get in it, it looks great. It's a $20 minimum donation from now until the end of GeoGuessr. Shout, you haven't played Chrono Cross yet, I have right? not played Chrono Cross. Do you want to play Chrono Cross after looking at that picture? I, I am adding it to the list. you got to put it on the list. It's amazing, going on the list. Amazing PlayStation RPG. A legendary Make sure list. to check it out for sure. Thank you so much again for Escalator Studios for sending that out, as well as sending us out some other cool stuff, like this amazing Chrono Trigger Clock. How could you not love this Chrono Trigger clock. You got the Epoch, you got Zeal as the clock hands. That's just so cool. You got all the different locations from the game as like, you know, the different wedges in the clock. I, I love this. I absolutely love this. I want to hang it up in my wall, but you know what? I can't win it. Shout, only you can win it, and you can win it by donating $25 from now until the end of GeoGuessr. So make sure to get those donations in. You've at least played Chrono Trigger, right? Everyone's played Chrono I've, Trigger, I've, <coughs> It's uh, It's my favorite farming game. Yes. Um, all right, good. Good. As, as, long, <laughs> as long as you know what the game is about, and clearly you do. Here's another great farming game for you, Shout. <laughs> It's a Golden Sun play mat, also I, from Esclare Studios. I, I genuinely got Golden Sun and Harvest Moon mixed up in my head today. Yeah, no, we were talking about this. It's like Rune yeah. Factory, right? But they just did a Pokemon thing. They split it in it, half. It, Golden Sun is the fighting part of it. Harvest Moon <laughs> is the farming part. You got to buy both games to get the full experience. <laughs> But uh, seriously, thank you so much to Splash oh. Studios. This mat is awesome. It's got all four of the elemental lighthouses lit, just like at the end of Golden Sun, The Lost Age. It's an absolutely wonderful mat, and it's only a $15 minimum donation, so get those donations in. Also, for a $15 minimum donation from our good friend Puzzle P, we have this beautiful painting of Mia. It's Mia, right? Okay, so I actually don't know. 
All right, so we were discussing this earlier. We don't know if it's Mia or Maya, because my wife pronounces it Maya. Right. Most of the time, the, pic the picture's called Mama Mia. I I've always called it Mia. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got, I have my actual phone here. We're, we're I'm going to pull up the actual, like, pull up an actual wiki right now, because the Japanese should be definitive, right? So Right. It's, it's a Japanese game. It was localized into English. The Japanese should let us know by how it is written, whether it is Mia or Maya. We're going to find out definitively okay. live I'm, for I'm you. trying to look it up right now. All right, what you got, Shout? That does not not have the Kana. Uh, all right, hold on. All right, well. We're working on this. We're, we're struggling. I'm going to show off another prize while you do that, Chef. Okay, we'll come you back. do that. Yep. We'll come back to Mia versus Maya, but I'm going to move on to some amazing gin perlers sent to us by Doikum. We got all four of the elemental gin here as a set. We, of course, got Jupiter gin. Everyone loves Jupiter gin. We got Mercury gin. You need some healing spells? Get yourself a Mercury gin. Look at its eyes. Don't those eyes scream heal you? I don't think they do, frankly, but they do. They give you cure and wish and all those good spells. You got Venus Jid. Come on. If you need um, Ragnarok, there are probably other good Venus spells. I don't really know any of them. I just spammed Ragnarok because it looks cool. Ragnarok Venus Jid. That's what it's about. And, of course, my favorite the Mars gin, because fire is objectively the best element. I'm sorry to the other three elements involved. It's all about Mars. It's all about fire. They come together as a set for a $15 minimum donation. And thank you so much to Doikum for sending them out to us. How's it going, Chow? Do we have an answer? I know. I've checked like three different... <laughs> <laughs> I've checked like three different wikis, and it's all just the English version. I'm now looking at a thread on GameSpot <laughs> to try and figure out, and I don't know if this is authoritative. They're they are saying Mia. They are saying Mia. But all I right. don't I I don't have the original. The, Chat, the, if you know, please help. The the internet has spoken. We have to. No, they have it. Is, it is Mia. The internet. <laughs> Okay, fine. It's Mia. <laughs> it's Mia. The internet has spoken. From speaking of names, I had trouble pronouncing. Yep. Go for it, Chow. From K.O. Clara, friend of the show, uh, we have, for $25, these really cool gin paper art. Now, I don't know how much you can see it here. I'm going to try and angle it so you can. The uh, gin that you see here are actually raised up against the background. So as you're looking at it, I think you've got a little bit better on these two over here. You can see the shadow effect. Oh, yeah, hey, we've got... I finally have enough hands! <laughs> finally! <laughs> um... Four gin set, $25 minimum donation. Get you entered to win all four of these. Thank you so much. K.O. Clara, going to get it better this time for sending these in. Uh, absolutely wonderful. They are amazing. I'm a huge fan of them. And, I, I yeah, like Shout mentioned, it's a little bit, you know, hard to see on camera. But if you kind of rotate them around, they yeah. are raised up off that white disc in the background. They have a really cool 3D effect in person. These are, you know, exactly the kind of things I would love to hang up in a room somewhere. And, again, only a $25 minimum donation and you get all four of them. How could you not want that, Shout? I, you, uh, how could you? How could you? You know what else I know you want, Shout? What? You want some grand prizes. <laughs> I love I love grand prizes. Grand prizes are awesome. So, two grand prizes this event. Both of these prizes, $250 cumulative donation throughout the course of the event. So, every donation that you make this week adds up together. If the total hits or exceeds $250, you are entered to win both of these. Yep. I'm going to screw up the production booth and go at these in the wrong order, because the first thing I want to talk about, because I've got something to prove, All right. is the SkyTech Gaming Mark 9 custom gaming PC. We actually just got this in the studio. I haven't had a chance to unbox it yet, but I am, like, itching to do that right after the segment. Oh, it, it looks Cannot good. wait to get into it. It has an Intel 8086 processor. It has... <laughs> I think it might be off by a few years. Oh, am I? Okay. It <laughs> so it has... <laughs> and a few brands. It has 5800X CPU. It has an... NVIDIA, now I'm actually doing it wrong, 3070 Ti there we go. graphics card, as everyone has been very thorough. <laughs> it's a beast. I want it. You want it. You can have it. $250 cumulative donation gets you entered to win it, and hopefully we'll be able to show it off here uh, in the next price segment. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. The pictures they sent us looked absolutely amazing. And yeah. of course, we got to talk about our other grand prize shout because we have two amazing grand prizes. Remember, donate $25, you're going to get entered to everything we talked about, and you're going to be one-tenth of the way towards getting yourself entered into both of these grand prizes. Now, let's talk about a prize sent to us by our good friends over at Heroic Replicas. Shout out to Dave at Heroic Replicas for making all of these absolutely amazing creations. We have a choice of one of 18 different 
unique items that you can pick if you win this grand prize. And there are so many cool ones. If you're a Zelda fan, Dave has you covered because Heroic Replicas has made a Master Sword, a Dark Link Sword, a Hylian Shield, the Light Scale Trident, a Megaton Hammer. Fierce Deity Sword? Fierce Deity Sword. That thing is huge. It's ridiculous. You got to check out a picture of it over at GamesDoneQuick.com. But that's not all. You know, you're a Fire Emblem fan, shout? We got Lucina's Falchion, which is significantly fancier than Mars' Falchion. That's why she doesn't have any sour spots, shout, because it's just that good. We got Ragnil, Ike's Blade. How could you not want that? But you know what, shout? Maybe, maybe you're not a video game fan in general. Maybe you just like Minecraft and building stuff. You know what? We got the Diamond Sword. It looks absolutely incredible. You gotta head over to GamesDoneQuick.com. Check out the prize listing. There's a full album there of all of the choices. Uh, even has got some cool factoids about the prizes you can read. The Megaton Hammer, by the way, I know we said it weighed a Megaton. Yeah. I actually talked to Dave about that. It weighs about 35 pounds. <laughs> it, it is quite the heavy hammer. That is that is not a small hammer. That is a big hammer. That is a big hammer indeed. Uh, so again, huge shout-outs to Heroic Rep Close, and thank you all so much. Uh, and in general, if you're ever curious about any of the prizes or other information that we have going on at Summer Games Done Quick Online 2021, you can head over to GamesDoneQuick.com and check out the Tracker Shout. You know why? Because it's awesome. Because it's awesome. And because well, it's it has, summer, but... You know, that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> and because it has all the information you need on upcoming games that we have in the marathon, games like GeoGuessr. How are we even going to speedrun GeoGuessr? I look forward to finding out. Uh, it also has information about incentives that we've got coming up. We're still working on getting Hitman 3 into the marathon tonight. I think we're just under about $30,000 from making that happen. Uh, you, something like that, yeah. Somewhere It was, it was there. about there. I just saw it, and then I was too busy <laughs> thinking of ways to screw up the specs on the PC and the number fell out of my head. Ah, that's that's all right. But we are going to get there. I believe in you, Twitch chat, and you definitely want to see that run because there are some very, very silly kills in Hitman. <laughs> you you got to trust me on that one. You'll want to get that in the marathon. And of course, it's got all the information on all of the amazing prizes that we have that you can win by donating. Make sure to check it out. We will be back after a short break, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> it is really not my birthday. <laughs> that is tomorrow. But stay tuned. We'll have GeoGuessr coming up soon. See ya. <laughs> Hello there. I bet you think you thought you didn't hear from me again. I'm already stumbling. I bet you thought you didn't hear from me again. It's me, Bingus, or as you may know me, Zenadir. But we're all friends here, so just call me Zen. Can I get a quick shout out to Game and Shout's laugh for bringing me the most life in this day ever? Every time I heard it during that segment, I couldn't stop but laugh with him. It was fantastic. Also, Phil's birthday, man. Love it in the chat. Uh, we're going to kick it off with one quick donation here. It is a $260 donation from uh, EHVKD, because I'm not even going to try. It says, haven't been in a position to donate before, but love the work Doctors Without Borders does. Looking forward to GeoGuessr. Poggies. That's right. We've got the GeoGuessr run coming up right now. Would you look at that? Being run 